righty then. Welcome to EFAP 124? Shut up, Six Flash. Could be 125, actually. 124. Yeah, totally 124. And people are going to be like, wait, when was this live? I missed this live. Well, look. Chat's not even moving. They're dead. Oh Chat's not even moving. I know, right? This is very horrifying. And people were like, wait, why? Why didn't you do it live? Because the live are slot we... was already taken, and we need to, we don't have as much time, and we got to get another Man of Steel coverage done. All these different reasons, okay? EFAP community. Are we not live? Just a pre. No. <laughs> this oh, okay. It's just like <laughs> Um, so it'll just be a bonus EFAP that pops out in the same way oh that we kind of do meme fabs, which by the way doubles up pretty well because um, the Man of Steel video we're covering, I am not sure from the parts that I've checked out that we'll be okay streaming a lot of the visuals from it because there's a lot of extended moments that aren't even from the movie. There's lots of like, I don't know, things, but this way we will be completely safe. Um, but yeah, how's everyone doing? You're all right? Yeah, it's, it's all good. Yeah, I'm all right. Things are a okay. Yeah. 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 I'm having some kebab right now. Um, Ew. Got some chim nuts. I'm I'm mm. doing dandy. I I just saw Fellowship of the Ring in IMAX last night, and that was amazing. And now I get to talk about Man of Steel, which is about the opposite end of the quality scale. So well, that's great. I'm sure Man of Steel in IMAX is totally awesome and great. So mm. yeah, yeah. I I get an even bigger headache from watching an IMAX. So, um, <laughs> this this is kind of a, a little bit off topic, but I think it's amusing. My, uh, there's, there's a subreddit called Shitty Dark Souls, I guess, and my video for the Dark Souls 2 series got posted there. Oh, but the whole thing subreddit is... about Dark Souls 2? <laughs> oh. <laughs> <laughs> um, the, uh, but it seems like, because I saw the thread, and a lot of people were like, yeah, his videos are shit, but there was lots of people like, they're actually kind of good, though, in fairness. Like, the Dark Souls 2 has a lot of problems. Blah, blah, blah. And someone um, added me with, with this selection of comments that I thought were amusing. So you got, um, someone's shitting on just, just my videos in general, and they got, uh, please, for the love of God, can you people actually watch even a second of that video before pulling this rhetoric? I think it relates to the Joker, um, uh, uh, Jay Nichols and one. And then the response is, I can't because I have a job and basic responsibilities. It says, so don't form strong opinions on something you aren't properly informed about. It's like, that's pretty simple. And then you got, no. I've already watched Joker and Nicholson's review. I'm not watching a 12-hour review of a review. That's the death of creativity itself. <laughs> oh my goodness. Oh, I, hey. I love <laughs> the fact that that, like, it, that thread begins with, uh, with that dude getting upvoted, and then it just goes straight down to downvotes. <laughs> yeah, I mean... Death of creativity itself. <laughs> Fucking hell, goddamn. And they got like a Goodell bit request. And I guess Goodell this is that. official EFALP. E the Falp, death so I totally of creativity can. itself. <laughs> I'm not watching a 12 hour review. Imagine that was something we did, which by the way would be totally fine, but it's not even something we mm. did. Oh, no, man, I can't even no, watch you it type it out. Uh, That's so sad. Yeah. The death of creativity itself. That's such a villain line, you know. Very we only dramatic. talked about her for how long was it? Four hours or so? Um, someone chopped out all of our tangents, and it was a three-hour video, I believe. Oh, that's yeah. not that long. Especially when you talk about all the when she said so many things that were like Stupid. bizarre and <laughs> yeah. wrong. Yeah. <laughs> um, speaking of that, the, the someone that just shared a comment from someone who's a fan of Jay Nicholson saying this. Uh, I don't even know what the site is. I just thought this was funny. Jenny Nicholson is such a likable personality that it takes an effort of personal will to stop myself from trying to form a parasocial relationship with her. Just uh, shockingly engaging with somebody who has effectively built her entire career around talking into a camera. Okay, you know, freak. you can just say that you that you watch her because you find her attractive, right? Say like, it's oh. perfectly okay to admit that. I feel like if you're aware of parasocial relationship-tisms, then you should be able to resist, but uh, they're even aware and they're still getting sucked in. They can't help it. Mm -hmm. so, yeah, I'm glad. Glad they enjoy. Nice and strange. Very strange. Um, but yeah, I can't remember if we brought this up, but Sophistic Autistic in the Discord wanted to make sure it was mentioned. I couldn't remember if we did or not, but it's got um, got yeah. Now mention the part where Jor El says that he hoped Clark would be a bridge between two people, and then play the clip where Superman yells that Krypton had its chance. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, when they said that oh. in the movie, I was like. What what do they mean by that? 
I love the that idea bridge that Jor-El, had its chance. Jor-El watched him detonate all of those embryos, and he's like, oh my god, <laughs> like, what the <laughs> fuck, Clark? And he's like, I mean, I made my choice, bro. That's the one thing I didn't want to have the river die. It was my choice to make. Very emotional. Um, <clears throat> and yeah, I saw about three uh, different individual comments that in some way was upset that we had shat on Blinkist. They were like, do you guys actually have no idea how Blinkist is useful? Which wasn't our argument at all. We didn't say Blinkist couldn't be useful. We said that it's a fucking embarrassment compared to reading books. Summarizing from who I was I, editing I would, it. I wouldn't be surprised if it was counter-useful. It, well, it certainly could be, right? Theoretically. But at the same think time... That you knew more than you did. Because I'm trying to concoct a scenario where it would be useful for me, and I'm like, oh, I don't know, do I want to read this? You know, like, like a book synopsis or review could be useful, and it's like, if that's what Blinkist is doing, why pay for that when you get like that a, for like free? Like a Cliff's Notes? Yeah. Cliff's Notes yeah. version of, like, Shakespeare? I, I mean... thought it was trying to purport itself as, like, a, you don't have to, because that's what Phil Bento said, you don't have to read the book, you could just read these As if reading is pieces. an obligation. Well, it's a know, tough thing to do, to right? It, it would be different if it was... Because these um these summaries that Blinkwist was talking about, they're like 10, 15 minutes. If they were an hour, then I'd be like, you know, an hour of someone who knows what they're talking about, talking about a subject, you could probably glean some, you know, something from mm. that. If they're if you're you, like a lecture, like if you're listening to an hour long lecture of someone talk about a a movie or talk about a uh, a book or talk about something but it's not even an hour it's like 10 15 minutes bullet well, points the fundamental point is the book is the length that it is on purpose <laughs> like that was that was on purpose the, the length Vid the our videos aren't as long as they are on purpose they just well, end up yeah. being 12 hours long but you know if you write a book and then you edit it and rewrite it and everything and it has all this content and you try to construct an argument and then a bunch of that gets cut out like yeah something's lost there i don't know what well, to tell you like a summary you lose something now is blinkus doing these summaries of fictional books or just non-fiction just non-fiction non 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 hmm. but even feel then, like I feel like there's just a lot of advice that you're going to be missing out on if you Absolutely. are just sticking to the Blinkist, yeah. Also, like, the context of certain pieces of advice, you know? Like, what it's all surrounding. If Whereas think... I feel like with, with like, Cliff's Notes or Spark Notes, uh, if you read that as well as, like, I don't know, um, like, like, so if you're reading a Shakespeare play and then you're reading the Cliff's Notes and Spark Notes version as kind of like, um, what's, what's the word? Um sort of uh Come. Ad additional it's accompanying accompanying um sort yeah. of content accompanying. yeah 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 that would um that can help enhance your experience of reading shakespeare and you can understand it a little more clearly but if you are just reading the cliff's notes version and you're not reading the actual play like what are you doing Has ever look at a recommended video that's something you've seen back in the day and then you're like i remember when that video came out and then you check the upload and it's like nine years ago and you're like oh my god so old. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. um also I, I apparently in my recommended now it's been it's been infected with man of steel brown table's got a man of steel video and it's called man of steel is not an awful movie <laughs> uh, what is it with these people how are they so wrong about the, these these just the, these softballs you know Oh, imagine Man trying to construct a standard from everything you've seen from these people. Okay, now I need to see. You never what know what they're going to consider. Like, oh yeah, Homecoming is shit, but Man of Steel is not awful. <laughs> well, in fairness, <laughs> Man of Steel got Superman right, but Homecoming got Spider Man wrong. <laughs> that's the yeah, kind that's of weird old Wolf would deal with. Nothing more Superman than Krypton had its chance. <laughs> oh, yeah. Um, speaking of. I believe it is time for us to jump into what we hoped to do on the other stream, but you see we ran over the 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 proverbial limit of just existence, you know? Sometimes you just get tired, and that's the, Again? the sad reality. This one is, is especially interesting, because last time we were looking at Filmento calling it perfect, this one is called Why You're Wrong About Man of Steel, and it makes reference oh to goodness. being objectively wrong. 
Oh boy! How exciting! I yeah. can't wait for. I can't wait to have them tell us it's how finally... they feel. Wow, that was uh, loud. It's finally. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Yeah. So here we go. Into into the fray. Ah. Oh. It's finally time for Batman and Superman to settle their differences with violence in Glorious 3 and also 2D. And that calls for a re-examination of Man of Steel, a movie that is without question the most divisive and polarizing comic book movie ever made. Uh, I was like, yeah, because it shit. Is it? Is, is it? it though? Uh, I don't also, think it's it would be not. the most divisive. What would... it's, it is, would it is divisive, be... but most divisive? No, 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 no. So this was made in 2016. We can't count movies oh, okay. made after 2016. Um... Uh... Uh, you know, is it I, the most divisive superhero movie? What is what? What would you guys think is the most divisive superhero movie prior to 2016? Probably The Dark Knight uh, Rises. I would oh, have yeah. gone with Dark Knight Rises. Yeah, mm. that's a good shout. Um, let me see. Uh, Blade. <laughs> Didn't people like Blade? I don't know. It seems <laughs> fun. <laughs> I'm just like throwing that out there. What about Blade Trinity? Oh, but yeah, that was well. That was just hated. I don't think that was divisive. I don't think people... What about Bl where's Blade? Blade Two, Blade Trinity. That was the. We should watch that Blade, sometime. Uh, Blade Return of Blade, Blade High Voltage. Oh, the Crank movies. Them they look good too. Yeah. Well, Blade hmm. Crank. This was up there apparently. Um, I remember being talked about divisive. I I, I suppose. I mean it. There are, it created the Snyder fandom, right? So it must have been in some way. I mean, it's probably divisive because it is really bad. Mm -hmm. no, yeah, that would be our conclusion. I think, that's, I think that's why this one's divisive because it's really, really bad. It's but divisive. It's a huge budget. It's Zack Snyder. It's Superman. Mm -hmm. It's it's kind of divisive oh, in the same way that like the Last Jedi was. I feel yeah. where there's just like it's so terrible, and yet. There's this this group of people that so desperately want to believe that it's good. Oh, but, 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 but it's Star Wars. Yeah, how about <laughs> that? No. People like TLJ there. comes out and people tell themselves that Star Wars has never been awful before. <laughs> and like, okay, all right. They'll, okay. they'll just like reshape their standards and warp reality to make it seem like the movie's better than it really is. Films aren't about logic. All right. Well, I mean, <laughs> well, there you go. Like Game of Thrones season eight. <laughs> Neither are your videos. Oh. The most divisive and polarizing comic book movie ever made. People either really love it or really hate it, or they liked it I except for it. that one part they hated. I don't think I. I don't think I hate Man of Steel. I, f I feel very eh about that movie. I mean, I just yeah, I don't. I don't emotionally have any kind of connection to this. It's just mm -hmm. a really bad movie. Mm -hmm. And most really bad movies, I just see as really bad movies. But otherwise, we think the level of hatred for Man of Steel is totally unreasonable, and we wanted Wait. to address some of its criticisms. <laughs> yeah, uh, this is there's two guys that would do this channel together, I guess. <clears throat> oh, so they're both wrong? All right. Yeah, I know, right? That hopefully you'll be able to go into the sequel with a fresh understanding of the prequel to the sequel. Sweet. Man of Steel's criticisms range from superficial to legitimate to factually incorrect, and we've observed that most of the people who hate the film. But there's none that are correct. No, he said he said some of them are legitimate, so. Oh, okay. ...are basing their opinions on the latter. What we want to do is show you the most common criticisms, subjective or not, and then respond to All them right. through creator commentary, comic book history, <laughs> clips from the movie, and common sense right. so that you can ask yourself whether you're... Common objective. sense. Common sense in this movie are like in different universes. I mean, it'll be interesting to see if we can counter such common sense claims with possibly common sense. Who knows? wrong about your own opinion and if so maybe you can enjoy the film with newfound appreciation but first we got to talk about i like the idea that it just implies Probably that we're on not. the team of maybe we could hate make you hate it with newfound passion <laughs> <laughs> sweet so or this will do what most videos do that we cover which is just reconfirm for us why the movie is terrible <laughs> well, with its wow. terrible defenses. One of the things happened. I've seen a lot with uh, Man of Steel d defenses is uh, inventing a lot of shit that just wasn't in the film. Like, um, oh, how, yeah. how meaningful a lot of the interactions between all these characters are when they state, like, attributes you could possibly draw from the film, but, like, conflicts and conclusions that just aren't even in it. There should be like, didn't you see, like, the incredible conflict between Zod 
and Kal-El as, as, as creatures of choice versus no choice and and how that and it just like said, I was like, well, what are you? What, 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 no, where was where? This super where did you see this shit? That wasn't in the movie. And it's then, never really emphasized. They 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 certainly try um, to throw that stuff into the film, but it seems so half baked, and it didn't seem to have any kind of conclusion. And it's also at odds with the idea that Zod is a very well developed and meaningful and understandable character, when you want to argue that he's got no choice. Like, so he's just like a robot or an automaton. We would you guys say that like this film struggles a lot with just focus in general? Like it doesn't seem to know what kind of arc it wants to give Clark. It doesn't seem to understand like what theme it would want to focus on. Not to yes, mention um... the meandering first hour that has just no focus at all and has these really strangely arranged um like cutting back between the present and the past and it it it's like I feel like if you rearrange some of the like the order of some of the flashbacks, then the story becomes a little bit more coherent, but it doesn't actually save the movie. It might be like a core issue because they clearly wanted to try and explain, I guess, how he becomes the Superman that we're more familiar with. Like what this—that's what this film is clearly supposed to be. Like, um, but they did it so bad. The, well, like, his like at the end, position... they remember it. When you're gonna become a person who's super interested in just like goodness and saving people and defending even like to the point of just being like American values, like that sort of thing. Like so where does he start? It's gonna be like, well he doesn't have those things, he has to gain them. It's like so where you, you, well, hmm. Where does he gain them? It's like you, uh, uh, I guess it it's really awkward at the to... end of the movie when he brings down the drone, it feels like that was the scene where they just sort of remembered that he has to say something like that. Well, I mean that scene's really weird because he's like yeah, I'll look after you guys, but stop fucking looking at me, okay? I'm from I'm from <laughs> Kansas. Mm -hmm. I don't want to hurt America. Yeah, that and was like, that was weird. Oh, it's like, why would I yeah. be evil? I'm from Kansas. Like, wait, what? <laughs> like, uh, first of all, oh. why why did you just narrow down their search? Secondly, how do they know for sure that you're from Kansas? Like, do you have a, any type of way to confirm, to, to verify that? Or for all you know, you know, you could just be saying that you're from Kansas, and that's why you're not going to hurt anyone. You know, <laughs> lying ass alien. Um, but yeah, I guess what I'm getting at is like, so they want to go from not wanting to save everybody to wanting to save everybody, and so if you can't really start him in that position, he has to be saving people already. And then it's like, do you want to choose to put yourself in a position where you're always doing that for humans? And then he has that thing of like, I guess I'll give humans a chance. But we're all just sitting here lost. Like, where, where yeah, like why do you feel the way that you do? Yeah, about where, where the things? fuck did this come from? Like. Because the old have... movies made it very clear, it was very explicit in the old movies why you know Clark is such a good person. This because in I'm, this uh, one you're like, why is he good? I guess, is he just because he has to be, or what? So I'm trying to I like guess he is. better articulate this in terms of. I guess I'll try and do a comparison. You know, like everyone knows the point in Iron Man where he's perfecting the suit he made in the cave, and then he sees the news report about people suffering in relation to weapons being changing hands and stuff and he's working on his little arm and then he you know figures out weaponizing it and then he's like this is it he has a choice he can put himself at risk as well as you know pissing off potential governments and um i don't know different situations by going in there and doing what he thinks is right or he can sit at home where he's safe and uh there's of course the underlying element that he's trying to make up for having provided these weapons to these people um so there's like a meaningful choice there. Like he's, you go from he he was before and after someone who would like to help people, but like how much danger he's put himself. In. Meanwhile, with Superman, it's kind of strange. Like he, like oh, I'll give I'll give humans a chance. Already. Yeah, he's a really bizarre kind of character. Very poorly written. Very very poorly informed. If you make a Superman movie, this is like textbook what not to do. It leaves people confused when they watch the movie as to why he is the way he is. Because like you, you jump to other ones. Like what was Thor? It's like well, Thor's was like full on arrogance and vanity that he was the best and he should be the leader and he's awesome and stuff. And then his movie is about you know being brought down to the people level and choosing to to fight and protect them even without his power, which makes him worthy of getting. Meal near back, like oh, that's a neat arc, because um, you've got the constant, which is wanting to help people, which I think all of these heroes have. It's just that they have a flaw that they need to sort of deal with, um, because like even uh, K 
Cap's like limits or his body is his values are always in place. But this it's like this film wants to argue that um Superman gained these values. This is the journey for it, but I just don't really see it. Yeah, he just ends up a good guy, and you have no idea how he got here. And he doesn't seem happy about it. Yeah, he <laughs> like in his rest it, like in, in BBS, they probably carry he carried this through. Where he just like almost boringly and begrudgingly is saving people. He's just there. He's like mopey. He's just so blank. Like he doesn't want to be there. Like this is a waste of his time. Because yeah. even even Doctor Strange, right? Because I I know people are gonna get pissed now. I'm referencing so much Marvel. It's just like okay, fine. But the uh, you know, like how he's a he's an asshole who only cares about himself. But um, his interest is that like the universe is going to crumble if he doesn't defeat Kaecilius and the army of people serving Dormammu, and then he appoints himself after the uh, what's her name dies as like the protector of Earth as a dimension, or whatever. So now yeah. he's going to in a in a way that's like this is my place. You don't fuck with it. That sort of thing. And so what I'm arguing is like he's still managed to find a way to make this absolute asshole of a character because like that's he's he's mean to everybody. Um, put in the position in a way that like makes a lot of sense. And I just I I don't get it with Clark in this movie. I don't get it at all. Well, I mean that's kind of the interesting thing about like the MCU is that for the most part. The characters are fairly solid. Yeah, you know there are there are the a lot backbone. of issues. But yeah, but the characters are generally pretty informed, and you understand, I guess, what their motivation is to be a hero or to save the world or something. But here, yeah, Clark seems really upset about <laughs> having to go around and help people, and Batman's just an <laughs> asshole. You have and Zod. Woman doesn't make any sense. Zod saying that if you don't give yourself up, I'm going to make the whole world suffer. And then he goes to the church like, should I give myself up? It's like, yeah. oh, the whole it's world like... suffers? Why is this a <laughs> hard know, choice? Like, I'm glad you pulled through in the end, but fuck me. That's what, yeah, that's it. That's it right there. So maybe this video will help explain to us why this is a meaningful especially, arc. Especially because for, for all he knows, he's like, oh, I'm, I'm a superhuman being. What do I have to lose? I'll just go there. Exactly. The he's like, <laughs> this is, at least with Iron Man, it's like, I'm a dude in a metal suit. So there is a degree of danger, you, you know. Yeah. Mm. With newfound appreciation. But first, we got to talk about some trivial nonsense that barely counts as legitimate criticism. Oh, such as. There is too legit. much product placement. Okay. I've never heard. Yeah. Until you mentioned it. I'd never oh, heard this. Yeah. Um, the only place like, I've heard it so... from is Red Letter Media. So, uh, Cinema Sins and Nostalgia Critic, I think, pointed this out as well. The first thing most I mean, people it's... think of will be IHOP. Um, of course. Yeah, that's what I mentioned. Is IHOP? It's kind of the only one that comes to like, mind. Um, principally with product placement, though, I don't know that I've ever seen a movie where I've been like, "This is ruining the film now." Like the product no. placement. Yeah, you just no, notice it. I usually, yeah. yeah, that's usually as far as it goes. I just go like, oh man, they must have been paid a lot by, you know, insert company. Yeah. It's, it's, it's like, one... oh, this Sony laptop was conveniently placed. And that's, yeah, that, yeah, that happens a lot. It doesn't go further than that. But it, it's, the, one, the, like, it's one thing to have like a Sony laptop show up and then the character that uses the Sony laptop saying, hey, I got this uh, the Sony <laughs> laptop. It's really good. And like, they're actually doing an advertisement in the <laughs> movie where like, yeah. that is obstructive. However, well, see, when you're just seeing a logo, I don't give a shit. That's a that's an interesting point in terms of like, it would be, we'd be pointing it out as bad dialogue because people don't speak this way. And then we could point to, it's a likely product placement is the reason this dialogue was so shit. But it didn't have to be. Or I guess maybe if it was mandated by whatever deal they made, but yeah. Um, yeah. This is not one of my criticisms. I don't care that much. I found it yeah. amusing at most. I, yeah, I don't care myself. It's basically a nitpick at best. Not allowed in movies ever. Ever. How dare they put common products and businesses from our everyday lives in movies? How dare they? How dare they? Hey guys, let's talk a little bit about how you make a movie. Making movies is expensive. Okay. The most expensive yeah. kind of movie to All make right. is a summer blockbuster. No, it's expensive. You chose to make an expensive movie. Yeah, yeah wait a yeah. Oh, no. Are we... They didn't have to do any defenses of this, but if the first one is, hey, people gotta make movies, I'd be like, oh, <laughs> no. He's like, hey, um, I da, 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 need money, so Raid Shadow Legends is fine. 
<laughs> yeah, like, right, let's not use the, well, we needed the money argument. You don't need that argument. Throw it out. Um, you can make other arguments, such as fucking, I don't know, the, the deal you made. It, it, there was no harm in using IHOP in the film, because IHOP is a real thing, and it, it's having its and money being able to fund zero, the film in exchange for nothing in terms of a breach is fine. That's I'm, what I would have said. I'm typically less distracted by uh, non-fictional brands showing up in fictional movies than fictional brands, where they're like having to make one up from scratch. Um, where it's like they're obviously trying to, yeah, uh, like oh, Superman's having a big fight at the pancake at the hut. big belly burger pancake or something hut. like <laughs> the pancake. Hey, hut. Me, do you remember um, Magnavox and Sony? Um. No, that is damn. Simpsons. <laughs> I know that there are a lot of good ones in um, yeah, like cartoons. Yeah, Sunny. Like <laughs> sometimes it makes sense, like uh, with with Breaking Bad and Los Pollos Hermanos and the the company that owns them. You don't want to use an actual company. Um, when yeah, you're but talking about like a... Hermanos, just felt nice and real to me when I was watching it. It's like I could believe. Well, yeah, that. yeah. It, it's like there's there's times where of course it it makes sense to do that, and you know depending on execution it can work. It's just. It it doesn't distract me at all to see these brands show up in a fictional film. Yeah. So didn't need this defense, but it's fine. Mm -hmm. This mm -hmm. one is reported to have cost two hundred and twenty-five million dollars, tied at number twelve with The Hobbit and a few pieces of garbage on the most expensive movies of all time. Uh, the let's Hobbit see. is a piece of garbage, though. Yeah. Uh, let's see. We have Chronicles of Narnia, Prince Caspian. That was two hundred twenty-five million. God, <laughs> fucking hell! Uh, Jesus Christ! I had no idea. <laughs> That movie was so goddamn expensive. Dude, Pirates Jeez. of the Caribbean on Stranger Tides was 370 fucking 9k? I mean, millions? Damn, Damn. and then... Are you serious? Whoa. Why? Which, which, which one number was one is... The fourth one? That's the fourth oh, one, yeah. Damn. Holy what a waste of money. Holy. Avengers of Ultron. John Carter. Uh, Tangled. Spider-Man 3 was 258? Jeez. <laughs> See, kids, more money does not equal better. <laughs> That's just not how it works. Uh, and look at the difference between number one and number two. Yeah. That's $79 million yeah. difference. Yeah, I'm Spectre, pretty sure, which is like one of the, the less well received Bond films of recent memory. My God, man. I wonder how Superman. much Inspector Gadget was to make. Let me check. Wait, why did you want to check that specifically? Uh, Oh, I don't know. He said Spectre, and so I thought Inspector Gadget. <laughs> I don't know. Wait, it's is the most... uh, seventy-five million for Inspector is most... Gadget. See, is the most expensive X Men movie really The Last Stand? That's sad. Uh, when was this list updated last? I'm guessing. Well, this probably would have been 2016. So yeah, they got Dawn of Just. Okay. Um. Well, yeah, I guess so. Um. Anyway. Oh, the great Where would you suggest they get that Does kind of money? For that? Anything but product placement. That is not allowed. Looking for Pete Ross. Do you know him? Yeah, he works at the IHOP. But product placement paid for over 70% of the film's budget. I guess the argument would be that since there's too much CG okay. and too much action, if they cut some of that there out... There is not the too movie... much action. Well... Too much CG and too much action. That's not the, the format of criticism I would deliver. That's not quite... Yeah... I'd be like, but this is supposed to be very real and grounded, and so they're using real places that you could actually go to to add a sense of realism yeah. and authenticity to the setting. I, and then I would move on to the next I almost point. want to steel man these people. I'd be like, so what you need to do is find out what the criticism is, and if they say it distracts me, all you have to do is respond, it doesn't distract me. Because that's entirely subjective. Whether or not you are pulled out of a movie subjective. because you spot the word IHOP. Wouldn't much, and there wouldn't have to be so much product placement. But if too much action is your opinion, then that must also be your opinion yeah. of the Avengers. The stop. Oh, why are you making such bad arguments? Oh, it's what about us? Oh my goodness! <laughs> if you think you're this even is too bad much at, action, it's, oh. uh, <laughs> you're bad at attacking points we agree with. Oh my goodness! Why does this happen? You don't oh, need to do this. Why are this. you people so bad at your jobs? Also, you, how are you even categorizing this? Like, because there is a lot of action in Man of Steel. I doubt there's a similar amounts in terms of time code to uh, Days of Future Past or. Um, just think uh, about, H. like, Voltron. the final act is all action. It's a huge amount of action in, yeah. in Man of Steel. Like, my brain can't process it. 
I just, I, why would you even say this though? Like, ugh. X-Men, pretty much any other recent comic book movie. I'm just saying, the genre is probably not for you. And CG is the only way you can do this kind of stuff. Even for some flying and punching shots, practical effects are not practical. I don't That's know not true at all. What do you think about... people did before we had CGI? It's probably gonna argue yeah, it, looked, also... it looked worse or bad back then, so. I'm also just gonna say, I don't know of anyone that complains about, like, too much action or CG in superhero films. That's not, it's just This not... is Cape CGI? Yeah. I guess yeah. that makes sense, yeah. So that, it, like, it flows, it, it looks cool Where as it I flows want. in the wind. Yeah, they can, yeah. they can make it flow the way they want. Oh, you can just use a fan. Yeah, but... but then it won't, it won't flow the <laughs> Wait, right what's... It what won't you... flow the right way that we need for my video. Honestly, yeah. honestly what, you make it is... sound like it's stupid, but yeah, they'll have complete control over exactly how the cape will move at whatever time they want. Say, what's yeah. what's that What's that behind uh, Henry Cavill that's, like, right between the green screen and the, the curtain? That's not a fan, it's oh. a light. That's a light. Is that a light? Oh, it could be a fan that's on. <laughs> I was joking, because, but yeah, look, it actually might be a... It could be either. Whatever. It's probably a light, though. There probably are some times where he actually has the cape, you know? It's, well, it's kind uh, of like Doctor Strange. Wouldn't they, um, wouldn't they, like, want his hair blowing kind of realistically with the uh, the cape as well? So I would think that that would be a fan. <laughs> They'll just CGI it. It's fine. <laughs> if, it, I, if it was me, I'd just oh, be, yeah. you know what? We want <laughs> like, a cape billowing realistically. So we're going to have a no. cape and we're going to have a fan. No, you know what? They they would actually have to practice the the CGI hair for Aquaman, so it, it very well could just be a light. Also, just don't like this whole you have to have hundreds and hundreds of millions to be able to make an action movie. It's like, no, you don't. That's not true, though. <laughs> Come on. Because, look, the movie's gigantic. Of course we have spaceships. Of course Who's we have this? planets. How do you... That's Zack Snyder. Oh, he's the, Dude, he's oh, the one to blame. <laughs> it's his, this is his fault. It's I all his fault. He's responsible for this abomination. Hey, they, so that's a real cape. There. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Like yeah, I said, they, they, they gotta real. have a real one every once in a while, I'm sure of it. Yeah. How do you make Superman be super? What do you do uh, from a visual effects standpoint? The idea was that if Superman does anything, it's gonna have to be um, a visual effect. Whether it's what? Flying. Flying, lifting, anything, really. Punching. Uh, some of the proving ground for that was even in first... And that one's fake! ...to CG the game for this I shot. I don't even... Like, why do you need it for... I guess in case it were to billow over his fist. <laughs> no. <laughs> I don't know, man. No, don't know. no wonder this cost $225 million. Yeah, <laughs> I'm starting to see the why they had to hit up IHOP. I hop. We need you to cover our cape budget. <laughs> yeah, man, this movie sure would have no there. capes if it wasn't for I hop. No capes. God, his suit looks weird, there, doesn't it? You know, it does, the leg yeah. with the 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 schlumpy gloom. The I don't know what that is. Things. Yeah, yeah. Know. First flight. A lot of the stuff he did in his uh, training facility to do his stunt viz did have the wires, right? Because right. he wanted to to show, you know, here's the body language and all that stuff, and then you'd approve that, and then Damon and I would go back through it and go, let's not do that. <laughs> yeah, that's that's a superhuman hit right there. Let's switch out there. Another way to look. It was like, oh uh, yeah, if if he was like flying forwards with his hands oh. forward and everything, and he was, they just had a big fucking fan blowing at him super fast like that'd probably look really good um i'd be like I'm you know what he's flying you, through the air i am gonna counter you hardcore because i think wonder woman 1984 the flight looks dog shit and the big reason why it does is because they don't use lots of cgi at all it's clear that she's is that because execution stage. well i think that i absolutely think that you're going to be able to achieve better effects with cgi for like flying around and stuff than you could with a green screen of course, like better, if, if he's flying sure. at like supersonic speeds, basically, because then if he if they're doing it with uh, with a fan, then the movement of the cape isn't actually going to match like him moving at that speed. Background. Yeah, yeah, it's not going to match. It's going to look weird, and you're going to notice. Whereas if you just flat out commit to having it be, well, I think what, the way that they the this film works. What, yes, I yeah. The cape. We noticed it with Wonder Woman eighty four. Yeah, In Wonder Woman Nights maybe four. No, like her hair. It's pretty clear that it's just not like consistent with the way that it, she's moving around in this environment. Not to mention that you know, like the fan could also mess with Henry Cavill's hair too in ways that they may not uh, desire. It's I, I get why they why they did what they did. And, I, and I think like the easy compromise is just what they did, which is just have certain shots where it's just really close up on him on a wire moving around. I think that's mm -hmm. the best way to do it. Remind people that it's a person.
I definitely totally get why they would use CGI. I mean, this for is all in favor of saying they needed money, okay? It's like, okay. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Look at this is that product placement stands in as a representative of capitalism. I know it's not fashionable what? to admit this what? anymore, but Superman stands for truth, justice, and the American way that we're not supposed to talk about anymore. Politics, does he still stand for mm -hmm. truth, justice? I mean, it's All not our stuff. fault. I'm sorry to have- Okay, <clears throat> just because- This is something that I think people, a lot of people here. miss. Just because it's viable in capitalism doesn't mean you have to do it. Like, yeah, you have it, choices yeah. to make in capitalism. You decided to make a movie that was this expensive. No one made yeah. you. No, capitalism. <laughs> it's okay. capitalism's fault. It's like, no, it's your fucking fault. Capitalism isn't a person who's coercing you into doing things. It reminds me of, like, again, the Raid Shadow Legend stuff. If someone said, like, well, you should be blaming capitalism, it's like, you made the choice. Stop blaming like, capitalism. No, yeah. It's your fault. I have to tell you this, but all that stuff is capitalism. Or should I say capitalism I'm is fine with her that. holding up a Nikon camera. <laughs> uh, I just like the idea that product placement is a result of capitalism. You're like, uh, okay, what, what are we doing? Again, you didn't, even need, you didn't even need to respond to this argument, but go for it. Yeah. stuff. So if you don't like product placement, then I guess you just don't like what Superman stands for. No. <laughs> what, what are you saying? What, 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 what an insanely <laughs> fucking brain dead thing to say publicly. This is gonna be a oh my disaster. god! <laughs> don't, if you don't like Superman product placement, for. you don't like what Superman you stands for. You don't like for. America. <laughs> yeah, why do How you does like that ISIS? Always happen? Like they'd say something, it's like, oh yeah, that's stupid to say, and then they fucking blurt stupid shit like this. It's like, what are you? Stop it! You didn't. What's have that? To... You don't like Man of Steel? You fucking communist? Yeah. <laughs> <What's> <laughs> happening? No, it's just not allowed. Reason that product placement should ruin a movie. This movie actually contains at least one reason to appreciate. No, it would be weird if people had like not real beers and like like he opens up the 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 thing and all the beers are the same. I think they're Budweiser. So it doesn't fucking matter. It would be weird if they were all different. Like no one does that. I don't buy one of this and one of that and one of this and one of that. No, they buy like six packs and twelve yeah, yeah, packs yeah. of things. So yeah, they would be all the same. Why are there this tomatoes on top of a telephone? <laughs> <laughs> and caution tape. And the what a strange building. Well, it's flowing over. <laughs> what a strange building. They have warm cans. Of shouldn't those be in fridges? Also, yeah, shouldn't all of this be in a... I guess... I don't understand. I don't know what... I wouldn't want to put a telephone in a fridge. <laughs> well, yeah, yeah, but the yeah. tomatoes on top of the telephone, <laughs> I would have... <laughs> what a see, weird shot. Really, isn't it worth putting the telephone in there if it means getting your beers and your tomatoes? Because <laughs> the telephone will be fine in the fridge. It'll just be cold. It'll, It'll just be, be a cold, cold and... telephone. Yeah, you put it up to your ear and you'd be like, hello. <laughs> how, Ooh, how do you think Mr. Freeze cold. does it? <laughs> the reason that product placement ruin a movie. This movie actually contains at least one reason to appreciate it. How often do movies give you the opportunity to say something like, now I know what it's like to watch someone throw a train through a Sears appliance department? I don't Superman believe that's what would actually happen. I wouldn't say that. Yeah, I do like Superman's acknowledges that thing, phrases, and then just so. Sort of... <laughs> also, I'm starting to wonder, wouldn't, um, because he gets blown into the building with it, wouldn't he, like, be like Maeve, where he would, like, crash through it? I Remember, guess not. Superman Maybe. can crash through um, the alien spaceships. Buildings. Yeah. And Maybe it was a strong train like that fisherman like, in the beginning. But it's like someone throwing, I don't know, like a, a foam cube at you real... F well, that would just dissipate before he even gets to you. I'm trying to think of how... Like a paper Jelly. box. Yeah. A paper box. <laughs> like... It'll crumble. Like maybe a... Hmm. Hmm. Yeah. But I mean, he, you know, could have could have done a lot of different things, but he just he, sort of lets it hit eek. him into a building. Mm. Oh yeah, Superman could have done a lot to do better. <laughs> that feels like the theme of the Superman movie. Is... Superman could have done a lot, but he doesn't. Yeah, Superman is really dropping the ball here. Why does the movie spend so much time on Krypton? I what? It doesn't spend that much time on Krypton. Uh, it's just that what happens it. on Krypton is fucking weird. Yeah, I would again change the criticism. Everything, all the world building established on Krypton is fucking garbage. Um, the council are retarded and everything that Zod does when he tries to get to Jor-El's sort of ship launching station, wherever that is, 
Uh, everything about that's stupid. The design of it all, including the penis dildo things, I'm, I'm <laughs> fine with it. Fine with it. And and how long we spend there, it's, it's not that long. I don't know. No, it's yeah, fine. it's not that long. <clears throat> it it just feels really weird. The Civil War and setting up Zod and the genetic brain thingies. You're just like, what? What's going it, on here? It you just... could you didn't have to do this. It mm. just overwhelms the viewer with uh, information that it doesn't properly explain. It definitely so. um, has a vibe. You know when, when Jorah looks on like the big civil war that's happening, it, it definitely feels like this movie is like, are you ready for a grand spectacle? This is the Snyder universe. <laughs> You're like, okay, all right. <laughs> and why dumb alien creatures? Throughout the various continuities, comic books, and animated care. films, yeah, Krypton don't. has tons of life forms that exist on the planet, over 51 different species. I, I don't. Okay. I don't, is I don't, very is very my, actually, uh, my issue the isn't that planet. there are alien creatures on an alien planet, why, why, yeah, which like, is doubly weird this? when they're humans. Who said this? Why did they say this? Yeah. Who did say this? Where did you I find? Mean, that, did you make this up? I guess that's the that's their nitpick section. I mean, that's what they said at the beginning. This it's has a, to be like a CinemaSins criticism such a or strange, something. It's not even an argument though. Why are there alien creatures on the alien planet? You're like, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> it's, also, just, but, just go ahead. The the alien creatures on the alien planet are doubly weird when all of the aliens are humans. They're not humans, they're Kryptonian. They're humans. You know, hu it's really humanoid weird. And, yeah, they they look humans. they're li they're, like they're visually indistinguishable. indistinguishable from humans. And they're supposed yeah. to they don't even like, have uh, Superman powers, right? And unless they go to yeah. our planet, so they literally look yeah. Just it's just it's weird. You know, it's weird. They're weird. It's a dwelling. Bug, baloney, butterfly fish, crystal birds. The movie includes these creatures because this is the comic book Krypton, not the Richard Donner Krypton everyone is used to. I don't care. As for why they spend so much time on the planet. Uh, Kryptonian ape, Kryptonian dog, Kryptonian monkey, Kryptonian gorilla. It's like, oh, Dude, I can tell they're eater. from Krypton. What the fuck's a metal, metal eating a metal mole? Eating. <laughs> metal eating mole. My one metal week eater. <laughs> oh, Mel, run. Oh, no. It's the metal eater. eater. Makers were trying to play up the fact that Oliphants. A non breathing beast. <laughs> non breathing beast. Oh my god. What does that even those mean? Na those names it's are a rock. Oh my god, they got a flob name. Quad. Quad. <laughs> Quad. Superman is an alien as part of the narrative. Ron Dorn. Ron I don't even fucking care what they're saying. Beast. It's worthless anyway. I just want to look. Uh, I'm wait. Isn't Shoggoth like a like an H.P. Lovecraft type word? Shub like Niggeroth. Yeah. 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 A Torquat. Thought beast. Yeah, beast. That's the best one. I want that well, to be well, my name. How do How do we pronounce? How do we say the last one here? Tri Tripedal Curiosianium. Yeah. No, no. Curiosianium. Curios. Curios. Curiosianium. Curiosianium. <laughs> no, no, no. Tripedal Curiosianium. No, no, it's not Curio, no. it's Curiosianium. <laughs> Curiosianium. Tripedal yeah. Curiosianium. Right. <laughs> Good job, whoever named that. <laughs> and we were. Tyranno Shark! Oh, one more down the list, and we've already got a banger. Tedtho Fles. Wings Hat! Tyranno Shark. Oh, I want a Tyranno Shark and Someone had Volcano fun. Lady. Tantho Cat. Fles sounds like the original name of Canto Bite before they redrafted it. <laughs> What planet cat. are we on? Winged cat. <laughs> I'm gonna I'm gonna roll him back so I don't even know what the guy talking was saying. It's a roar. Oh. <laughs> because this is the comic book Krypton, not the Richard Donner Krypton everyone is used to. As for why they spend so much time on the planet, the filmmakers were trying to play up the fact that Superman is an alien as part of the narrative. Oh, they did that really badly. Oh, yeah, <laughs> like, they did a really bad job of that. There's nothing about him that comes across as Kryptonian in the movie. He just sort yeah. of says that he 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 is and misses them and considers them his parents and has to choose. Oh, they could have done so much better with that if that's what in they wanted to do. Yeah, in in fact, in the original, when he finds his fortress of solitude and we first see him taking off and flying, that segment you have Jor El. They play a big part of the. Uh, of what he's saying to Clark as he's flying through space as like a like a midway point or uh, like a reminder of who he is and it works really well 
this is a weird one. Eh. Bridge between worlds. Not really, though, Dad. Not really. Yeah, <laughs> Not really. I, I'd have to, I'd have to have you explain what that entails. Well, because we were doing essentially a science fiction movie, and we were highlighting Superman's alien nature, I, I wanted to spend a great deal. You did a bad job. Zurt. <laughs> spend a great Zurt. deal of time on Krypton. It wasn't vegetation long. edit. Ved vegetation. <laughs> Singing flowers. <laughs> the Zurt. <laughs> I have to rejoin to watch together. We must go climb the Nangu tree. Oh no, you're not gonna see the blood bloom plant and the, <laughs> and the illusion plans. trap plant. It's Silton. Uh, but yeah, they've got a recording of uh, Nangu tree. <laughs> the argument just went out of, like, we, oh, we wanted to spend Nangu. a while on Krypton. It's like you didn't really spend that long there. I feel like I feel like I'm missing something. I didn't feel like it was that long. Yeah. Movie. Yeah, I don't know where they got those highlighting criticisms from. Superman's but... alien nature. I, I wanted to spend a great deal of time on Krypton. Yeah, so if you're going to highlight um, Superman's alien nature, then that should be something you do with Superman. And pro probably his dad in the ship. You spend some time learning about. The thing is, he has to leave him yeah. as a baby, so he's not going to be infused with much Kryptonian culture and, and, and a missing of the, of the planet and the people, you know? You're going to have to really work hard in post to redraw that sort of connection. But they didn't really. He, the AI is weird. It's like, oh, we, we traveled for hundreds of thousands of years and it all went to shit. And Clark's like, oh, that's, <laughs> like, that's a weird story you tell me, but okay. Our Sultan, phony wedding bell bush. Why did the people of Krypton bother to imprison Zod in the yeah, Phantom Zone when good. the planet is about to explode? Yeah, what's up with that? Wait, yeah, what is up with that? Well, yeah, he is, so... He, ooh. Um, I mean, um, do they, like, this could be a flaw in a different area. Like, for some reason, the Council believe that the planet will make it? Well, no, they don't, because they say... They seem to acknowledge what Jor-El says, so that can't be it. Yeah. Uh, custom. That's all that could be argued, I think, for this. That's what they do when people break the law, and it's like, but sir, our planet's about to explode. Up, up, up. Yeah, but, yeah, but, but our <laughs> criminals, they don't deserve to die, even though they just started a civil <laughs> war yesterday and killed a bunch Vatican of people. Zone. They get to live. We well, get to die. That was apparently we won't get the, on our um, spaceships and leave. That was apparently Why? the animated vision. Was the, the, one of the jor -El suggestions was to put everybody in the Phantom Zone to save them from this, which is interesting. The idea, like we yeah. said it in the recording, I would rather be frozen to be unfrozen in an undetermined amount of time, um, versus being blown up. I don't know, I guess. It, like, especially yeah. if you're not... Well, then again, it depends on what Phantom Zone it is, right? Because, like, I've heard some of them are, like, you're conscious and well, you just stay. Uh, I mean, we know that with this one, they're... they're. Well, do we know that they're unconscious with this version of the Phantom Zone? Well, they go... Because they're frozen. Yeah, they like, get covered in goo. <laughs> and then they go... <laughs> I don't know. They didn't say, I don't think. You know what? I would still, I think I would still pick being frozen. Because there's there's one where you definitely die and one where you maybe I'm not uh, sure what die. I would pick it's... on that. Because I would fear that we wouldn't be released for so long that I'd probably go insane from having, mm. if I was just consciously staring forever. Space can be pretty neat to look explode. at. But... But if um if Krypton explodes and you get to be free and you know that Krypton's about to explode, that's not something anyone knew would happen. I don't think that's just like a oh lucky for us when Krypton exploded oh. it freed us. It's like uh huh <laughs> oh yeah. What a How weird the... alien <laughs> what, race what, with weird. What logic rules. was that anyways? That when Krypton exploded, the Phantom Zone was reopened. Is there some sort of like a like a, a, a like a gate on Krypton like a like a computer that opens up and closes the the phantom zone and when it um when it gets blown up it reopens the phantom zone like what what's the what's the deal with that I don't think they say they just they just got lucky Yeah hmm seems very weak very flimsy Oh yeah I mean the whole bit of film is built on those sorts of things like um there's one I want to get to I'm hoping he's going to bring up something cuz we didn't go over it in the live stream but I'm going to get there I'm going to get there Go Events in the opening of the movie before Krypton's destruction happen some unspecified length of time before the planet implodes. The Kryptonians don't know exactly when the planet is going to blow up, and Jor-El estimates that it's a matter of weeks. Do you not understand? What? Oh, wait, so wait, 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 wait. They so don't know when, weeks. but they know it's a matter of weeks. It's a matter of weeks. 
<laughs> I mean, like, yeah, that's not the exact, so but that's still... No, they, well, no. so this is how it's dumb. They, they, you remember, Rex, he's like, we need to evacuate, and they're like, evacuate the whole planet? Like, are you crazy, Jor-El? He's like, well, we could make you start. Exactly, there's no... You know, well, I mean, this is our is survival the, the, as the, a species. jor says it's too late for anybody on Krypton anyway. Like, the implication being they're going to explode, it's just too late. So the best they can do is launch the Codex and Embryos and Clark. Um, he's wrong, by the way. <laughs> like, very wrong. Because <laughs> the fact that you have a ship at all that can... The fact that you traverse the galaxy, you fucks. Like... Yeah. It doesn't make any sense. They're... The whole Kryptonian civilization thing needs an entire rework <laughs> from the ground up. Scrap it entirely and come up with something else because this doesn't work at all. Yeah, and trying to say that, no, this this happened weeks after they sent Kal-El to Earth is like, well, this just hurts the film even more. Yeah, wait a minute. This doesn't fix anything. If it was weeks between Jor-El dying, which we saw mm -hmm. in real time, right, and then Zod mm -hmm. getting... Lifted off. Weeks is already enough to be like, why the fuck are we sending him to prison? We got weeks before this planet explodes. Let's go. We have more we important to get... things to focus on. Yeah. Load up our ships. And how about a punishment of just time to a chair on Krypton? He's fucked. Trust me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, just leave him in the cell. I, yeah. Mm. Dad, Krypton's core is collapsing. We may only have a matter of weeks. The Kryptonian culture is so steeped in tradition that their leaders are not about to well, so in the film, he says we we may only have a matter of weeks. Then, so they they had plenty of time. They're they're so steeped yeah. in tradition that there was a massive civil war against tradition. <laughs> it's fucking stupid. It's like so that's stupid. yeah, that I don't buy it. War is collapsing. We may only have a matter of weeks. The Kryptonian culture is so. Like, you'd, you'd think that they could double-check that. Like, the core is collapsing. It's like, well, let's take a look. Oh, shit, look that's at that. The, yeah, the we thing, should though. do they something. They don't seem to disagree. Not, nope, it's tradition. They don't seem to disagree with him. They they almost acknowledge that he's correct, but their counter is evacuate the whole planet. That's ridiculous. It's like, what? So I, it's like, if, I get maybe baffled people can by leave that response. They want to. That response blows, okay. me, blows me away. Like, yeah. like, as if her argument is, or he, I can't remember which one of them says it, um... As if they're saying, like, we couldn't evacuate everybody, so let's everyone, let everyone die. It's like, what, yeah, what, die, what because yeah, surviving is hard work. <laughs> you know. Those yeah, are two dying's easier, I guess. Yeah. Because Imagine I, if on the Titanic when it was sinking, hey, look, there aren't enough boats for everybody, so let's all die. Let's it reminds all me of, go um, down with the ship. It's the Huck shit all over again, because I've seen people argue, it's like, no, nah, they're, they're arrogant and they're steeped in tradition. You're like, no, they're just really stupid. They have goals and they don't execute them. War is collapsing. We may only have a matter of weeks. The Kryptonian culture is so steeped in tradition that their leaders are not about to abandon that just because the world is about to end. <laughs> the world is about to end! Such a retarded like, sentence. At, at what point do you go, you know what? Some characters are too fucking stupid to live. And like, well, to be the, the planet's of gonna blow up, but tradition... God. And anyway... Mm. So has passed between the Z-Team imprisonment and Krypton's destruction. It wasn't right after. Do you think, um, Lara, L, whatever, was pissed that Jor-El didn't make a passenger seat in Clark's ship for her? Yeah, it's like, <laughs> you have all this time, like, make it a three-seater, let's all go. I don't get, like, well, I, I do get, because we went over it in the previous stream, there is a quote for this, where he says that they didn't because they're a part of Krypton's failures. Oh, I, even though they, uh, the only reason that I, I, uh, it's I that, that, that's one of those things you say, but it, like, doesn't mean anything. Again, I read it out on the stream, but I'll read it out now. Um, why didn't you come with me? And he says, we couldn't, no matter how much we wanted to, no matter how much we loved you, your mother and I are a product of the failures of the world as much as Zod was, we're tied to its fate. Yeah, that's not Fucking true. Fucking insane. Ship. And it, you, you think to yourself, like, ah, they accounted for it. You're like... No! <laughs> no! They haven't accounted for it at all. They just make him sound insane. Why would you not want to go with your son? No, we should like, just explode. I love how he... Is, let's, yeah, die. he made that decision for both of them, I suppose. <laughs> because if you remember, um, <laughs> stupid little alien robot says, Lara, do, don't you want to like hide somewhere when this is all happening? And she's like, there is no refuge. 
the implication being but that's not true that you have a space yeah, faring yeah, civilization the important part is that she's willing to save her own life she thinks there's no way to do it Jorel said nah <laughs> we both have nah. to die i think we can spot what happened here Jorel was like no there's no way i can put you in the ship too it's just not a thing i'm sorry and she's like <laughs> really and he's like yeah no no i wish i could why? I can't like, do no, it. I'm no. I'm tied to Krypton's fate. It's I'm like, I'm also if, like, arrogant. Listen, if you're suicidal, just say so. All right. Yeah. If you just want to die, yeah, but that's more believable. That marriage. Uh. And Krypton's destruction. It wasn't right after. This movie has no character development. Okay, false. So, that's uh, not true. Uh, There's sudden, Ginger suddenly kid. a Ginger huge kid, yes. thing. Like the other three haven't been as big as this, but all right. Uh, hmm. No character development? Yeah, I wouldn't I wouldn't say so. There's I wouldn't say yeah. there's none. I'd say it's just <clears throat> very poorly very done and minuscule. Yeah. yeah, it's very uh at odds with itself and, and it's I hate to use the word because it's just so it's just like I just want to say awkward. It's all so fucking awkward. Like um there's all the lines from the movie. Well there's no clear through line from point A to point B for Clark or anyone in this movie besides Ginger Kid. Well, um I know what people say about this film. It's the Clark has to learn that it's it's his choice to make to become the protector of Earth that he does. And it's like, that's his arc. He's like, I don't... The pieces aren't there. I'm sorry. Like, he, he's a boy who's annoyed that he has to be a farmer, and then he's sad because he also tries to save people's lives while balancing his, balancing his identity. And then he's told by Jor-El that, like, will you make the choice to stand for the people of Earth? And then when Zod threatens Earth in exchange for him, he's like, you gotta come up. And he's like, I guess I could give humans a chance. Do you see what I mean? All those pieces of information you're looking at, I'm like, what is happening here? Yeah. What is this? He seems to like to save people. He also I seems guess, to yeah. kind of... He lets his dad die. That's awkward. Uh, yeah, he lets his dad <laughs> die. <laughs> he lets a lot of people die. He lets a lot of people die. Hell yeah, he does. So, I don't know. Let's just see where this goes, I guess. Wait, what? No character development? The entire first half of the movie is character development. No, it isn't. It seems it's just a pictures. Of, no, a picture <clears throat> of a kid playing with a dog. That's not character development. That's yeah, a kid this, playing at this with point a dog. We're gonna have to get into like definitions. You know, like when he's yeah. dealing with his powers in school. If someone said that's character development, I'd probably be like, um, um, I don't know. No, it's, how does he doesn't develop as a character? He gets po more physically powerful. I guess the part where she. Talks to him through the door. I can't remember what the dialogue is specifically, but that's probably something I would count. And she doesn't she say like uh, make the world small or something because he said it's too big. I guess so like, like something's happening there that's character related, and he's going from X to Y. He is able to come out of that closet, you know, and embrace the gay. Um, something something but, happened that's character related is is our bar. <clears throat> yeah, it's 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 thin and weird in this film. Yes. And, you know, in, in opposition to Filmento, there is still pieces of plotline happening in the first half that are really fucking stupid. Like, all of the shit with the crashed airship thing, like, all of that is stupid. It's not character. It's bizarre. Well, I guess some of it's character. The entire first half of the movie is character development. No, it isn't. It seems that the people who think this are assuming that the Kal-El we see in the film has all the characteristics and values of the comic book Superman the whole time. No. From the beginning. No, no it's, no, that would be better. Because <laughs> yeah, at least I mean, there'd be something. Yeah, if he was, Here it's just a vacuum. I would accept uh, having the whole child to teenager to adult and he's got the values that Superman has as Clark before he's Superman, right? That's like the idea. But it's because mm -hmm. of his parents, not because of whatever the fuck happens in this movie. Jonathan telling him to drown kids, maybe? Yeah, maybe. They don't realize Clark Kent isn't Superman until the end of the movie. But you have to remember, this is sort of Superman Begins. Oh, you wrote this. This is a movie. <laughs> David S. Goyen. Oh yep. my god, a what a himself. loser. <laughs> well, look, in his defense, he did write Black Ops 1, so, you know, he ain't right, bad all, right. all the time. Hey, he wrote The Dark Knight as well. Oh, neat. Oh. I mean, oh. Movie <clears throat> where the world learns that he exists, <clears throat> and he decides to assume the mantle of Superman. Through the course of the film? But that doesn't happen. I'm uh, yeah, sorry. but why? Yeah, th th but also, I don't that... care what he says. 
<laughs> well, no, I'm I'm okay with the, this this being used as the argument. This is the argument that he goes from right. X to Superman in this film, and it's like, is that not fair? It's Superman Begins, like like Batman. And I'm just like, where does he start though? He's already willing to save people's lives at the cost of his identity. Then his dad says maybe you shouldn't, and then he does. And then he lets his dad. No, die. sorry. Then he doesn't. Then, then, he... then he yeah. Does. And then and then and then yeah, we move in... into will he be the protector of Earth? And you're like, why is this a question? So basically, he arrives where he started. <laughs> like, Pretty much, there, there is if you change, look at the if you look at the original, when he is when we have that big time skip, and he is now grown up more so, and he's flying out of the fortress of solitude as Superman in the suit and everything. You're like, oh, I know exactly why he's doing this. His character is very well informed to be making these decisions, and I know why he's doing it. And you don't have to question it. Like the first the first Superman movie, it isn't even like good, but it's good character stuff. Like there's a lot of there there's a lot in it that is good. Well, like, uh, genuine question, why does Clark think humans are worth saving? Uh I don't know. Because Krypton had its chance. I, well, so my, the, Superman, reason, I guess. the reason I'm bringing this up is that um I don't think you need to go into that for every character or anything, but like he seems to have that sort of dilemma briefly, but then what is the thing that makes him go, you know what, yeah, I'm picking humans. Especially because they try and push really hard that he identifies as a Kryptonian for, kind of, for like, whatever reason. Well, and the fucking Zod is like Satan in this movie. There's no yeah. Yeah. question. All of also, the Zod killed his dad, assholes. by the way. Yeah. Which he tells him, after drowning him in skulls, because he's, he's <laughs> terrible. <laughs> This, this is what I mean, there's, there's just no psychopath. There's, there's no yeah. Well, you know, your morality makes you weak. <laughs> I, <laughs> at this point, like if you were a friend of Clark's and he's like, oh, I don't know, man, humans or Kryptonians, you'd be like, dude, fucking drop a bucket of water on his head. Like, are you serious? Like, please. Clark, and that is unsure of his place in the world, trying to understand who he is. Have to a man who's questions. still Where do I come from? kind of unsure. Where do I come from? Why did you send me here? It's like, yeah, normal questions that get answered pretty quickly. We sent you here because we want you to, what does he say, be the bridge between, between the two people and be a yeah. symbol of hope? I don't fucking know. While also Maybe saying, while please choose your own off. destiny. Did they say anything yeah. along the lines of, like, because we love you and you're our son and we want you to survive and live a life? Um, whether or not they did, the obvious question comes up of why didn't you come with me? <laughs> yeah, why didn't you come with me? He's like, oh, we're shit, I guess. Well, remember, the AI would have been created before Zod killed Thingy, naturally. And so the AI doesn't know how he died. He's probably just like, I probably died because I decided that I would die with the planet. Captain goes down with the ship, you know? He's like, what? Oh. Why? <laughs> All right. <laughs> okay. Maybe your mother and I didn't think this through. <laughs> we really don't know why. <laughs> Did anyone else build pods? Did anyone else survive? Uh, you, do why I you guys go to the Phantom Kryptonians? Zone? It's like, oh, so, well, I mean, you know. Oh. Why did you send me here? Into a man who is ready to accept the responsibility of being a superhero. Accept the responsibility of being a superhero. Where was that? No, he just shows up and he's wearing the outfit now. That's just, don't a, even... we don't know why. <laughs> The That's the that thing, we have no idea why. I don't even get what that means within the context of this film. Accepting the responsibility of being a superhero. It's like, what do you, what do you mean when you're saying that? Accepting, like, that he has to be Earth's representative against threats? Is that what you're like, saying? What is, what is special about this suit in particular? Like, what's the, um, what's the purpose of it being on that ship? Was this meant for him? Was it meant for someone else? Like, <laughs> well, what's the... Maybe this video will go into it at some point, but what I know from Meme Repository is that there's a comic written about this portion of the film that's not in the film. This is strictly just to give you guys some information that apparently exists. This ship belongs to the House of L. It was driven by Supergirl 20,000 years ago. She crashed and died. That's an unfortunate name. The House of L. <laughs> <laughs> not posting any wins. Uh, so yeah, that suit belongs to the House of L, apparently. Wait, so wait, so, so they all Supergirl wore it? Went there I don't thousand years. But I thought she was meant to be like his cousin. I thought um... Yeah, they live real long, I guess. <laughs> oh. Dude, I this isn't in the film though, so it's so all in like a comic. Then. 
So I don't. Well, going strictly Why from is... the film, none of this makes any fucking sense. There is a ship. It is Kryptonian. It, it's it's got the L family shit in it. Yeah. But why is she flying a ship with a male suit? Like, no it's, a, it's a suit fitted for men. It's like, wouldn't it be a suit fitted for a woman if it's Supergirl? Well, then it would Where's be perfect. Hers? Oh, it will be perfect when it fits a Supergirl. I just, um, <laughs> I don't understand any of it. It's all really, really weird. And you'd think that this ship was... <laughs> I was about to... No, I'm not even going to try, because it'll make no sense. It's just, I don't know what this all is. It's all crazy Dodd sets. And I what? think these are the kinds of people who will probably be like, if you want to find out, go and read the books. No. Nope. What, what if what if this is actually Supergirl's costume? That like, what if Supergirl was trans, or Supergirl was just buff? No, know. this is Supergirl's costume. That's why it's so tight fitting <laughs> oh, on him God, because it... he had to squeeze himself <laughs> in Abby, there. Abby, Abby was Supergirl. Hey, well, you know they could fight in uh, BVS two without Batman because he's just gonna watch from the distance with his shotgun. <laughs> There's a chance I can save Earth by turning myself in. <laughs> Look at Jesus. <laughs> I, hey, I can save everyone by turning myself in. Yeah, that's what should, that's what Zod said. Uh, don't even, should should I? I? It's like, what I mean. Yeah. I just love the idea that he's like, wait, wait, wait. Let's run these both like simulation wise. I go up to the ship, and see what he wants as this super unkillable dude. Well, I mean, yeah, I guess that's one scenario. What's the other? I watch the entire world burn, and then I probably go and talk to him because what else am I going to do at that point? <laughs> Like, hmm, this is a real tough choice. I don't know. Oh, the dilemma. I don't know. Let's think of it this way. Humans have given him no reason to want to fight on their behalf or even, you know, negotiate on their behalf, right? Like, humans suck. What have humans done for Clark? It's like, um, a lot, actually. <laughs> but he doesn't seem to notice this. It feels like he arrived at Earth yesterday. The way he talks about yeah, humans. As opposed to having lived here his whole life. It's really odd. Bizarre. Shouldn't I take it? We see Clark grow up under the fatherly guidance of John Kent, mm -hmm. who helps Clark understand the importance of his unique abilities and his possible <laughs> impact. Yeah. On oh, the no, around. this no, character no. is a yes. horrific, yeah, what Jonathan horrible, Kent's terrible person. Whole thing is consequence for revealing yourself. He's like, bad things could happen to many people. Very non-specific, and of course, in favor of. Letting groups of people die if it means we prevent groups of people. It's like a really weird... Basically, you have like a, a bus full of children drowning, and the potential spooky fog of what will happen if people find out who you are. It's like... I, I, yeah, I'm which go... means you will be incredibly rich and famous. Everyone will know your name. Yeah, which one you of these things... You will be like one of the greatest humans who ever lived, capable of insanely amazing things. Like, yeah, that sounds awful. It's like, which one of those <laughs> things do you want to happen? The bus of children drowning or the spooky fog it's like i guess i'll take the fog like I, i'm not too bothered by it yeah like, I, I, yeah it's like i'll yeah i will risk being um famous in the whole world um and anything, maybe um like myself being used as a like like a way to cure you know like what scientific research and everything how is this so, person so strong can we like make other people this strong and healthy I'll and everything like that mary has the cure all blood and she doesn't do anything with it, that woman. <laughs> it just it seems like a really easy one. You know, you save the bus full of kids. Yeah, and and you know, let's just pretend for a second that the government put out this big thing saying we're gonna find this guy called Superman and the second we do, we're gonna dissect him, we're gonna chop him up into tiny millions of tiny pieces. And if a dad is like, Oh my god, don't let that happen, let the children drown, I would still be like, No. Like the government suck, I know, but no, I'm not gonna let the children <laughs> drown. I'm sorry, Dad. Please let me save the children. <laughs> and uh, yeah, if anything, Jonathan Kent puts him away from his standard arc. Like it seems, as a kid, he's like, "Yeah, he's saving people." And Jonathan Kent's like, "Maybe don't though. Maybe, maybe don't." It's fucking bizarre. What what they needed to do is if they wanted to have this this sort of more, more ambiguous choice. Then it should be him, like, stopping a woman from being assaulted. It should be, or, or stopping someone from being bullied. Or, you know, something like that. Something really small scale, where you're like, eh, you know, is this one thing worth it? Da, 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 da. Mm. Not saving the lives of a busload of children. <laughs> <laughs> then your own father. <laughs> and then your own father. Yeah, you need to have it be, a, you need to balance out these things a whole lot better if you want this to even approach a decision where you could haggle 
Because this is a slam dunk softball. This is an easy question. You save the busload of children. Yep. I'm in favor of saving the busload like, of children myself. Like, duh. The troll just goes like, hi, this little Jimmy was a prick anyways. It's like, no. Oh, that dick splash was on that bus. A little him. dick splash. <laughs> only Human only, uh, only Zack Snyder could fuck it up. And the writer. I'm sure a bunch of other people could have as well. <laughs> oh, yeah, I'm sure they could have. Yeah. Who helps yeah. Clark understand the importance of his unique abilities and his possible impact on the human race. No, he doesn't. Somewhere out there, you, you have another father, too, who gave you another name. And he sent you here for a reason, Clark. And even if it takes you the rest of your life, you owe it to yourself frame rate to on find that out what that reason is. That shit, Clark's though, from... that doesn't help him like, understand anything. Yeah, what, what ex All he told him was, you need to go and find out what stuff. Yeah, no, this isn't okay. explaining. This is saying that you need an explanation. Yep. This is the opposite of explanation. This it, is like when you have a quest and you go visit someone and they tell you that the princess is in another castle. That's it. Yep. Jonathan Kent just so, that's all he said. The explanation is in another. This castle. is a this is a line uh, from the original. Uh, this is Jor El talking to a young Clark. He says they can be a great people, Kal El. They wish to be. They only lack the light to show the way. For this reason, above all, their capacity for good, I've sent them you, my only son. That's already way better. Struggles <laughs> <laughs> with the cons. He is presented with situations that need his superhuman abilities. Oh, Clark, you have to keep this side of yourself a secret. By the end of the film, Clark understands why would you who show he that? And the yeah. <laughs> well, I'm I'm actually waiting for him to make. Whatever point he's a trying point? to make with this, yeah. Example he should set for mankind. I'm here to help. But it has to be on my own terms. At that point, he becomes... No, you can't know. Like, hundreds of thousands of people died. You need to calm yourself. You need yeah, to... I mean... Yeah, he really has no like to stand on when he says that at that well, point so in, in the yeah, movie. <laughs> he's almost full of himself in terms of like, hey, yeah. I saved you guys, so maybe chill with the watching it's me. He's like, like, you let you so saved... many people Look, die. You did save us, but you could have done a better job, all right? It like, honestly you know... comes... It, it honestly kind of reminds me of Homelander now. Like, the yeah. way that he says that in that context is like, yeah, that's that's totally a Homelander thing to do. They made Superman into Homelander in Man of Steel. Maybe Homelander will become Incredible. Superman in season three of The Voice. <laughs> He'll grow a conscience. Um, yeah, it's 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 actually fascinating because you could have any onlooker just absolutely rip Superman apart for all the mistakes he's made, and he wouldn't be so smug at that point, I don't think. Or at least I wouldn't mm -hmm. want him to be. And that's what BVS also, could have been about, by the way, but they wasted that too. Could have been. Um, also in the uh, in the original, he uh, Clark spends twelve years with his father in the Fortress of Solitude. It sort of left open and ambiguous as to what they actually do, but it's implied that he goes on this, like like his father teaches him for 12 years after he leaves Kansas. Um, so, in this, he's just sort of like, I guess I'm Superman now. Because really he did, becomes a fisherman. They really did fuck up the opportunity to explore the fact that Clark kind of led Zod into the city in Man of Steel and BVS. He drove because, him there. <laughs> well, that's the thing is like uh, when when you've got Bruce Wayne hugging the little orphan girl um, and looking up at the sky, you have the uh, like that's that obviously could set up the whole. OK, so Bruce would be pissed at Clark or, or Superman because Superman basically caused all that destruction. But. No, that's not his motivation. His motivation is well, he could turn evil. Not yeah. he's literally caused a ton of destruction. And then his his arc is resolved by finding out that his mother has the same name. Well, he has a mother what rather. I mean, they but have, it's they have material to work with. They bungle Man of Steel, and so it's like okay, we can still make this work, guys. We can still make this work, like how Civil War makes Iron Man three work. Well, Civil mm -hmm. War makes Age of Ultron work too. This is just, they didn't make it work in BVS at all. Here to help, but it has to be on my own terms. At that point, he becomes more like the comic. No, we need Sokovia Accord. We need a, we need, we need Metropolis Accords. <laughs> Hell fucking what we need. Yes. We like, Superman, can we just talk to you for five seconds about like how you decide? Remember, yeah. that comes in in BVS. That's a line, right? She says like, how do you decide which lives are worth saving, which aren't? It's like, oh my God, a glimpse of a point. <laughs> Yeah, not... like, remember what happened in the city? Like, how you didn't lead Zod out, how you specifically kept him in the city, and then there was the town 
where you just like kept fighting in a town and wouldn't leave? Why didn't you lift him up into space? Like, what are you doing? What what's wrong with you? Like, actually, what's wrong with you? Do you hate us? <laughs> Is this like your an excuse for you to murder us? How come you never talk to us? What's going on here? No, oh, no, 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 dude. You're, you're just you're just nitpicking for criticizing this movie for ignoring a very obvious thing that people would be thinking in this world if it if this sort of thing ever occurred. People being upset that Superman is kind of responsible for hundreds of thousands of dead people. Eh, it's just a little mm. nitpick. Really. Yeah, it's just it's, nitpicking. It's whatever, it's fine. It's all good. It's fine. He becomes more like the comic book Superman that people expect. More Not exactly like, like, but we'll get to that. To say that Not there's no close. character development at all is just wrong. Well, that's fine because we didn't say it anyway. Oh yeah, if, if you, you could have just... showed some of that. It's oh, just, it's oh, here we go. Here we go. Oh, I, I would 100% agree with this one. No. Okay, before yeah. whatever he says, my argument would be that um, he allows his dad to do all of the stuff a normal person could do um, instead of himself when he's stronger and ultimately if anything really bad was to happen, he could survive it. Second, he can save his dad and I don't believe it's in character for him to let the dad die. Um, he, he, he like... Is, 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 dad, is, is dad telling him stop, no, is enough for him to be like, yeah, okay. <laughs> to yeah, if I could save my dad's life and he's like, no, let me die, I'd be like, eh, no. <laughs> like, I think the saved. important thing is that he knows with absolute certainty that he'll live. If he goes, there yeah. is no risk to himself in doing this. And I don't, I don't believe for a second the fact that he saved the children on the bus. I don't believe for a second that he's that concerned about his identity being leaked. I really don't. Yeah. Yep. And if he is at this point, then that just further shows the damage that the Jonathan Kents did. have like <laughs> wrecked, wreaked on his psyche. <laughs> By the way, the, the... Also, yeah, just like what does this, uh, what does Jonathan Kent's death in this movie do to affect Clark's character development exactly? Like this version of Clark, whereas with most versions where Jonathan Kent just dies of a heart attack, it's you know it's about him realizing okay he can't save everyone because there are things like you know heart attacks that he legitimately can't save people from, you know. Uh, so it's just with this version. It's like his his dad is insisting that he doesn't save anyone to protect his identity, which is like, so how does this bolster his character development in any way? How does this move it forward? Maybe this video will tell us because I'm lost <laughs> on that one too. Um, yeah, they did such a great job at explaining the incredible character development. Of, you know oh, gonna... by the way, it, only only Superman. They didn't even mention anyone else, by the way. I'm also going to add to the how it's stupid. Um, everyone gets out of their cars instead of driving their cars away from the tornado. They could literally just go to the left and drive away onto the grass. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because the left lane, or the, the half of the road, like everyone was trying to leave someplace. No one was coming the other direction. Yeah, if then, that was me, yeah, I'm, I'm, yeah, I'm, I'm leaving. I'm going on the other side. And I'm driving away from the tornado. And then I would say the contrivance of his death being that he needs to get a dog, which I'm not against the idea of saving a dog. Just the idea that the people who had Good. the dog left it in there, and then on top of that, the car that falls on him, or his. There was car. like a chick. There was like a kid in there too. What? Oh, I'm talking about the last thing, the last entity that he rescues that costs him oh, his life yeah, yeah, is the yeah. dog. Um, but also a car falls on him. Of all the places the car could fall, it hits Jonathan Kent. And, and, and then, of course, Jonathan Kent giving up. He doesn't even try to escape the tornado. He just goes, nah, mm. my leg hurty. So it's broken. It's in tatters. So I'm curious what defense you got of this one. Does Clark, his father, to die in such a stupid way? Yeah. I let my father die because I trusted him. Because what? <laughs> <laughs> what a fucking stupid thing to say. What an insanely dumb do thing we, for you to utter. Do we do we miss that in our uh, in our reaction to the movie? Because I don't remember we would Oh, we line. might have been laughing at something else terrible else. about this movie. <laughs> <laughs> what a horrific... Oh, I let him my die because I trusted him. Fuck you, Clock. I don't like Clock. In these movies, I let my father die an ass. because I trusted him. Because Hello, he was no. that I had to wait. That the world was not ready. The concept of it's not even. But I don't why? Even... Why would the world be ready now, but not then? <laughs> when would the that world was like be ready that was the this? other day, basically. <laughs> 
at what point Jeez. does everybody just go like, oh man, you know what? It's, there's it's time for Superman. <laughs> like impervious to bullets. Now I'm I'm cool with that now. Yeah. I wasn't a week ago, but now I'm okay. Yeah, a few years ago. Oh man, I would not be not be on board with that. But no. I, I feel like we've uh, we're, world the world's had enough character development and now we can handle it. I'm fast realizing there's a lot of writing in Man of Steel that's like, wait, why did stupid thing happen? And then a character just says, I did it because that's stupid. what I wanted to do. Because like, stupid. okay, <laughs> because I'm stupid. Yeah, like <laughs> there's no through line. It's just that is the thing that happened. And you're like, okay, no. <laughs> all right. Super about a guy with godlike powers who saves the world. Superman Clearly. is about morality. About no, having godlike. <laughs> about no, it is morality. Not. The morality is... of letting your dad die in a tornado because he said. So, <laughs> yeah. He this film is not about morality. If I was gonna say name movies what about morality, morality, wouldn't be Man of Steel. Krypton existed and died. They don't get to have another try at life. Um, That's I, moral. I won't, I won't, <laughs> but I also won't destroy all Kryptonians um, because I have some weird affinity for them, even though they're even all evil to. monsters. He didn't even have to. He could have threatened Zod that he'll destroy the embryos unless he parks the fucking car and gets out now. Yeah. And we Aww. have a conversation. Yep. Film would have improved dramatically if more people talked to each a other. A conversation? Power As cringe. opposed to a dream sequence where you sink into a sea of skulls. <laughs> <laughs> I recommend well, I against the out. skull sinking strategy, okay? It was just, it was just explain that to Zod. He was like, I don't follow. What do you mean? Just see how cool your, your people do not so find cool, yeah. dying in seas of skulls Imagine convincing. Like Clark is going through that simulation, and there's like a, another scientist in the room. It's like, oh, which one did you put him through? And he's like, the skull one. And he's like, no, you didn't. No, no you did that was all the ones we have. I, I don't even know why we have that simulation. <laughs> I made that as a meme, Zod. Like I was just <laughs> fucking around. <laughs> I was like, oh, so we had the context like is he was like, imagine you used this one. It would be so embarrassing if you used this one. We had we had 17 different flower simulations. <laughs> we even had a puppy simulation, and you gave him the one simulation that has him drowning in skulls. Yeah, like, God, no. <laughs> crazy pit. Zod goes like, hey, so you, know, you, you have two choices. One where Zod is actually a good guy, and one where Zod is lying. The lying one would just be like, we're just going to... You know, live alongside humans. It'll be harmony. We will share technology. You guys will be much better for it. Trust me. Just allow this to happen. We need to extract your blood to get the codex to save Krypton. It'll be great. Your dad and I work together. And Clark will be like, hmm. Hmm. Well, you I seem... don't believe you. Mm, I don't know. Uh... Yeah. And then you could have the one where he's like legit a good guy. But like the, the he has to terraform the planet to save what remains of the Kryptonian bit, and we have to argue. Oh God! Again, every time I think about fixing it, I'm like, no, we need to scrap all of it and redo it. <laughs> Plus, you're like, if you're Zod and you have been, your life's focus is now finding uh, Clark and restoring Krypton. This is your singular goal. You have all of this time. And all of these other people to come up with like a plan. What are we gonna say to him? How are we gonna convince him? Uh, you know, da 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 da. da. Uh, you know, he's probably gonna be like super powered and everything like that. Uh, what what are we gonna do? You know, and, yeah. and this is what they did. You could it's you could have baffling. You'd have Zod uh, appear to be good, and he's uh, like genuinely conflicted about having to terraform the Earth. But then you have Feora, oh, who great. is, I guess, like. You could have her be his wife, and she's like a Lady Macbeth type, where she's pushing him to go like, no, no, no this is what we have to do. Anything. Get it? You know, any, like a scientist anything talking darkness. about how excited he is to get started on, like, you know, bringing up the Kryptonians and Zod's, like, all the humans will die. And you could just have them be like, they're humans. Maybe all the other Kryptonians don't know that. They Maybe all the other ones are like, yeah, yeah we're going to live with these humans and we're going to have a planet of our own. Oh, there's so much potential great. in all of these other versions. <laughs> yeah, like anything that we come up with at the top of our head is fucking damn teed to be better than the crap and that was in Man of Steel. If you think about it as well, like you got the world engine and the embryos. These are the two things that Zod wants. One, to resurrect Kryptonians and the other to resurrect Krypton. Like, why does he need to resurrect Krypton? Because his reasoning is the Kryptonians won't grow up in pain like Clark did if they have Krypton atmosphere. You're like, fine, whatever. And in any so, conversation, 
that they had, Clark would have just been, oh, no, it's actually, it's it's fine. Well, yeah, uh, that's another thing a lot of people invent shit for. They're like, no, 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 the kids wouldn't survive it. And it's like, no, that's not what Zod said. He said they'd be in pain. Like Clark. And what we saw of Clark was very easy to get. It looked like not much more trauma than the average kid goes out but gets when growing yeah, up Yeah, he was just sick for a little while. He yeah, just he... had like a toothache, essentially. You know, like, and like he was a kid, and he was, as a as a kid, he was able to handle it. And these are adult warriors, and they're like, yeah, it'll hurt. <laughs> My, well, they're hurts. talking about the growing up the embryos, which, by the way, again, assuming this is all true, um, and the world engine gets destroyed, that means that all Zod has left is the embryos. That is his number one concern. And he says to Clark, if you destroy this ship, you destroy Krypton, which, by the way, technically correct in terms of if you view Krypton as a people, which is what I said in the stream, yeah, which yeah. is actually yeah, interesting. Yeah. Um, but, he, like, again... Why the fuck didn't he give up? Like put his hand like you'd be the kind of thing where you'd be like, You got me. I can't I can't terraform the place anymore. Now all I want is to make sure that I can bring these these fuckers to term, okay? That's it. Uh, yeah. Like there's the, no the reason for you to here, destroy these all are, the embryos anymore. are innocent. Yeah, the, 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 this is what I mean. Zod that, should that, flip that character completely. Happens. He's lost the potential to terraform the planet, so now it's just like, right, the only thing I can do now is just try and grow up the embryos. I have no interest in killing anybody, okay? Like, it's, I just, I just let me do it, please. <laughs> yeah, anything for this. But no, nobody acts the way they're supposed to. They just, they're all just, I want to punch people. That's like their whole characters. <laughs> that's also because cause they're soldiers, and that's all they know how to do. Oh, right, mm. yeah. A soldier without Whatever. a war who goes nuts. <laughs> they, can't no, they have no soul. Ugh. <laughs> uh, so bad. <laughs> who saves the Superman is about morality, about having godlike no, powers isn't. and choosing when to use them and for what purpose. No, the it's not. not about yeah, that. The film is not about that. Dad isn't one of them, right? <laughs> Dude, that fucking episode of Futurama does that better than this. The Bender being God. When oh, Dad, yeah, but I mean, are we even going to compare the right? Well, you think, you, you think like, oh, that's unfair because Futurama is good. It's like it's twenty minutes, and they nailed this way better than Man of Steel did. Yeah, hmm. yeah you were doing a really good job until Man everyone Steel, died. Like, <laughs> when should yeah. Superman act, considering he has godlike powers? It's like, how the fuck was that covered in this film? You let so many people die, and it's oh. yeah, like in Futurama, yeah. the whole idea is that Bender. Like he his priorities are misplaced and he focuses too much on one group of people over another. They become dependent or they become despondent, and then obviously everybody kills themselves. And it's like this that's, is a film that's... about neglect, super neglect. Well, I guess what I'm saying is like in Futurama, you got this this really interesting sort of commentary on like, well, I mean, if God existed, if he was too present or not present enough, then that that may well be an issue. And maybe that's worth considering in, like, Man of Steel, how much should he do, and how little should he do. But doing, like, at least saving your dad from a fucking tornado, like, <laughs> at least do that. Like, come on. No, yeah. he trusted his dad, and that's why he let him die. <laughs> well, it seems like your dad was pretty I fucking just... stupid. Yeah, like, I'm sorry, John was wrong. Like, John was a he was a terrible person. He was an idiot. He was, he he was, was, dude, he didn't even want to live. He clearly didn't want to live. You know, he, he was probably just tired of farming. He was like, I don't like this shit anymore. <laughs> Whatever. Maybe Clark was right. Just I don't want to be a farmer. <laughs> in Man of Steel, this that plays out in the form of an overall theme of choice. Jarrell sent his son to Earth so he could have a chance to choose his fate, unlike the rest of Krypton. Your mother and I believe Krypton lost some. All right, so, but Jor-El, so Jor-El didn't choose, okay, okay, so Zod didn't choose to rebel against the system that made him what he is? Yeah, this, yeah, this is that whole... And he didn't choose to destroy Earth. <laughs> this is the thing, the film never explores the meaning of these choices, which, by the way, is a super controversial thing for me to say for people who love this film. It's like, it doesn't get over it, okay? It doesn't get over it. The, yeah, this, this film's Clark, really, really fucking bad, and the world building is trash. Clark never has to make any kind of significant, important, and uh, <clears throat> meaningful decision. It's always obvious, and it's just, it's confusing that he ever has trouble with any of them. And then Zod is doing a lot of things, including feeling emotion and making specific choices, that make me think, like, it's a little bit more complicated than saying he has no choice. I just I don't believe you. Like, oh, he well, he had to be a soldier. It's like it seems like he's pretty chill with being a soldier. Like, not not to say that that's why it's it, it works. It's the just the, this idea that like look at Zod and then look at Clark, the clear differences in people who get to choose and people who don't. It's like I don't know. At like, least it, is that why? Well, I don't, just I don't know why Zod... anyone does the things that they do in this world. If Zod didn't like... get to choose, that's why he's a horrible monster. Like, what's Clark's excuse? 
Yeah, I want to. We don't know anything about why people do the things that they do. This is an issue that comes up quite a bit when you have things that are written really terribly. Well, you don't know what to blame on in universe stuff, and you don't know what to blame on the fact that it's just shittily written. And Man of Steel fans are happy with explaining. So you, you bring up, like, why does Zod try to kill everyone in the end? Why does Zod not value the embryos more? Why does Zod try to terraform the whole planet instead of any other planet or instead of brokering peace with the humans? The answer? Well, you see, he was bred to be a soldier. That doesn't answer yeah, any you know, of those things. Yeah, and you know those soldiers always wanting to kill. And terraform planets. <laughs> and terraform planets, you know. It's a. I'm sorry, but you like know, the film. You know, those soldiers. The film might think it answers these things. Mm. This is what I mean about the whole, like, Zack Snyder trying to generate meaningful decisions. Again, I referenced the fucking opening of Civil War, the choice between blowing up all the people right there or throwing it up and just, you know, hoping for the best and it, it blows up a bunch of people as collateral in a building. But compare that to maybe you should let children drown versus not <laughs> letting them drown. You're like, what the fuck? Why is no, this stop, the stop, go back. Why wouldn't you like, make oh, it a harder yeah, choice? This is just a bad movie. Like, I'm picturing it, like a bunch of, uh, you know, like people trying to lift the, the you know, what's, what's that device? The Jaws of Life, right? Where it's Elevator? Like a, oh. Yeah. Um, <laughs> where they have to bring it out to get people out of like horrible car accidents and stuff. Um, yeah. I'm picturing like that, and the Jaws of Life haven't made it there yet, and they're waiting for it because nobody can lift the car, and there's press, and there's people everywhere, and Clark's there, and so's Jonathan, and they're just like, shit, I could save them. And it's like, there's one guy, you know? And he might live if Clark does nothing, but he will definitely live if Clark does something. That you have to you have to balance the stakes like that. You can't have it be a whole bus full of children drowning. You yeah, can't. <laughs> you're gonna have to get way more nuanced with your moral dilemmas because that ain't no moral dilemma. Yeah, it just leaves us. They confused. will die if you don't save them versus they might live if you don't do anything. That's a that's a different choice. I think that's way more interesting because Clark could decide with Jonathan it's not worth it, and then that guy dies, and it's like fuck. Yeah. And you have to deal with that, and that could push Clark to being at the point where he's like, I'm always going to save them every time. I, I can't let that happen again. That sort of thing. Yeah, that yeah. could be a really cool little arc for him. The element of choice, of chance. What if a child dreamed of becoming something other than what's intended for him or her? Wait, do they take away your dreams? And that wouldn't even matter, because if he goes to Earth and they don't go by that system, then, like... I'm also curious He'd be in about a completely um, different environment. Like you know, when you become like you're genetically engineered to be a soldier, do you just are you like a robot, or do you ever think like you know I wouldn't mind doing some arts and crafts in my spare <laughs> time? You know what I mean? <laughs> like you know, here on Earth, we have this art of war book. It's really great, <laughs> and they say stuff like, "Oh yeah, the best general is the one who never has to fight a battle," and things like that. I guess on Krypton it's the opposite. It's like the more battles, the fucking better. <laughs> fucking yeah. war is it's fucking like metal. There's no Let's war go, Chads. happening. So you like yeah, Zod, you're like, what? hey man, do you want to play some Resident Evil 4? You might like it. It's like, <laughs> and he's just like, maybe I will. I enjoy this violence. <laughs> this I will play this game. Me. I am happy. This Earthling now. on Earthling violence amuses me. Kal-El could inspire the people of Earth to be better Clark. if he chose to. They're better than him already. But he doesn't. They're also better than him already. I'm sorry. <laughs> Most people are better than Clark. Yeah, like, people hate him in the next movie. It's fucking <laughs> bizarre. I mean, it's not bizarre that they do. It's well, that it's bizarre that you bring this up as a point for the movie. When the movie does basically nothing to establish that you need to, like, be an example for them to follow. Oh, and when then you're they, this mysterious, they... enigmatic like person who lets hundreds of thousands of people die due to your negligence and then they mourn him after he dies too yeah well this is the, the thing I, though like doing i'm, I'm not even using bvs at all i'm saying that clock's ineptitude with the amount of power he has like he's not better than anybody on earth on average oh yeah just in this there's nothing inspiring about superman in this film to at have... all he's a terrifying horrible example of aliens that are dumb what's almost as dumb to me is having someone say to homelander like you can lead the humans to be better and he he'd like smirk and look at the sud like yes i could and we'd all be like oh it's pesky homelander <laughs> like, but because you need him to actually be like a paragon of virtue in order to be like yeah you can guide them to be better because honestly most people are better than clark he's apathetic oh about saving definitely lives 
Most people get a huge buzz out of even li li risking their own lives to save someone. They feel like they've done something great and that it'll mean a lot. Meanwhile, Clark, yeah. he's almost crying when he's saving people. <laughs> it's like, oh, <laughs> why'd you gotta oh, make me go outside? I wanna go home! I hope it's the fundamental belief in the potential of every person to be a force for good. That's what you can bring them. John but Kent does Clark Force for That's good. the thing. Like, this is the most they ever... He talks about it here this one time, and it never happens. We never see it done. They're not more specific than good. It's like, what, what, do, you, what do you mean? What are you, is it good? Remember Bridge Between Wheels? Like, is it good for me to help Zod terraform a planet? Question mark, Dad? They talk about these moral dilemmas in the film. Jor-El just says, do good. Okay. Thanks, I guess. ...to have the same choice from a different perspective. All these changes that you're going through one day, one day you're gonna think of them as a blessing, and when that takes... ...pausing for the sake of... Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. Yeah. Says, mm -hmm. ...comes, you're gonna have to make a choice. A choice of whether to stand proud in front of the human race or not. Above all else, John... I don't even know what that means. Maybe he'll do that sometime. Stand proud yeah. in front of them or not? Like, okay. lead them? <laughs> I don't know. He wants a good life for his son. And if people knew what he was and what he could do, he would be an outcast from society. No, no he wouldn't. Of, Fuck no, off with that shit. No. <laughs> no, he wouldn't. That Did is this, the dumbest thing ever. By the way, ever. this no, world already has... he would be the has. most famous person who ever existed. Remember Wonder Woman 84? This world already has a superhero that's beloved. So get fucked. Yeah, that's oh, right. Oh shit. Oh my god. Whoops. And this that's guy wrong. apparently doesn't know about Wonder Woman. <laughs> well, that's no. that's that's Lucky. probably because she keeps on breaking the cameras. <laughs> <laughs> the normal life <laughs> taken away. When the world finds out what you can do, it's gonna change everything. Our our beliefs, our notions of what it means to be human. Why, why does he even want bad? him to have a normal life instead of an extraordinary life? But why we would don't that... know any of this stuff. You just said that as a warning. Like, if people find out who you are, it'll change our perception of what it means to be human. It's like, okay. Okay. That's fine. Like, in a bad <laughs> way? <laughs> yeah, like, why does he say that? Like, oh, you don't want to let anyone know about oh, you. Yeah. Cause, yeah. Like, okay, it's worth all the people dying so that we don't have to have harsh questions about what it means to be human. Fine, I guess. Like, oh, you're just a bad person. No, it's because Jonathan wants to protect his son. It's actually really emotional and justified. He wants to protect him from, um... Paparazzi. <laughs> Clocks at the I toilet. Guess. He's like, oh no! <laughs> Everything. Afraid of what they don't understand. <sighs> this is also the answer to but another question. But they can't do question. anything to you. You're Why Superman. Why does Clark's father tell him oh, that they're he done. should... Oh my god. Look, oh wow, look they're done is. with that. They uh, they presented okay. no evidence of anything contradictory information and then they fucked off to the next point. Alright then, yeah, this movie is bad. They've also highlighted to me just how fucking vague this movie is when it comes to developing characters. They say stuff and you're supposed to just kind of figure it out for yourself. Yeah. So you see, humans won't understand you. It's like, you see, so Clark doesn't want to do it because he's spooked by being an outcast. Like, is that really mm. worth people dying? movie do you know what you're saying and then that person will be like no 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 no. but anyway i'm very excited because this this one good luck with this one video <laughs> on the bus drown he's not telling clark yes you should let all children die just to selfishly protect yourself he's, he's only, only implying maybe. it maybe he's this only is saying maybe, maybe, maybe you should this is maybe <laughs> maybe you should. Only saying that it was, okay. it was worth considering yeah, rewind <laughs> nobody ever said that jonathan kent wants clark to kill all children okay that wasn't the criticism <laughs> he says it's it maybe it's worth it to let all of those children die to protect your little secret which is fucking absurd <laughs> he is a moral monster fuck this guy yep fuck him he is a horrible person. Yourself. He's saying maybe. We all watch the movie. He's too. saying maybe. <laughs> As if that's any better that's, than... That's better. <sighs> I didn't uh -huh. say that the Holocaust was good. I said maybe, maybe it, it was good. Because <laughs> it's obvious he doesn't know the answer to the question. He should know the answer to the question. He should because he's an adult human. Oh my god. <laughs> there are harder You're questions to ask. horrible. For some reason, Zack Snyder decided that this was a hard <laughs> Like, it's just so obvious to all of us that, hey, if, if we have a kid that is, like, an alien with uh, incredible superpowers, 
and they end up saving a bus full of kids from drowning, but that like risks exposing their identity. I think that we all know how we'd react. We could say, "Good job, sport. Let's let's go get some ice cream. Well, I want to I want to you know reward you for what you did." The funny thing to me is exactly if my super powered son saved a busload of children, I would be like, "You are a goddamn hero." Yeah, like you did I, the I would, right thing. Was even a you hint. are an amazing person. Can I take you to the ball um, game? You're wonderful. Yeah, <laughs> like yeah. I am so proud. I'm more proud of you than words can even express. If there was even a hint that that theoretical son was regretting the decision, I would want to get that out of his head immediately. I'd be like, no, 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 no. What you've done is infinitely meaningful. You've all of those people will now go on to live lives thanks to you. Like, yeah. Mm -hmm. You don't understand. Think just of all how their parents who's, who would have been devastated. You know, think of all the 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 horror and the tragedy that you saved the world. Like that's what it is to be a good person. I'm like, like Dad, this... what if they find out my secret? It's like then they'll find out what an amazing person you are, Clark. Da 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 da. Writing. If if, if all these <laughs> kids died, if all these kids died in a in a bus accident in our little small town of Smallville, Kansas, in the middle of butt fuck nowhere, this would be one of the only things that people would talk about. This would be the town where. That bus full of kids drowned, but you prevented that. Yeah, this would have been Columbine. Yeah. Um, they're actually trying to defend this, though. That's amazing. I know, no, it's, it's insane. Just, it's, People it's just really amazing. want to defend this shitty movie. We, we, all, we are all on the same page. Meanwhile, in this, <laughs> yeah. in this Meanwhile, movie... Meanwhile, in video essay land. <laughs> <laughs> well, I was going to say, we should have had a list by now, but just immoral video essayists. <laughs> this is, we have a lot of them. Protect yourself. He's saying maybe, because it's obvious he doesn't know the answer to the question. <laughs> He's a horrible does. person! <laughs> that's, that's, that's what I mean, that's the criticism, dude. We're criticizing the fact that he doesn't know the answer. It makes him a terrible human being. Die. And, by the way, the film is not aware of Jonathan Kent being a horrible person. That's no, another no, no, big no. issue. The film like, thinks it's were... a hard choice. If they were to just do this like in a sort of cynical way where it was like, yeah, Superman's father was a piece of shit. It's like, okay, well, this is a an unfaithful adaptation, but at least if you're aware of that, then I'll roll with it so long as the arc is actually well written. This is not it. I feel like this, this, <laughs> this is, is only, not it at all. This only flies if you're in like a, a group of friends that regularly just back each other up that this is a hard choice to make. It's just like, no, it's not. This is, it's just yeah, not. this is what, like, this is child level morality. And even then, I don't even I don't even know that's true. That's being I was gonna say, Clark really seems stretchy to know the right there, answer, didn't he? Because <laughs> like, kids want to. I mean, most kids kind of want to be heroic, you know. Uh, they want to save the day and all that sort of thing. Sure. Yeah. And I bet most people would be open about their powers anyway. They'd be like, "Yeah, I'm fucking Superman. I got all these cool powers. I could save the day. I'm amazing. Look at me, everybody." You no, know, you'll be an outcast, right? Everyone will hate you. Oh. There's more at stake here than just our lives, Clark, or the lives of those around us. Be specific, yeah, the ones you saved. Jonathan. Yeah. <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> Jonathan, yes. please be specific. What are I you agree, talking Jonathan, about? I agree, Jonathan. Lives are at stake. The lives that he saved. It's just amazing to me because, like, you could tell even the writers were struggling with this one. They were like, how are we going to justify this? It's like, well, tell him that there's just so much at stake. There's just so much. You're like, what are you talking about? When you say that, what do you like, mean? What if he just... <sighs> Go ahead. Well, just just the, the 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 concept alone of like, what's the worst case scenario? The government fucking execute both of his parents. They steal him. They poke him and cut him up and discover what it is that makes him tick. Like, oh my god! But at least the bus full of children is safe. Like, I'll always Still fall back better. on it. To me, I don't understand. And that's worst case scenario. Best case scenario, you fucking have the government being like, holy shit, you can help us. Like, you know, you can help everyone. You're amazing. Potentially, yeah, like, you're insane. Like. If there's a natural disaster, can you like help out? We'll pay you. <laughs> exactly. Like, you're amazing. Can we study you? That it's a complicated. Also, it isn't at this not here. It's not complicated. It's not complicated. At this point, at Clark's current age, have they not figured out that basically nothing can penetrate his skin? Nothing can penetrate his thick skull. <sighs> this is this is the thing. I was kind of going with all those arguments, assuming the government even could capture him, but there's no reason to think that. No. Not at all. There's more at stake here than just our lives, Clark, or the lives of those around us. He recognizes that it's a complicated issue, but no. ultimately he leaves not here, Clark's it's not. future adult self. He doesn't want Clark to have to face the consequences until he's ready. 
You just have to decide what kind of man you want to grow up to be, Clark. Do you know what I mean about the vagueness? <laughs> it's just like... You, Until right. he's ready for stuff that well, could happen. He gives like, no here's the guidance thing. to Clark whatsoever. Yeah, he, listen, listen, you know what? You know what your job is, dad? You know what your job is to your kid, dad? It's this. <laughs> It, you're the one who's supposed to be getting him ready for that sort of thing, Dad. That's your job, Dad. Fuck. And this whole thematic through line of like the 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 power and the the I don't know the greatness of choice. Like, yeah, but it's always so it's just presented so weirdly. It's just thrown onto a scene. Like, I don't know, fucking rags butter and butter and some bread. And I'm just like, you gotta decide when you get older whether or not bread, man. you're gonna be buttering more or less. You know. That'll be your decision to make one day. Just like, what? What? Are you, what? I was like, are you okay? And, and then no. you're like repairing a car, and I'm like, you know, you might not be repairing cars when you're older. That's a choice you'll have to make. Like, what are you? <laughs> These you know, choices wanna... are all things that I was just gonna do anyway. Like, why are you even? Ugh. On casual re-examination, maybe Clark is a lot better off because his father didn't really teach him a lot of stuff about how to be a. Just man kept telling him he's gonna have to make choices. You never gave him like a foundation to work with. Like, you know what? It's always going to be worthwhile to save even one life, even like even at the cost of your identity, Clark, because life is precious, and you know that sort of thing. Instead, he's like, hmm. I would think maybe the other thing, you know, of the choice he did, <laughs> yeah. just the other thing. It's not about you know, just lives are more important it. than personal inconvenience, and you know, lives have meaning and value, and I value your life, and you should value the lives of others around you. It's like normal people stuff. Like, yeah, you know, like fucking let him die. Because for that man, he has good character or bad. He's he's going to change the world. Uh -huh. Whatever happened to great? With great power comes great responsibility. <laughs> Like, whatever happened to this? is like the opposite of that. This is the anti that, this movie. With great power comes great choice as to whether children should drown. <laughs> <You're> like, what? <laughs> like I said, this is equivalent to Uncle Ben basically telling Peter, maybe you should let people die. Maybe you, you should, should just fucking kill them, hunt them down. Kill them all, Peter. Spider -Man's <laughs> the same exact sentiment. We wanted you to learn what it meant to be human first, so that one day, when the so time was right. You, to a shitty you know what's funny, by the way? He says what it meant to be human. Uh, when he's cycling through the potential planets to send Clark to, he's looking at the details of Earth and he's like, oh, they seem to be of relative intelligence. They've got like a similar physiology. He'll be, um, and then thing he's like, oh, he'll be an outcast. Then he's like, nah, he'll be a god. What I'm trying to say is he has no fucking clue what humans are. He's just like, oh, you can go there. And then this scene, he's like, we wanted you to know what it's like to be human first. It's like, what do you mean? <laughs> you don't even fucking know. What are you, why are you saying that? What? Stupid AI. <laughs> the AI wouldn't even have known what fucking planet this was. I can't remember if he took the AI before or after, because remember, he, he picks it out of the little goomp, the, the goomp stuff. I don't fucking know, whatever. I, I guess he let him in. You could be the bridge between two peoples. No. Nope. What's that mean, Dad? <laughs> it means you have to destroy the embryos, Clark. <laughs> <laughs> the children, Clark. Kill destroy them all. <laughs> Oh my god, Eat Jonathan them. Kent was right. He, he blew up the Do you have to make room for the Kryptonians who will show up eventually? Kill <laughs> the children. Grogu. He's like, Dad, are you sure I should blow up the embryo sort of area? And he's like, the strong No ones doubt will in my survive. mind. <laughs> Do it twice. Save all of them. Important thing about this scene, he's reinforcing my decision to help mankind. You're doing the right thing, and no, I isn't. get his blessing, no. which is which is a vital. There's no choice, Henry. <laughs> <laughs> Henry, I know you really want this to be the case. Henry, remember but what just that happened. That didn't happen. You got off the platform where you were shown the skull thing and the blowing up of Earth and the de declaration that as much as you might get like a hundred Kryptonians and maybe the start of a population, all of humanity has to be erased. It's like oh, he's reinforcing my decision to choose them. It's like strictly from a you know, I should hope so. Yeah, like, I don't... This is what I mean about the movie. I don't get it. Where is the choice? Why is this meaningful? I think any child to get the blessing of their parent um, yeah. or, or their peers. And in this case, it was my parent. And uh, it was. it's very poignant and very important to my character. When the tornado hits, John Kent recognizes that Clark is being forced into a situation where saving his father would expose him before he was even ready. Yeah, How he, does he know he's not ready? He also forced that to happen instead of letting Clark yeah, go and collect he, those people. Yeah, he couldn't stop Clark if he wanted to. Clark lets it happen. Also, I, I, I love that sentiment. It's like, oh no, the will's not ready. What does that mean? The will's not ready. Yeah, but what does that mean? It, it's not ready. Yeah, like, will they be ready in 
Like, will I be ready in a year or Just look at two, your watch. Or like... What do I have to learn? What do Can I not know I... yet? If you're alive, you could explain these things to me later. <laughs> <laughs> oh, well. That would be helpful. Uh, Fucking okay. clock, just uh, use your ice breath and create a fog and then go and get him so no one can see you. It's all good. His son's free choice responsibility of his origin and powers is more Fact important he makes to the him. choice is worse, though. I also don't like this notion that... Yeah, this is what I mean. It's bad in both ways, right? So on the hand of he made the choice to let his dad die, I it's fucking stupid, and I don't even believe it's in character. But then the idea that like Jonathan took the choice away and said, "No, do not save me" or something, you're like, "Isn't that? Shouldn't it be up to Clark? Why are you saying no?" Isn't this like an important moment for him to decide? You could stand there blankly, just like, "Well, <laughs> it's up to you, boy." <laughs> yeah. mm -hmm. I don't know when another opportunity like this is gonna arise, <laughs> honestly. <laughs> yeah. He holds up a yes and no sign, and he's like spinning it around. <laughs> like, which one are you gonna choose? He's like, please save me, please save me, please, please save me, please save me. <laughs> Him, then his own life. Why doesn't Clark use his super speed to save his father from the tornado? Because it would fucking yeah, kill him, why? I presume, right? Whiplash? Yeah. Um, but I mean, he could. Um, hmm. So presumably, he could use super speed. Um, I think people will be able to figure it out, right? Because one person would be gone, and it'd clearly be him. And there would be like uh, a well, huge. Boom. Would they be paying close attention to like everyone around them? In yeah, this you'd scenario? just be like, it's a traumatic event. It was loud. There was a bunch of yeah, stuff going on. Do, there was a lot of chaos. You could be like, everyone wait here, and runs like behind them a little bit, crosses behind you know, because they're in an overpass thing, right? You could cross just behind a corner, and they go, Phew, and and you know, no one will really know what they saw. Yeah, or he could just run, like, faster than normal, and everyone will say, wow, he yeah, he was moving really <sighs> fast. Is, like, wow, thing, man. What that if, guy could run. What if he walked up to his dad, and this is going to be crazy, and, and grabs him, <laughs> the tornado picks them both up, as tornadoes do, and he just flies him to safety, and then tells everyone, yeah, we got so lucky, it, like, flung us across, and we, like, you know, rolled off on the grass, we just got real lucky with the tornado. Crazy. Yeah, people would have just treated it as just a miraculous survival situation you're like wow that's crazy there is, unlike if i the more you think about this scene the more would... it just fucking breaks it's terrible without really any bad. seeing are we talking about clark moving so quickly that everyone who's currently watching john kent would see him blinking out of existence aside yes. from taking away do the that. important life i mean he doesn't have to, he doesn't even have to do it that way but yeah sure yeah that would be yes that would be fine it's worth lesson it. We just learned from John Kent. Clark can't do that. It's not a life lesson. What is the it's life lesson? <laughs> it's don't save people, please. <laughs> yeah. I also, the they're, they're all literally watching Jonathan. No one's got their eyes on Clark. You know, I almost think it's a little unlikely that no, and forgive me for saying it, but no guy felt like, you know what? That guy just saved a bunch of people. I'm going to go try and get him. Fuck it. I'm actually going to go try and help him. <clears throat> yeah, why does this movie hate people from Kansas? <laughs> <It's everyone. laughs> from taking away shit. the important I guess all of them were too afraid to help him. It's like, all right then. Important life lesson we just learned from John Kent. Clark can't do that at this point in the movie. As far yes, as can. the audience knows, the only superpowers Clark has discovered at the time of the tornado. Oh, they're saying he might not even have super speed. Okay. What do you mean? But they. Uh, uh, I don't think we have any uh, definitive reference. Would... But why would that be an issue? Anyway. Well, Has there ever the been specific... a point in Clark's life before this point where he needed to get somewhere really quickly? Well, so I was going to say that this this three counters to this. First being, he might <laughs> have it. You'd have no fucking clue. You're arguing from thin air. Two, he can run. <laughs> he can still <laughs> he run. Yeah. He can still run. <laughs> uh, then third being, like, uh, all the other things we've mentioned in terms of not only how this scene was constructed, but how he could have saved him. Like, it's just, this is... It, gonna have to try so much harder than this you know our heat vision and super strength and in fact at no point in the movie do we ever see superman with ridiculous except when he's flying we do see no. another... uh wait Sorry, so he can't run fast wait since when could you fly at super speeds but you can't move at super speeds that, that doesn't and also we know that superman can move super fast now thanks to justice league oh rip yeah true yeah the kryptonian move as fast but as not flash. fast enough that nobody would notice the Superman in this movie. Well, so that's very Let him notice. Fast. That's basically instantaneous. Yeah, and she's. <laughs> by the way, this isn't a fair comparison because she's going zigzagging through people rather than one, you know, A to B that's really far away. Mm -hmm. So 
that's not a good comparison. We can't run that fast. Also, that's just proof that Kryptonians can go super speed, so thanks, I guess. Yep. How does Superman... Oh, that's it? <laughs> okay. Oh, wow. <laughs> wow. How does Do you Superman's... want to defend this movie or not? You ain't doing a good job. You're just reminding us of why it's terrible. Also, hey, look, we were talking about this. How does Superman's suit mm -hmm. magically end up on the scout ship? That ship's been there for 20,000 years. And Superman, the scout ship. That ship has been there for 20,000 years. What you're looking at here is not a Superman suit. It's the unitard worn by every Kryptonian. And unitard. This one it takes a unitard to defend this movie. Oh, yeah. well, <laughs> oh. You can't say well, unitard anymore. It's not PC. Also, also, that doesn't work because, like... The unitards that they wear are black, and these this one is blue and red. Like, what's the? Why is this colored in this way? It's a special that's, one. That's the thing. Why is it special? That's. I just want to know that. I, I mean, just all of it's weird, it's dude. The special. fact that the ship's even here. Like, what? What's the deal? Why? Yeah. Ugh, it's so <sighs> weird. The House of L on it. Since the House of L is made up of scientists, it makes sense they would be involved this in the movie space of exploration and expansion missions. Hey. This is the uniform of one of super. Like, he he says it makes sense that they would be involved in space exploration because they're scientists. Like they spanned their fucking civilization. All across scientists the galaxy. are space scientists. I just everyone. It doesn't fucking matter. Everybody has a reason to be across. The, they spread their civilization across hundreds of thousands. Yeah, of years. Only just scientists time. got to go to space. I just if you're like this idea. Anyone, if you're not a scientist, you don't get to go. Also, to I'm pretty planet. sure that's Supergirl, by the way. All right. Awesome. Is it? Yeah. <laughs> See, this, she's, she's got like the little ass outfit. This is the body he that's, fights. The I ship. love how that's a nice just opportunity lost for no reason at all. <laughs> yeah. I was like, why'd you do that? I was like, ah. it was real I sad. don't know. Just no big fan of Supergirl. It's yeah, like, yeah. oh, you know, you just He's make like, her whatever you want, right? Like, you know, clearly, have to. she's a mummy. Like, Clearly, this. Exploration, expansion, they, mission. But I thought I thought that DC were making a Supergirl movie, or was it a Batgirl it's movie? It's just her for two dude. and a half hours lying if, in a coffin. <laughs> if they did, and people were like, "Wait, but this is supposed to be Supergirl, right?" They'd be like, "No, nah, fuck that. Whatever." No, that nah. was super <laughs> sister. Yeah, they just dead. I don't know. Whatever that is, not Supergirl. I need, I need to know because this this universe is just <laughs> no. It, it would no. So they have announced that they're going to make a film about Supergirl in 2018. And there's been nothing since, so I guess maybe that's me. Dude, this list of DC films, I need to read it to you because it's insane. The Amazons, Batgirl, um, Black <laughs> Hawk, Blue Beetle, Booster Gold, Deadshot. Booster Gold. Death... The fuck is Booster <laughs> Gold? <laughs> Never heard of that one. Um I don't I know who Blue Beat or oh, Booster Gold is. He's just a guy, I guess. <laughs> Deadshot, Deathstroke, <laughs> Gotham City Sirens. Green Lantern Corps, which is meant to be maybe Macquarie, Christopher Macquarie, the guy who does uh, Mission uh, Impossible. The, the, mm -hmm. Yeah, Mission Impossible. Harley Quinn versus the Joker, which was announced in 2017. Um, and then apparently will commence after Birds of Prey. Well, it's been a year, so I don't know if that's happening. A Joker film, Lobo. Man of Steel sequel, New Gods, Nightwing, Plastic Man, Static Shock, Plastic Supergirl, Man. The Trench, and Wonder Woman 3. The I mean, trench. I would... That's a spin-off of Aquaman based on those weird trench monsters Okay. in the film. Oh. How is that a whole movie, though? I don't know. <laughs> you know I don't know, man. <laughs> man of Steel... List. Man of Steel 2 is not happening. We're never getting it. No I don't I don't think that Henry Cavill's ever coming back as Superman. I would put well, money on it. Apparently, uh, James Gunn got the choice to to do a Man of Steel sequel, but he wanted to do Suicide Squad. Dude, he made the right imagine, decision. Imagine a yeah. James Gunn sequel to a Zack Snyder movie. That would be so... Yeah. That would be like it Thor 2 to Thor Ragnarok. Good. It would be like unrecognizable tones. <laughs> just be like, wait, what? But it would be way better. Oh, definitely. I believe in James Gunn quite so. Oh, yeah. I just find it He did the Guardians man. movies, didn't he? Yep. Yeah. Yeah, yeah man. I'm super they excited. Are quality. Which, one, which will probably be the only good DC movie. <laughs> That's going to be super interesting, one. yeah. That, honestly, yeah. even if it's a 5 out of 10, we'll be like, whoa! Be like, whoa! Yeah. How did they achieve <laughs> such incredible mediocrity? And I'm, I'm, a little, I'm a little more optimistic than that about uh, The Suicide Squad. Oh, oh dude, wow. if it's fun, I'm, I'm... That's, that's all I want. Make it fun. Let's have some dude, fun, please. Yeah. Like a five out of ten on the consistency scale could still be fun enough and like worth watching. You know yeah. what I mean? Yeah. I wouldn't be surprised if it tops the rest. 
people people say that we're like we're, we're these snobs <laughs> and we just nitpick everything and we have unrealistic expectations for everything like no it, literally you can have an average movie that's just fun and we'll we'll be satisfied hey them if they think that a dc eu movie that a Tain's mediocrity is an unrealistic standard. <laughs> I mean, their words, not ours. So. Yeah. <laughs> form of one of Superman's ancestors, and it's blue instead of black because that was probably the style back then. Oh, oh, that's oh so okay. It, it, that was, that's, it was that's your explanation. That was that's... probably the style back then. Well, let me let me do it more, right? So someone's like, "What the fuck is that ship? Why is the suit there? How come it happens to be Kryptonians twenty thousand years ago? How was it?" Uh, Kryptonian probably crash landed there twenty thousand years ago. Who happened to be a member of the House of L, and there's a ship suit in there, and they died when they crashed, and uh, it, they used to have suits different colors. There you go. That explains all. Yeah. Um... Remember, um, this is really bad for many reasons. First, if this ship never crashed here, Zod would never have made it to Earth, or at least wouldn't for ages. Uh, secondly, had the ship been found slightly earlier by the government, Superman wouldn't have been able to activate it himself and activate Zod and get his suit and all that shit, uh, theoretically. That is all based on him hearing two guys talking at a bar. Lucky. <laughs> We're talking I mean, fundamental pretty... major elements of this film that's, are built. That's, that's, that, that's pretty solid cause and effect. He's just <sighs> in a bar, he hears a guy, a couple of guys talking about an anomaly and then just decides to investigate it and it happens to be the thing that he... That's that's perfectly fine cause and effect, Muller. You're mm. just nitpicking. You're just being unfair to this movie. I knew it. A thousand years ago. Why okay. doesn't Lois Lane recognize Clark? She does. So, like, you know in the writer's room was, like, because allegedly this video had writers, too. They were trying to come up with reasons of why the suit was the way it is, where it was. And they they put their heads together, and God bless them, they tried. And this is what they came up with. And they're like, I guess this is good enough. I'm sure they tried. I mean, I mean, I, I mean, like, words made it into spoken form into a video so some kind of something was, was done at some point you know yeah um I was asking this next one up with. this is not a criticism i have she does recognize a, him clearly I, I i'm pretty sure that the ending shot implies that she realizes it's him she definitely no, no, no. knows it's him like yeah, i mean no, no, no. The, 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 the real like, question is why doesn't earth well <laughs> Because then the original, I, I, a lot of my, a lot of this didn't start out with in the original, but like in the original, because they look kind of the same, part of the huge difference is because Clark Kent acts in a completely different way than Superman. He's slouched over, he's nervous, he stutters a little bit, he stumbles around in his words, he follows behind people, he's very submissive, he's very, you know, timid and shy, and he plays that so well because Christopher Reeve is a great actor in this sense uh, but superman is the polar opposite that clark kent is and so that helps lead lend credibility to the idea plus technology at the time that it would have been you know reasonable that they wouldn't have put you know they, they would have been like oh it's just a coincidence but they're definitely not the same person you know? and this is just superman in the suit and superman not in the suit yeah with glasses on <laughs> it's like you're clearly the same person the originals. We should really At watch the, the original. I'd like to rewatch that after. Four of them, I right? want to rewatch it too. There's yeah, four, right? after seeing uh, BVS and MOS, I think it should yeah. be called POS. But yeah, after <laughs> seeing these two movies, it should. I, I would like to see the original. That would be pretty fun. She does. She all but winks at him. Lois Lane. Welcome to. The She's known he was Clark okay. Kent the whole time. Why didn't you say that first? Also, Ugh. there's no one else around at that point, right? I always yes. worry about that. These films never seem to care. But yeah. Why does Lois Lane know that Clark Kent is Superman in this? What are these arguments? Oh, this is not an argument that we would ever propose. She's... Well, see the last sentence. She's not supposed, she's not supposed to, know. to know. Oh, I don't that. care. I don't care wants. about the comics. Yeah, we can. Yeah, like I don't we care. Can, if she's not we can supposed to. Skip she this is one. not supposed to know that. So some of the things that we questioned were, shouldn't Lois figure out who he is? It just seemed idiotic that she couldn't. 
even Warner Brothers at first questioned that because that's just the way it's always been that she couldn't figure it out, and we just thought we we can't. Oh my god, that's Star Fox music. Can't do that. It's gonna make her look is like it? an idiot. And, and yeah, it, it's oh god, area. yeah, it is. Whoa, 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 I'm sorry. <clears throat> they objected to what Warner Brothers was saying about her not recognizing Clark because it would make her look like an idiot. Wow. Why didn't you use this rationale to literally every other character in these movies other at literally choice. every other plot point? <laughs> because fuck you. <laughs> it, and depicted in a more realistic relatable oh, way fuck you. Realistic <laughs> no no, no realistic no, no. we have to have an ihop it's... so it's realistic <laughs> okay. we, yeah we we have to make it realistic that's why we're gonna have john so what... say maybe you should let those it needs to be realistic that's why our cape is cgi <laughs> It needs to be realistic. That's why everyone in Metropolis is like, he saved us after he, he destroys half the city. More realistic, relatable way. And mm. I say realistic in air quotes. We had to get rid of that. Oh, we, yeah. Well, this movie is good in air quotes. Uh, I agree with this one. I don't even know what their relationship is. I feel oh, like yeah. they don't yeah. even have a relationship. Why do they like each other? What do they see in each other? Do you remember when hey, look, what's he going on? one of my wounds. That was nice of him. Do you remember when they? I was romantic. She, she holds his yeah. hand, and we were like, "Wait, what?" <laughs> I wish I could make a woman <laughs> scream like they, that. They have a relationship. The only thing is the he says like you believed in me at one point, and I remember thinking to myself like, "What?" Because she didn't want to tell your story, but she totally still did. She leaked her story. Do you remember that? Um, yeah, and then he said, "Don't pursue the story further." Oh, dude, it's so funny. I I remember because I was talking to Metal when I was like, I'd rewatch the film. So you got um, Lawrence Fishburne doesn't know what he's supposed to think in the scene because he's like a collection of thoughts all at once. Um, the first thing, so everyone is like, oh my god, you don't wanna don't wanna go to his room. You're in trouble because of uh, leaking the story to that like, I, I I guess some kind of website or whatever because she wants to get the story out about the 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 alien. Um, Ghostfucker.net. Yeah. And he's pissed at her, so she comes in. Do you remember when he's like, "You're odd leave," and she well, goes, like "Okay." And then he's, he's like, "Oh, you're okay with being put odd leave, huh? I'll make the leave longer." <laughs> what? <laughs> yeah, that's weird. Um, where is it? Yeah, so th this is I got the, the notes. Th these are the main points of their whole conversation. The dialogue is ass. It goes. This is all from Perry's point of view, right, Lawrence Fishburne. So fuck you for releasing the story to those people. Second point. I'm supposed to sue you over this, according to our publishers. Third point, um, you shouldn't be dropping this case, though, this this situation, this journalism thread. Um, and the only reason that you would is because it wasn't getting the traction that you wanted, right? So he hates her for doing it. He's supposed to sue her, but he's annoyed that she's dropping it. And then he says, also... It's good that you're dropping it, right? This is what I mean. We, we, it's like whiplash. It's good that you're dropping it because we don't want to publish stories about aliens because we might make people panic, which is not something newspapers give a fuck about. I'm sorry. In fact, they would probably go as far as saying, "Holy shit, you've got a story about aliens that's credible and provable." That's in, that's like the biggest story we'll ever have all year. Um. So and then and then, it, and then he cranks her suspension up. The whole scene is confusing. Crank I don't... her suspension up. I don't know what his um. I, I, I don't. I, I could. I could hear you smile. <laughs> Shut up. <laughs> I don't know what his his actual character is. Is what I'm getting at. I don't know what he wants. He says a bunch of yeah. things, and it's all very weird. Like I'm mad I would, at you. I'd very safely put the Superman Lois romance as one of the weakest. Oh, I wasn't. Oh, oh, that. um, uh, would well, you? I okay, which is worse, the um, the prequel romance or the romance here? Prequel romances actually developed. It's just shitty development. There's no development here. I mean, they sp I was gonna say the, the sheer amount of time they spend together in the prequels is better than this, right? Yeah, they go, I guess to, so. they go to locations that are super romantic and just hang with each other while being attractive people. That's more than what this film does. <laughs> <laughs> that's. I mean, if that's not romance, I don't know. What yeah, is. I know, right? That's, you hit all the boxes. Uh, I mean, uh, Superman falls in love with a ginger despite being bullied by a ginger in his childhood. So changed that ginger's life, and the ginger helped him, though. So he knows that gingers are redeemable. Oh, okay. His personal confirmation. Um, this movie's deep. <laughs> yeah, I, I didn't want to 
drop that though. This movie wanted, is the trench. We haven't even talked about Perry like at all in either coverage. Um, the Lawrence Fishburne's character, and that's all I really wanted to say on him. He's not really anything, and that one scene makes me wonder just what even is he as a person. The most yeah. interesting thing he ever does is when Lois is like, "I need an airplane or a helicopter, sorry," and BVS, and he says no, and then she says it's it's not to do with journalism and then he says yes that's like the only thing that i've ever even had to think about his character for um i guess um, unless the fact that he's like you know, i'm going to let my journalist right. take a helicopter for personal reasons during this cataclysm that is something to think about i guess in terms of just what what even maybe that's just more of a wrench in his character but then of course there's the efforts he puts into trying to save one of his workers during the apocalypse in man of steel that's that's something yeah um there's his weird hesitance to not get the fuck out of his building sooner, but that's a lot of people apparently. Um, but anyway, convince me, why did Lois and Clark fall in love? Quickly, met each other. Who said they were in love? Wait, do, you, do you mean, wait, what? What? I guess they never used I was gonna the stop, word. I was gonna stop and make a joke about, you mean Lewis? But then he said a dumb, and now we have to, <laughs> now I have to go back. Okay, let's take a look. Lois and Clark fall in love too quickly. They just met each other. Who said they were in love? These are two very attractive single what? people who have shared a few intense experiences. Oh my god, he made my are argument. You dumb? Did you watch the fucking <laughs> film? That's the argument I made as a joke for the prequels. Like, um, what? The so is he? The argument, his argument is they're not in love. The, his they're argument just is just they're attractive people or they've kissed. Is is. But then they date afterwards, so then live well, together. Well, no, I, I would, I would just be like, oh, that's all you're claiming that was in the film was just two hot people saying, hey, we could kiss because we're hot. Oh, Fine. That's, right. cr they, that's even well, worse. Well, that's what I mean, they dude. They clearly I'm saying, have yeah. an immense amount of attraction and care for one another. Hey, dude, that, if he's, it, it's if, unexplained. If this is what he wants, like, fine, you win. It's incredibly meaningless, isn't it? Like, because that seems to be what his argument is. Yeah. So also yeah. an odd point of confusion for people that they don't even know that they're not in love. <laughs> I just can't believe the His defense argument. of this was they're not in love. They just they just want a boink, okay? They're just shallow. <laughs> Lois and Clark the are just The best that shallow Superman could do is Amy Adams. Why would you say that that way? Why would you because... say? Yeah, what the hell are you talking about? Really? Oh, he can do better. He can do better. <clears throat> I... Superman can do better. I. I I'm not sure what to, I feel like Amy Adams is incredibly attractive. <laughs> like mm, this is perplexing yeah, to me that you would say no, this. I think you, I mean way better than Amy Adams. I uh, all right, whatever. <laughs> <laughs> Search your heart, you know it to be true. Well, like give me an example. Who would you who? Huh? I mean, I get, like in the sense like, that he's would, like an 11 out of 10. List? Like sure. But I mean, Amy, think, Amy Adams you, is up there. Would you say that Amy Adams is a ten out of ten? Um, do we get? I to, feel like she's. Uh, do we get to choose I, an age? Um, it, if so, yes. Right. Like, oh, like yeah. in terms of like I can well, make like a, you can pick a period of time, right? Like Catherine Zeta Jones when she's like thirty is like holy shit. Yeah, she's like, still really attractive now, but in her thirties, you know, it's like oh Jesus Christ, <laughs> you know. So, like, if you can pick an age, that influences probably. This is a very attractive woman here. Yeah, like I don't know what to tell you, her age. Yeah, Amy Adams is. I, I never said she wasn't. Never said she wasn't. Yeah, but you're there, like, oh, I'd do better. It's like, well, what do you? Yeah, you say I mean... that like it's so <laughs> obvious. <laughs> like, you're doing it. Maybe it's, but that's all right. All right then. Of course, a bit of physical affected. And since when is one kiss a relationship? What is this kindergarten? Dude, if you want to argue that it's a meaningless relationship, I'm I'm gonna thumb you up. <laughs> You're that, absolutely right. These are two adults, and they're not just they they're really kissing. This is this is what like, I mean. Like I I think he agrees with the idea that there's nothing between them in this film other than they kiss. And that that's awkward it, because it seems to me that there was something. The film wanted us to think there was something, but it, no. Well, clearly even, it did. Dude, even the people who was saying this film is amazing is saying there was nothing really between them. <laughs> it's like, I don't know what to tell you. It's just like, I don't know how often it happens that these two just complete strangers like, well, like, I guess we're both kind of hot. We'll just like start making out all of a sudden in the middle of all this in destruction. In the middle of a, yeah. H hence the, the question. Well, crater. So the crater that used to be Metropolis. Honestly, I think they're strawmanning the person they're responding to. Like, 
if if I said why are they in love and he said they're not in love they're just you know doing the kissing I'd be like okay so why are they doing that because they're hot yeah like oh well okay. so does that make the film better or worse I would say just worse. so we're clear <laughs> I'm just glad to know that I had all the references already you know I was expecting him to say like oh there's this scene where there's this dialogue and it explains the connection you know X Y Z and I'd be like oh okay I could judge that but nope there's that, that's, <laughs> nope. that's, 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 yep you got it kiss after the final battle is totally off-putting yes yeah yes, completely it yeah because yeah. it's just weird they're in a fucking These aren't graveyard like characters they're in they are in an active graveyard yeah, <laughs> yeah surrounded by body parts and there are people bones like, oh my and god blood and Look, okay. he's, screaming. he's kissing can, her while there are people can, screaming for help in that city that's terrible if you, if you can give me like an example like a reference a real life reference of like a couple kissing on ground zero as 9-11 is playing out i will give this a pass like okay fine it's possible no, it's possible no, well no I, i'll say it's possible i'm not gonna say it's like it's not totally just as weird I'm, as those other people it, that's true <laughs> also that's, i, I mean, still think it's even weird he has super hearing he wants to save people's lives he can, hear, he can hear all the people that's who true, are currently yeah. trapped under that's the awful rubble, and he's like nah guys you can wait all right once again henry Cavill superman it's got nothing to do with henry with himself <laughs> god damn it man place after the final battle it takes place right after Superman returns from destroying the world engine. You've got no argument. Stop. There are people dying. So, Stop wait, it. Wait, 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 wait. I'm sorry. Is, this, is, is he saying that this doesn't play, take place after the final battle? It takes place during the final battle, basically. <laughs> oh, yeah. That's an odd defense. Imagine that's crawling. an interesting strategy re you've re chosen. Replay this. This after the final battle is totally off putting. Well, this after the final battle. It takes place right after Superman returns from destroying oh, the world engine. You walked that. into a horrific trap where you <laughs> oh, were forced no. to explain how the film was worse than it actually is. Dude, I, I haven't. This this kind of shit we don't see it very often. When you respond to an argument and you improve their argument against you, like oh no, Whoops. interesting. It tactic. wasn't after the battle. It was in the middle of it, like <laughs> during the during you know you in the middle of D Day while you're all trying <laughs> to storm the beach. You just got two people making out while there's bullet <laughs> whistling like, all around. Like, again, nine eleven. Like this is like. I want to say about 50 9-11s have happened on this day. This is 9 11 just, too, just, imagine, just imagine saving Private Ryan. Somebody shouting like, Medic! And the dude's like, hey, shut up. <laughs> also, I want to correct. 9-11s happened to rash? happening. Like, all the buildings that have been crippled, uh, possibly falling, different rooms falling apart, people like rushing to escape, trying to help other people out of wreckage. He's fucking kissing it. You've got the one person that's capable of saving everyone and just taking a break to kiss her. Yeah, there are people dying while this is happening. So like, bad. That's the that first, you have first responders at 9-11 that are just kissing each other in the middle. I'm like, <laughs> we just... know that that's the case, but he can hear the screams. Yeah. Terrible. You're an awful human. <laughs> like, from again, it's, it's not just, like, terrible. It's also just, like, this just doesn't happen. Hence, like, my earlier comment was like, okay, fine. If you can give me an example of this happening in real life, it's like, fine, this can happen in real life, but it's, it's you know, still bullshit. Still oh. questionable. Filmmaking standpoint, this kiss is right where it needs to be. <laughs> no, 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 you're an idiot. No. You From have a no filmmaking standpoint. <laughs> where you put this not... is after all of the fight, uh, an undisclosed amount of time, and then a grassy field where he meets with her and they can kiss then, okay? Not here. Jesus Christ, not after here. Every, after everything has been resolved, the dust has settled, and the... <laughs> We can imagine he helped people, and he's kissing her on his off time, you know? Sure, that is... <laughs> After a moment of... Well, I mean, we know better, right? Because he's an asshole. He, he wouldn't oh, yeah. help people. Like, we know that. Maybe that he's still like, yeah, but should I save people to keep my identity secret? Even now. Mm -hmm. <laughs> of triumph. You know they say it's all downhill after the first kiss. Jesus Christ, I didn't even know that was in the film. Oh, yeah, oh my god, that. what a weird line. We are standing well, in corpses. You're a horrible people. I, I, it almost seems like a meta line from Amy Adams here. <laughs> like this, it's all down like from Man of Steel. <laughs> <Jesus>. <laughs>
Who says it's all downhill after the first kiss? Why are you responding to this? Oh, God, this what is, is this video? <laughs> that. We are, New read says uh, it. By the way, we are only a third of the way through. Oh no. my God, no. God. <laughs> What's with the he says it dressed like a chicken. chicken. It's all downhill after the first. Okay, I do. Why are you even? <laughs> oh my god! All right, is this just like I know it... about a thing? I'm and waiting I need for to him to put pull it in my out... video so everyone knows that I know about this thing. Like, dude, find even worse arguments. Do it. Find the ones that said, you know, not this film possible. sucks because there's not in there's not a, Henry Cavill isn't in it. And then you go, yes, he is. Look, my god, I nailed it. <laughs> He's anyway... allegedly in it. Criticism. This is nitpicking. No. Why would you bring it up then? Then why would you bring it up? <laughs> More picking. I don't like your nitpicking. Keep it. Keep it. Keep the nitpicking to a to no, a nit video minimum. Shit. Why isn't Lois Lane pulled into the black? Ooh, here we go. Oh, yeah. this is interesting. Ooh, yeah. Here we go. How heavy is she? Is she heavier? Her being heavier would not stop a black hole from grabbing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I mean, it would be it would be work. slower. Like if she was insanely super mega dense, her effect would not be as strong. <laughs> being pulled like, in. The only person that a black hole could not suck in would be Movie Bob. Like uh, if it, yeah, if it was Movie Bob, he would he would definitely hit the ground before the black hole effect took place because of his incredible density and mass. It would be funny if. It explodes, they land, Superman puts it down, she goes, oh, thank god, and he just, like, looks at her with, like, you know, like, the molar stressed emoji? He's just like, what are you? How did you do that? <laughs> and she's like, what? Explain he's like, I yourself, don't, I just... human. Are you Kryptonian, too? be pulled in. As Zod explains to Cal earlier in the movie, the same technology that imprisoned Zod in the Phantom Zone is used in Kryptonium Phantom Drives for opening wormholes to get to other parts of the universe through okay. the Phantom Zone. Uh, we managed. You haven't explained anything yet. Okay. okay. To, to remind the, the so... viewers at home, what Zod says in the movie is we, no, sorry, not Zod, uh, the fucking General and Superman, they say, if we clash the Phantom Drive on Zod's ship with the Phantom Drive on my ship, we will create a singularity. And then he says, a black hole. He said, yeah, it'll destroy the ships. Fucking blows my mind that they were willing to do that in the first place. But uh, you have a black hole. Please explain to me why it doesn't grab her. To retrofit the projector into a hyperdrive. Your father made a similar modification to the craft that brought you here. The black hole that's created by Jarrell's plan is intended to send Zod and his crew back to the P zone. I can't send them back. Oh my God, he's trying to do it. He's this can't. fucking pathetic human can't. is attempting to do it. He can't. He can't. He can't. Wow. I, he I'm... thinks that black holes just like pick and choose. This like, is, oh, that right this over is there. Not oh no, that's Amy Adams. She's got to fall. But this isn't. This isn't it functioning it'll, it'll as usual. It'll suck in buildings. This is this is, but it won't suck her in. But this, what I'm trying to get at is like he's trying to like argue like a like an operational thing. Like this is not operational. They are destroying two drives to create yeah. a black hole. This is entirely unusual for these. This is not what they were built for. Is my point. We can't send them back to the Phantom Zone. And evidently only affects things that have already been through the P Zone, such as Zod, no. his crew. That doesn't make no, sense because what about, no, this cars, debris. This cars of debris, debris getting sucked yeah. through his ships and Superman. And apparently it pulls in bits of bubble and not really. No, you, you're done. You're done. Sorry. Yep. <laughs> you lose. If it's, pull, if it's sucking shit in from the ground, it's sucking her in too. I'm sorry, Twin Perfect. Yeah, and it's a it's a black hole. You I like the idea that the black hole discriminates. It's like, have you been to the Phantom Zone? No. Nope. Have you been to the Phantom <laughs> Zone? To the yep. Phantom Come on in, buddy. <laughs> <laughs> Let me just. I want to. I've got the movie up. I've got the movie up. I'm gonna just find. I just want to. I just need a screenshot of it grabbing a car. That's all I want, and then we're good. <laughs> like as soon as I get that, because the rubble is enough. Let's but uh, here. I want more. Steel. Give me more. Here it goes. Play Black around. hole is created. I guess I'll show it on. Screen. Gotta be careful. Yeah, there's all the Kryptonians getting sucked in. It's funny how they get sucked in faster than anything on their ship does, even though the ship is... I assume what this, is this the logic ship itself has is, been... There's has not been, just stuff lying around, I guess. Has been to the P-Zone. Like, why does why would it work that way? You know? And also, if they, they took all of the technology from the Kryptonian worlds, so most of their stuff probably isn't even from the Phantom Zone. 
Yeah, they took stuff from. You're right. They said the world engine yeah, was from so the outpost. So that's not even an argument. They took all the technology from the destroyed Kryptonian worlds, which is his own fucking oh. can of worms for world building. But that shit hadn't been to the Phantom Yay, Zone. I found it. There's a car. <laughs> like, you know, guys, that car. The, the dude in there, Derek, he went to the Phantom Zone <laughs> previously. <laughs> he was like, "Oh my god." <laughs> I well, he thought it was a really weird cocaine, mm -hmm. a weird LSD trip that he took, but so, he actually just went to the Phantom Zone. <laughs> yeah, it's it's over, by the way. Um, you can't create a sort of like a, a categorization that doesn't <laughs> include Lois, but does include cars. Like, uh, you're like, uh, maybe maybe it only affects uh, non-organic material. <laughs> <laughs> like, oh, no, that's what out, too, because they already sucked up the people. Because the ship lifts people up, too, off the ground, so... He's just wrong. It clearly affects He's the He's desperate yeah, and wrong. Yeah, this is shockingly... This is kind of pathetic. Zone, ...such as Zod, his crew, his ships, and Superman. And apparently, it pulls... Superman hasn't has been, Superman to, the Phantom been Zone? to the Phantom Zone? Yeah. You... Why? <laughs> did he have to go to the Phantom Zone to go through, like, to get to, to Earth? Was it... Did he go through a portal, or... No, I think he just got. Did he? Also, I mean, wait, maybe because the ship remember. just kind of like poofs away. Is that the Phantom Zone? But uh, I would still argue though at that point that um, that means you just have to be in proximity, right? Because he's he's in like a shell, if you will, being the ship. So that means you have but to. But also, be... why would Superman even be able to escape it if that's how it works? Yeah. Do you see how fast those people were sucked in? I guess because you yeah. can fly. Yeah. That makes. Is so that can... how it works? You can move in the other direction so you don't die. Yeah, that's how black holes and junk. Also, it sounds like Lois would have been better off if you didn't try and pick her up. It seems like she's more in danger when you try to save her. <laughs> he grabs also, her and like, gets sucked Superman in. Superman is standing still here. Shit's getting lifted up, but he ain't. Yeah, because this film's not ready yet. Hang on. It doesn't work, no matter which way you do it. It's not ready not yet, ready Frankie. Yet. God. <laughs> By the Black Zero's gravity beam. Fucking hell. None of that includes Lois or the Look scout ship, which traveled legit style without a wormhole. There's while cars its crew flying was... through Wait. the air. There's buildings flying through the air. I want to make sure like, I catch... Like, what are you talking about? Let me sure I catch what and bits of rubble and junk that were hit by the Black Zero's gravity beam. None of that includes... But that's they were hit by the... So that's his explanation. If... So if you were affected by the gravity beam, now you're a legitimate target for the black hole? So that's everything except Lois, because apparently she wasn't hit by. How wouldn't she have been in proximity of it when it does the explosion? How would it how would it discriminate her at that point? How yeah, that's how she got knocked out of the ship. Fuck. Or the scout <laughs> traveled legit style without a wormhole while its crew was in hypersleep. My this. That's not an explanation. What a, my path good what dude. a pathetic attempt at alleviating this issue. God. And we've ignored That's the fact, pathetic. by the way, he's invented this out of thin air, the idea that this black hole discriminates in the first place. That is not in the fucking film. Yeah, Lois is the only thing that's not affected. Everything else starts getting sucked in. Rubble, cars, people, everything gets sucked in. They don't in. categorize it as a phantom zone black hole. They just call it, it's, you clash it's a this technology together, blow it up, and it creates a black hole. Okay? There's nothing any more special about this black hole. It's just a fucking black hole. No, it's Doc a super duper black onto hole. His ship. There is no reason for- Oh, you know what? This is a perfect time. I'm gonna bring in all of the criticisms. This is possibly where the movie is most broken, and I know that's a big claim. So... <laughs> yeah, um, I can see why. I guess I'll leave it to, to, to the cast. Why does Zod demand that Lois comes onto his ship? Do you know? If I was going to... make an assumption... It would be that Zod. I legitimately can't remember what the Zod right knows. Is. It's a bargaining tool to control Superman in case things go south for I him. I think that's the best argument you could make. Yeah, I was gonna say leverage as yeah. as a point of leverage, like either for Superman or the government. So, um, Zod's plan is to bring Superman on board and trick him by permanently, right? Not temporarily. Permanently weakening him by keeping him on uh, Kryptonian uh, atmospherics. That's the plan. Um, I guess he has Lois there as a backup. That's the best argument you could possibly create, but that's already a thing. Like, I'd be like, there's many flaws here, but it's like, he, he decided to do that. That's that's one. It's like, okay. Second, that Superman handed her the key, the USB thing for spaceships. Why? 
did, why would he have assumed... Remember, it's a surprise to him that he loses his strength when he goes on there. He's like, what the fuck's happening to me? So why would he give her the key instead of keeping it for himself if he planned to have it be useful, if you know what yeah, I mean? Yeah, because he knows that she's just a weak earthling. Yeah, like, he's going to have a way better chance of actually activating it. He knows what it is. She doesn't even know. He hands it to her, and she's like, I don't fucking... Uh, this is, like, a weird thing. Oh, okay. Thirdly, she's locked in a cell that has a terminal in it. That was so fucking dumb. Why would you even have those in there? Whatever. Uh, fourth, that... Like, putting him in isn't considered, like, a rogue USB thing. It's, like, it's not locked off, it's not stopped. He just infects the whole ship and takes full control. It's like, wow. That's, uh, real lucky, lucky. that that works that way. Yeah, and the fact that she wasn't it. killed when they had Superman under full control, like, well, whatever. He then turns the atmospherics back to crypt uh, to, to Earth-like. It's got nothing to do with the sun. It's just crypt Earth atmospherics. It's like, okay. Um... And so that frees Clark, and he gets her off the ship and back to Earth. Um, and then he gets Clark out, and then Clark is able to complete the story, if you will. All of those things are what connect the first half of the film to the second half. Like, none of the second half is possible without all of this crazy nonsense happening. So, it'd be really interesting to see if he accounts for all of them, or if he's just going to go with, Zod brought her on as leverage. Like, please, get to all of them. The reason Lois is even there to be invited aboard Zod's ship is because, as they showed minutes before in the film, the military picked her up after she was exposed on national television for knowing Superman's true identity. Uh, the data and not giving it up. Yeah, the world should hate her. Oh yeah, that's another fucking thing, wouldn't it? Um, so that means that Zod's information is this woman knows the identity of uh, Kal-El, I guess, to him, so, right? So it's watching national TV as well. Um, I'm, I guess I don't think I'm convinced that Zod would find that that important. Uh, I don't know. I guess y y y we have to go with Zod was like, wow, they must have some kind of personal connection. I'll bring her on board too as leverage. That's, that's the best argument you can make. Why would when he's going to kill everybody anyway? I don't, I, I don't really, I'm not really convinced that Zod would give a fuck. He's like, I'm going to cripple yeah. Superman and tie him up. What do we need this woman for? Yeah, what's the point? If he, if Superman doesn't agree, it, it, you, you'd assume he'd agree to that? Like, being treated that way? It, not that even you should have treated him like that. It's, none of it makes sense. <laughs> so, um, but yeah, like I said, though, him, her being brought on is the lowest on the list of my issues with all of that. Like, the rest of it's way fucking worse as a result of it, but it's still bad, so... This guy. They don't know exactly what she knows about the aliens or how useful she could be, so they're keeping her close by on any alien-related matters. The same can be Why? said for General Zod. He obviously saw the same broadcast, and he wants Lois obviously. on board for mind-reading, intel, and leverage in case they need to use her against Superman. There you go, leverage. Frame. There you go. Yeah, yeah that's that... the best you could do. Well, they... I mean... Those, this like isn't said, ever spoken of in the movie or alluded to. It's no, just it's, you could sort of imply it, maybe. And she is the linchpin for the plot to function in any way, shape, or form. Her being, which, by the way, she has that going for in a lot of Zack Snyder's movies. She just, she's super important. She, she does lots uh, of things. Remember when she drowned herself getting the spear? That was funny. That's, <laughs> she, she, she first tosses the spear into the water, then she realizes, oh, I need to reasons, get the spear. Yeah. She almost drowns oh, herself. I'll tell you what that was. The water was like, hey, fuck you for throwing spears at me. I'm going to drown you. <laughs> yeah, I'd be able to stab me. Yeah. Man. Where the codex is, and she knows Superman, so she might know where the codex is. So let's trap her in a room with a terminal that control the ship if she has a chip. It's like, good job, guys. <laughs> Fucking tie her up. Jesus. Yeah. They're going to read her mind. I love that humans are better at capturing people into loads of alien civilizations. It's like, just make it so they can't move. That's a really good fucking addition. Yeah, Handcuffs tie them up again. with rope. Yep. Come on. I didn't want to tell them anything about you, but they did something to me. They looked inside my mind. It's okay, well. Superman should oh, not react it. that way. When oh. Zod threatens his mother, he destroys a bunch of property unnecessarily. Oh my well, it's... god. All right, so like, okay. it's not the the fact that it's property. It's that there are people around. Yeah, like I don't property. I don't know that I care as much about that giant. Uh, tower thing, but the petrol station? Holy yeah, crap! The trains. He is bringing people. He's bringing Zod and his. He's men bringing to... Zod into a populated area. Yeah. Right, exactly. Where there's going to be collateral damage. There's going to be tons of destruction. That's there's the two people Holy that. Shit. Two people with his powers are duking it out. A lot of damage yeah. is going to happen. Also, like the military is going to get involved. Like there could be collateral damage with just their involvement. 
like uh, it's such a terrible idea. I'm okay with Superman being very angry when his mum is threatened. I'm fine with that. Yeah, yeah. I'm fine with me. That's normal. That's some minuscule amount of character. We <laughs> it's nice to that see doesn't, him. Yeah. That does not follow, however, with uh, I'm going to take you to a populated area for our little, our little powwow. Oh, of course. Cool. So I'm just because there's two arguments here, right? Like almost yeah. the first, I, I wouldn't make myself. But the second, yeah, he um, Superman is incredibly reckless throughout this whole movie, and it's fucking annoying. Really. Yeah, we'll give it to you. That wasn't a good thing, but that's kind of the point of the scene. Oh. A big part oh. of this film is. Oh, oh that's, the point oh, that's of the my scene. favorite that's the argument. That's the point. That it's was literally the, the, the cure scene. for any problem ever. Well, well, that's the point of the scene. You see, he's I, I to do be like reckless. that as if that means anything. They intended for it to be shit. Awesome. Yeah. So to be so clear, we both agree it's shit. Great. The criticism awesome. is yeah. it is out of fucking character for him to drive Zod into a populated area instead of every other option he has. Which, by the way, judging from like some of the screenshots, looks like if he had gone in any other direction, it would have been okay. Well, it's Kansas. Well, it's Kansas. If you can't yeah. if you can't find an unpopulated area in Kansas, I don't know what to say. Oh, that <laughs> that's the point, Mueller. He's supposed to be acting out of character here. They threatened his mom. Yeah, so I, I would go as far as saying that... Um, so it's out of character to react it, that way to threatening his mom? Well, it seems deliberate with how fucking stupid he is. No, and no, no, no. I'm saying that uh, he's acting irrationally because they threatened his mom. That's why he's acting out of character. That's the point. That's mm -hmm. the point. So if you threaten his mom, he's okay with insane amounts of other dead people. That, yeah, that yes, the film never addresses, that's, I guess. That's, 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 that's the logic. That's the point. <laughs> that's what they've seen is that's the point of the scene They're like oh yeah. Is the exploration of Superman's humanity. And in this scene, we... <laughs> this is the exploration <laughs> of his humanity. Him oh. driving that guy through the silos and into the trains and the buildings and the gas stations, that's an exploration of his character. That like, poor 7 okay. Eleven. No, it's not. You get to see what happens when he gives way to that part of himself and loses composure. No, he does this anyway. This isn't just when yeah. he's angry. Yeah. This is always, this is him throughout the whole movie. This is how Superman operates. He just fucking ruins everything. He doesn't give a fuck. But again, you'll always have in the back of your mind this little thing of like, how far can you push him? Like if he sees Lois get hurt or his mother get killed or something, like you just made like a really mad Superman that we- This music is so inappropriate, but okay. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. Just it should be somber, music. deleted music, Dan. <laughs> yeah, he's capable of some really horrible stuff if he wants to be. My thoughts after seeing it was, he's only human. And then I went, no, nope, he's not. He is not. This, oh, this is fascinating to me. You, you can't play it both ways. Oh. It's like if, um, you know when he, when he when Tony watches his parents die and then he flies out of the thing, goes to the nearest orphanage and just lasers a bunch of children in half. And so I'm like, why the fuck did he do that? It's like, well, he was angry. Yeah, just he found out my parents died. Yeah, okay. And like, oh, okay. Carry He's on. He's reckless. Can people not act emotional? And it's like, I feel like he, we're talking about two different things. He, he <laughs> doesn't grabs, mean your car. You, you can just do whatever you want. He grabs Bucky and he flies him to the nearest city to have their little battle. <laughs> near city that's, that's always superman's goal they're, they're in the scene. they're Hence. in the middle of like this they're in this bunker in the middle of fucking nowhere and iron man and says like no we gotta have a city that to do this <laughs> he like has specifically job is fly a bunch for, of like, civilians into the building it's like we need downtown civilians. middle of the day everybody's at work specifically some of them probably in the petrol station but they're not anymore no now they're vaporized yeah, now that he's only human. Nope, he is not. Yeah, but that's the thing that's cool about him, I think, in some ways. No, the it's idea horrific. of the frailties of a human, sort of emotionally, but you don't want to get that. No, guy we're not upset him. that he's upset about his so mom I mean, being threatened. This is all, like, it's the orphan thing. It's, it's, Iron Man was angry, that's why he killed the orphans. Like, that's not, you're not addressing the problem whatsoever, but go ahead. Yeah, he's, he's a big guy. He's, yeah. This isn't Superman doing this in his official superhero capacity. It's Clark Kent protecting his mom. He's Stop. not protecting no. his mom by blowing he... up an IHOP. Also, he literally <laughs> abandons his mom with two other yeah, yeah, this is the yeah. <laughs> thing. Yeah, he forgets about those god, two. God, this is so painful. Oh Why? my god, this is bad. This video is shit. You bitch! You my mother! <laughs> That's pretty funny though. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, As um, he abandons his mom with the, two other super power, powerful aliens, he's like, "You think okay. you can threaten my mother?" Yeah, well, um, Carl and Steven are fucking her up right now, so I have to say. Red Light Media, uh, Matt of Steel videos is funny. I recommend all the DC coverage because they just fucking meme on it. But uh, when Mike <laughs> is telling this scene back to talk about it, 
He's like, it was so shocking to see Superman just, just punching and punching. He, he called Zod a motherfucker. <laughs> it's, just, <laughs> it's like, oh my god, I wish that that's what actually happened. It's funny, he connected it to when Spock does it on, uh, oh, what the fuck's it called, Into Darkness, when he just punches and punches. So I think it's, it's uh, whatever. Punching cool. This scene is an illustration of one of the challenges Superman has to face as part of being godly powerful. He has to restrain himself at all times. He has to resist oh, his yeah, urge restraint. to kill That's civilians. what I think about when someone says, tell me about Superman from Man of Steel. I'm like, he's very restrained. Restrained, yeah. No, seriously. He's resisting the urge to execute civilians, because that's Superman. He's like, oh, I wish I could throw Zod into the more populated areas. I guess I'll go for the lesser one. <laughs> I was like, man, I wish, I we, guess, I wish we could fight in Metropolis someday. I love that <laughs> yeah. so much. So I was like, well, where is it? On a farm? <laughs> <laughs> uh -huh. On a Metropolis, farm. a farm <laughs> where you learn to do battle. <laughs> yeah, so, so, so <laughs> could we perhaps go there sometime? And punch each other. Have getting angry like other superheroes. Batman gets mad at you, you get punched in the face. Okay. Superman gets mad at you, you get punched Hundreds into Hundreds of thousands space. of people die who are not related. Why does Lois end up on the military plane for the yeah, bombing Yeah, there was mission. no reason for her to be there. Uh, she's a civilian. I can't she's think of any reason why. Because yeah, she, not... she tells them about the stupid USB thing while they're in flight, right? Yeah, they can do it from there. She yeah. doesn't need to be with them. Yeah, there she's there no because the plot her needs her. To be there. Yeah. She's on the plane because Jarrell's hologram gave her the plan. We can't send them back. No, the plan yeah, is to crash the fucking plans. thing into the thing. That's it. We saw the plan. There's no reason for her to be there. The plan was set up and executed. Like that's like if Jorel told me like you with a grenade, you have to pull the pin and then release and throw. It's like all right, I need to be in the fight. On the front line. <laughs> I gotta. I gotta. I couldn't possibly explain this. To, like I said, it's the only thing that happens that relates to her at all is you gotta push it in all the way. Okay. Yeah. That's <laughs> it. That's all. Back to the Phantom Zone. How? I can teach you. They want the best chance for this mission to succeed, so it makes sense that the person with the plan and the most knowledge of the alien technology should be there. Again, she doesn't. This knowledge she stuck amounts a thing to, in a thing. That's it. Yeah, the knowledge amounts to put the thing in all the way. That's, the, that's what I know. In case something goes wrong. And guess what? Something does go wrong. So it's a good thing she was there to spot And she it. says... No, it, it oh, I agree. It's super good thing that she was there. There's something wrong. It's not supposed to do this. See? She doesn't even know what the fuck the problem is. Yeah, it's just yeah. not supposed to do that. Which they would have like, figured out they, because it wasn't yeah, working. It's not working. Yeah. Yeah. What's it supposed to do? I still feel bad that that guy was killed and no one cared. He's the he's the one who actually detonates it. He's the one who saved the day. Yeah. She got she got like, uber plot armor. He just got vaporized. <laughs> Dude, he according to this video, he got placed in the fucking phantom zone like, for doing this. He used to live there. It's like whoa. All the way. Let me take a look. What did you want them to do? This tech support style over the radio? Okay. Yeah, they could. What what could she have done? What so, could she do? Let, let's play the simulation, right? They go, wait, is Lois uh, back at camp? It's like, call her. Lois, the, the key thing, it's not it's not doing anything. She goes, did it go in all the way? No. Oh. Do that. <laughs> do because that. the only oh, reason wait, she oh, figures yeah. is out, the only reason she figures is out, it out is because it's it doesn't look right. No, he figures Like, it, it doesn't out. quite line up in a certain way. He's the one who, he, he turns it and then oh, he puts that him? it in. Yeah. Oh, that's, that's what, him. Okay. Yeah, yeah, that's yeah. why I'm annoyed. Yeah, shit. He's the one who does all of the things. She gets saved yeah, at the her. credit. <laughs> it's like, cool. This guy's giving her credit for it. Okay, so I put the flash over the USB hole and it went all magnetized like you said it would, but nothing's happening. Okay, so it wouldn't be playing out like this because there'd be stuff happening. There'd be like, they'd, they'd be really like really rushing through these I mean, things. Like, like right. they'd, they'd be kind of you know hurriedly trying to get this done you could still do a conversation like this in a way that's intense like i, I said, like the it, idea anyway she doesn't know military shit. operations the general has to be like right next to the soldiers while everything's happening because it's like well he knows the plan it's like yeah you fuck talk to them by the radio why do you dismiss still... the radio like <laughs> this is the admiral holdo school of guidance where you don't tell anyone the plan you have to be there personally i still want to well you that tell way. everyone else the plan except for the people like you tell all the privates the plan and they're not allowed to tell anyone else but you don't tell like the, the, captains the captains and, and the, or lieutenants. Yeah, the commanders and lieutenants i want to yeah. push by the way she doesn't know fuck all all she says is push it in all the way that's all she fucking adds to this 
And she could have just told them that it's meant to go in all the way before they even took yeah, off. Like we're pretending like she's the expert. It's like, no, she's no fuck all. It's supposed to f*** up. Are you sure you plugged in the flash drive? Yeah, and it went all magnetized, like you said, and there's lightning coming out of it, but the thing still isn't powering up. Wait, there's lightning? Jarrell didn't say anything about lightning. Where are you seeing lightning? The lightning is coming out of the USB hole. I like the idea that whenever these people are like, oh, what are you suggesting uh, these... Like this movie do, uh, this this dumb thing. So they they um there again. Like I said, there is a way that you could shoot this scene or and edit the scene around to still be intense, and yet he's framing it like there's this is the only way that they could do the scene. Like I said, As... if they contact her, she says it goes in all the way. If it doesn't, I don't fucking know, and that's it. Yeah, that's the extent of my knowledge. Is that's that all she the, knows? The peg. It's it's a one two three four five the pentahedron the the little the, the thing goes in the slot that's shaped for the thing pentagon and that's it yeah sort of, yeah I think a, I don't know if a pentagon is there if they're all equal sides oh you mean like Let the me difference check. between a yeah like the name of the equal. ship yeah yeah, yeah. Uh, pentagon it is five oh so it's any five sizes any five sides is a any five-sided polygon yeah is this, a pentagon this symbol is on superman's chest and cape a pentagon with a yellow background and red yeah so it's a pentagon it's so, just it's, uh, it's an pentagon asymmetrical pentagon versus or, well not asymmetrical but you get what i mean hexagon guys well, just be... made it for jokes it's fine okay mm -hmm. so that's six sides pentagon versus uh, pentagram. All right, so a pentagram is a five-pointed star. Yeah, that's different. I, I, I guess because you have um, because like squares mm. are because uh, second square is a. <laughs> Wait, what are you looking up? I'm confused. Because I want to see if there's a if if there's a name if there's two different designations for five-sided geometric shapes where the uh, sides okay. are all equal or if they're not all equal. Um. So this says a square is a plane figure with four equal straight sides and four right angles. Well, yeah, no shit. That's what a square is. Welcome to ECAP, yeah, where you I are learning that. about oh, geometry. Yeah, I want to make sure. So a a square, it, it's a quadra, a regular quadrilateral. <laughs> That's fine. It's fine. I guess it'd what be What the hell are we talking about? I don't know. The I, don't know. know. I, just, I was just, logo. it's all good. It's fine. Right, it's all good. Look at shapes. I was just curious about what shapes are called. <laughs> yeah, but are we, are we, we're talking about the shape of Superman's logo, right? The the which yeah, is also I, the shape was, of, the, of the key. Yeah, oh, I wanted right, to know okay. if a a pentagram was if they're equal or if it's just five sides. Wait, a, a pentagram is like it's a the pentagon. Upside, yeah, oh, a pentagon. A pentagon. Is the if it's down yeah, yeah, star for the devil. yeah, I know. Well, no, actually, a pentagram <laughs> is any five sided. You know, five. Oh, five okay, star. right. Yeah, yeah. So well, the pentagram isn't necessarily upside down. That's why they call it the upside down pentagram. Oh, yeah, whoops. that's what I said. Yeah, all right. <laughs> this this was worthwhile. What about the <laughs> penthouse gram? It sounds like it should penthouse. be working. Are you sure it's not powering up? I don't know. What does it look like when it's powering up? Yeah, you, you need to know when to end a joke. I was about to also, say the same thing. Also, this joke thing. is elaborating on why she she doesn't know things. Well, like, uh, honestly, I'm against... waiting for what this ends with. I'm, I'm curious if he, if he's actually just memeing or if he's actually making a point of like this would be. You can't do it this way. This would be bad. I think it will end with her with the ship blowing up. Part way I, 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 I want to say even the nostalgia that critic would yeah, that cut off the easier. joke here. No, it wouldn't. Oh, oh, oh he God, just was... he just yeah. There you go. That's how he ends it. So the point the but point he wants to make. I just established. Yeah, the the whole point of the joke is that it establishes that she doesn't fucking know anything. He knows as much as she does at this yep. point. There is no the, reason for her to be there. The extent of her to... knowledge is the pentagram goes in the pentahole. Like if if um if Jorah had told me to tell all of you, right? He's like, this pearl goes in this box, and that goes in a chest, and that chest goes in this enormous bag that goes inside the back of a car. Okay, and I go, okay, I tell all you guys that, and you guys are like. You should come on the mission. And I'm like, why? It's like, because you have special knowledge. I'm like, I've, that's all I know. I've that's just, it. I've told you yeah, everything. Yeah, I, I ain't I getting on that fucking plane. Like, this no, is what I mean. I, that's We're pretending all I know. as though she has this special insight. It's like, no, she, she really doesn't. She really doesn't. She knows very simple shit. <laughs> doesn't.
terraform Mars instead of Earth. There's no yeah. answer to this. This is going to be in the movie. He's going to have to pull from third interested. party. Yeah. Um, the best he's probably going to be able to do is say something like Earth has a magnetism to its atmospherics, blah, blah, blah. Not, that yeah, Mars doesn't. Right. It's just the Earth but, special argument for reasons. Yeah. That way he doesn't have to kill all of humanity. Oh, but by yeah. the way, bonus criticism. Why didn't he try any of the other places all over the fucking cosmos that he would have? Yeah, yeah. Been why aware come of? to Earth? The to idea terraform. that Earth is the only one that this can be done with is fucking crazy. Why yeah. bother? Does Zod seem like the dummy? Why bother? bother? What do you mean by bother? Well, <laughs> because of all what? the because of all the trouble that it would cause going to Earth. He literally loses yeah. all of Krypton. All the Kryptonian embryos are dead because of the like. Why and bother? You know that <laughs> Superman is on Earth, and he might not be happy about what you're gonna do to his planet. These humans have nukes, by the way, too. Like, I don't think that without yeah. Superman, that we would have had no chance at disrupting Zod's plans. Yeah. Because like, we don't see what like the the they try missiles but they get fucked up by the magnetism. Um, but we don't know what happened. Like if it was a nuke, that machine gets fucked, right? It it would have to. I can't fathom that. That's. I mean the fact. I mean, at that least the radiation destroyed. would fuck everything up so that the Kryptonians yeah, I, would be in trouble. Yeah, I doubt. Like, this is the mm -hmm. thing. Like Zod, if you don't stop, we are going to fucking detonate a nuke <laughs> on your world engine and your ship. You won't survive the radiation. <laughs> Trust yeah. me. We're really good at blowing things up. What a terrible opening argument. What else you got? Diplomatic time for you. Zod has no respect for the human race and even certain Kryptonian bloodlines. You don't well, have to we, have respect so for the human race. To neither know does, like, Superman, in a way. Well, like, I don't respect cockroaches, no but I don't fucking want them in my house. <laughs> like, well, there's, yeah. They're a threat there's, to things. There's also no one in Mars that's capable of stopping you, but there's someone on Earth that is. What a terrible yeah. counter argument. Like,. He doesn't, he doesn't like humans, so he goes yeah. out of his way to kill all of to them make it on a another lot planet. Him, this is this is the fundamental about Zod that just doesn't work. It's like Kryptonians are way too close to humans to argue to me that blowing up Earth isn't in any way worth it. It's like look at all of our stuff, look at all the machines we already have of industry. Yeah, look at all these buildings and uh, this huge culture that you could get in all of these countries in a society full of people who are working together. We have a currency. Like, do you not want to know how we did that? Like, you don't have this. Exactly. That's what I mean. They, they, they're like, oh, Zod thinks he's so much above them. But he doesn't have fuck all compared to it. Yeah, he has, like, advanced technology. <laughs> There's hardly any of them. Yeah, none of his, like, supposed supremacy <clears throat> is even... Like, there's no explanation for it. He's just an you? evil person. He's just that's evil what I mean. soldier man. It, uh, uh, at the same time as he's, like, horribly characterized in terms of he just believes himself to be superior to everything... It doesn't translate out. If I think I'm superior to, like, a lava flow coming at me, I still get out of its way. <laughs> <laughs> Respect for the human race and even certain Kryptonian bloodlines. Help me save our race. We'll start anew. We'll st on Mars, because to do it on Earth would be to invite war. Would be dumb. I, that would be <laughs> and it would be more difficult. And, like, people would already be there. Oh, but he's not even. Oh. Why does he not? The degenerative bloodlines that led us to this state. Zod and the gang are already on so the planet. A, but that's not humans. Humans didn't lead you to that state. Humans yeah. did the opposite. They have a flourishing society. We can help you, Zod. God damn it, you yeah, moron. Come, come, come chill on Earth. We have beer or two. Like, yeah. Chill. Planet Earth. He's just with evil. the Genesis Chamber and World Engine. They can easily take over Earth with No, they can't. They can't easily do it. They get their fucking ass kicked by one guy <laughs> in a plane. He doesn't even have to try. Like I thought you were talking about super bad, but no, you're right. Fucking humans fuck up the world engine as well. Yeah. God, you're so one wrong. Of, yeah, one of them is the plane that hits it and makes the black hole, and the other one is <laughs> Superman who punches it. <laughs> <laughs> like, there should be no reason to leave in Zod's mind. You know why Superman's there, that's, that's, that's why it. you're showing up! That's it, it's, he didn't even try the defense he we came need, up with. It's not, <sighs> he doesn't even need to go to Earth, it's not that he doesn't need to leave the, the Earth. He just could use any other fucking planet <sighs> in the fucking anything. <sighs> yeah. If I hated no, all other people and species... Yeah, I would have gone to just somewhere else. I wouldn't have gone to there another so planet if I just hate other galaxy. people. You can go wherever you want! Also, by the way, I didn't even think of this one. Is this not true? 
I just hope go to the Indian Ocean instead of saving yeah, Metropolis. Yeah, he should have done that. Yeah, why, like, why put a wormhole yeah. in Metropolis? I think we, I'm pretty sure we did talk about this. Well, so I think we just did, to yeah. clarify, right? Like, the Metropolis one is going to get a singularity detonated compared to the Indian Ocean, which Superman will punch. Like, I feel like if we're going to have him punch one of them and the other one will be a black hole, let's, let's put the black hole not in Metropolis. That's, yeah, my, yeah that seems like a good idea. And it shows how just like un like just crazy evil the Kryptonians are that they chose Metropolis as just the centerpiece yeah. for where they're gonna do this. They're like, yeah, we're just evil. Yeah, at least have, like Superman one guy gives like, us. He's odd. Those buildings, they like built for people our size, and they house things. We could use them. He's like, no. no like least... you would put them, <laughs> you'd put them far away from civilization, so it takes the humans longer to reach you. At or least, even like, find out. You could have put them in the ocean and just started them up, and everyone would have been going, "What the fuck is happening to the world?" Yeah, yeah. yeah at least, at least here, Superman gives a semblance of a fuck about reducing collateral damage. Semblance. <laughs> Indian Ocean instead of saving Metropolis. Because he's the only one who can get there fast enough. No. Look at him go. No. What? No, you wow, get to... we actually provided better defenses for this terrible criticism that I haven't heard anyone make than this guy can. First of all... You can use a nuke in the Indian Ocean, for starters, because it's nobody fucking around. Mm -hmm. First of all, Superman can reach them both. Um, if yeah. he gets stopped by a stupid CGI snake, there's no reason for that thing <laughs> to even exist. Yeah, he does reach them both in the film. My point is that he could have done the Metropolis one and then gone straight to the Indian Ocean one. Like, it, it... Also, you're, you're telling me, like, oh, they couldn't get there fast enough. It's like, what about just any other military? What? Yeah, there's not only the, there's not only the American military. Also, do you remember how <laughs> yeah, long it takes him? Indian Ocean. Do you remember how long it yeah. takes Superman to even destroy the, the Indian Ocean one? It's it took him a while, yeah. I don't believe that they couldn't have gotten there. Um, like I said, he could destroy both of them. That machine over the Indian Ocean, the gravity field will continue to expand. The no, military can handle No, the... stop the one in Metropolis. Yeah, we shouldn't even be like, talking about this, Superman. You yeah. can punch yeah, them Yeah, the other to one death. doesn't matter. It doesn't matter about the second yeah, one. Yeah, you if need the, two of them. Broken. That's actually a really yeah, good point. Yeah, if one of them is broken, yeah. I, I, doubt, I doubt the world engine functions if you've broken it. <laughs> that seems to be categorical. Well, by definition, it, yeah. It, 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 uh, it, uh, fuck, the gravity thing beam shoots whatever the fuck it is shoots through the core and goes back and forth yeah if I remember correctly yeah. so one yeah. is gone it's over it's like gg yeah. you need a hope zod so yeah why did oh, they should have both gone to the same one just to make sure how about crazy idea the you're, you're just standing amongst them when they're making this plan he's like i'm going to go to the indian ocean you guys go to metropolis and it's like how about you do both you yeah <laughs> How about hmm. let's both go to Metropolis together just to make sure, uh, and then I don't know. We'll take care of the other one if we even need to. If and, it just becomes dormant, then that's technology we can use. And then General Man is like, "No, we'll we'll detonate the black hole." You're like, "No, no, 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 no!" Like, no. I, I'm actually against the black hole idea. <laughs> <That's> just, <laughs> it's like, yeah, guys, a black what? hole on the surface of our planet is like the worst thing possible. <laughs> <laughs> He's like, uh, he pulls down like a little whiteboard. He's like, black. Oh, oh. He, he draws like a big sad face. <laughs> these things, these things, it will suck in the planet. You see this? You have to keep that's going on. We are on the planet. More planet. Like, oh. <laughs> we are on the planet. <laughs> and when, you, when, when person in black hole, they die. <laughs> D-I-E, die. <laughs> and then one of them goes, It's like no, when no, you no, sleep you, forever. You go to the phantom zone of the black hole. He's like, no, 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 die. Die. <laughs> Dead, dead. You put little X marks on their eyes. <laughs> dead. So, so you're well, saying what Superman. we have to do is we have to find people who haven't gone to the Phantom Zone, so they're unaffected by the black hole. Oh fuck me! <laughs> stupid. <laughs> or at least they think they can. Uh. What's with the stupid robot tentacles? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yes. Stupid CGI snake. Go. <laughs> the world engine. So as you're watching the world engine and you're seeing it unleash its defenses, those defenses are actually the largest scale version of the liquid geo effect. That's not an explanation, my good man. <laughs> okay, I don't care. That we have in the movie. We decided cool. that, actually Zach decided that that would be a really good defense tool, not just a I'm sure he did. Uh, sure mechanism. Did, yeah. And uh, it took a long time of looking at the world engine and realizing... It would have been cool if Superman tried to laser it. He never does.
Hmm. Yeah, he yeah. never does. Also, never why, why didn't they use it in the war? On Krypton, why, they never use those. As well. I guess the war. it's a why part of the world engine. So, yeah. like they found like the world of... engine after the war. So. Oh. Of all the things that they could have used to defend their world engine, why Doc Ock tentacles? I don't, I don't know. Well, also interestingly, um, if you if you pull up your respective copies of Man of Steel, the the tentacles could have killed Superman, but they don't. Um, mm. I, I I would like to find you the timestamp. Um, it's it he it grabs him, and um, if you remember, someone tells him, wait, if you try and take down one of these ships, aren't you going to be weak because um. It's it's trying to channel like Kryptonian atmosphere, which is, makes you weak. And he's like, yeah, channeling maybe it does. Kryptonian atmosphere. Fucking whatever. The point oh, is that uh, it's like it's spewing the black smoke. Um, and so it grabs him and puts him into the black 50. smoke. Oh, is it one forty nine? But yeah, so it'll grab him, and he's like, oh, jeez. And then it like puts it he's, the, all the smog from um, I guess the 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 the, the, the terraforming. He ends up in it. And he like coughs, and he, he almost seems to die until it drops him into the Earth atmosphere tisms, and then he reignites and does his second wind. And it's like, oh shit! So it could have killed him. Damn. Hmm. I knew he got it. Here we go. Oh, There's a the visual. Yeah. It's one five two three four. One five two three four. Okay. He's in like Krypton tisms while being grabbed by the snake, which can grab him without him being weakened anyway. So yeah, if it just kept him there, he'd be fucked. Yeah. Instead, it tosses him into the laser. <clears throat> Why? Him up. Because it's a stupid snake. <laughs> <It's> just... <laughs> I don't even like the CGI snake, but gosh darn it, it could have killed him. Imagine it had a um a doomsday spike Bray? to put through oh, his yeah. heart. You know. Do Do you mean a death knife? A uh, tentacle blade. <laughs> Yeah, I know. The death knife. That's what Sam Raimi called it. I cut off your arm so it turned into a spike. That makes sense. Shut up. <laughs> There's some... We could put three large pools... Also, that's amazing. If Wonder Woman hadn't cut off his arm, Superman would have lived. Possibly. Yep. Yeah, that's weird. Presumably. <laughs> <laughs> Fucking, fucking the Wonder Woman in there. Man. And Zach described all the sort of defensive arm motion it could do, and that became a really cool Superman robot fight that we could get. In oh, yeah, it was really a cool. A really cool Superman really robot cool. fight. How old is the person oh, sound yeah. who said that? That sounds like a 10 year old. Super cool Superman, a super awesome Superman robot fight. Fight. Super cool robot arms that grabs them and his lasers and the so thick, thick, cool and memorable. Oh, and then God. just make them black hole. Awesome. Into the movie. And oh, should that's not that. heartlessly destroy all of the Kryptonian base. Yeah. 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 Yep. Babies in the scout ship that carries the Genesis chamber. Superman destroys the ship because he knows what his father told him that Kryptonian society was always doomed to failure. Bullshit. He oh, says you're a wow. bridge between the two worlds. Shut the well, fuck up. Wow. She has two terrible deaths. Epic. Also, what the hell? He has trouble so killing I killed Zod. all the babies. He has trouble killing Zod because he's like the last Kryptonian, but he's cool with killing all the Kryptonian babies. <laughs> like, what do you mean? <laughs> Jesus fuck the Christ, babies. Dude. Why does he keep rolling out the worst defenses of this? I thought he was wow. going to say, well, of course, it was a hard choice to make, but Zod was going to destroy everything or something, to which I was going to counter, he could have threatened to destroy the colony or whatever it is, um, and then tell Zod he has to back down or he will fucking burn all those those babies alive. <laughs> Superman threatened also, to burn babies. If, <laughs> also, if, if my dad told me that all of those babies were doomed, I wouldn't kill them. No. Yeah, that's just... What the fuck is wrong with you? Like, they're doomed to <sighs> see... What is like... it with Clark and jor dad, you know? <laughs> the, sorry, Clark and Kal-El. Both of their dads are fucking assholes. Yeah, that's what I mean. Like, oh, you get ready, you have two terrible dads. <laughs> well, I mean, I think that... I, I think that him killing the Kryptonian babies is just... <laughs> You know, like a follow-up of what his dad told him all those years ago about maybe you should let the kids on the bus die. <laughs> it was the equivalent. Yeah. You should massacre the babies. Too. Also, this, this is the quote. Society where he was says always that his mother and dad couldn't come with him because they're failures. Doomed to failure. Your mother, Lara, and I were a product of the failures of our world. So they didn't actually explode on Krypton because of the like could, born to be soldier born to be scientist thing they exploded because they harvested their planet's core for no like they just yeah, did that that's 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 the part that'll get you fucking morons. exploding planet bit 
And anyway. also, if you would have taken all these genetically engineered people, I don't know why you couldn't like change them genetically here, but assuming you couldn't, if you plop them down on a totally new planet in an environment that there is no possible way you could have programmed them for, they would have just like done whatever. Also, can and they then fuck? at that point, if they are bad, like they don't even get a chance. They're just they they just die. They get killed. They don't even have a chance to do stuff. Also, can they fuck? In which case, only the first generation will be the automatons. So, I mean, I guess you could do things the old-fashioned way. I mean, Jor El did. <laughs> like, yeah. I don't see why we can't have more people. I mean, do he it had a way. he had a child, a boy child, a boy child. He did. A boy yeah. child. A boy child. <laughs> child baby. Star Wars, tied to its fate. And the genetically controlled babies that would be grown in the Genesis Chamber are programmed to revive that doomed society. Congratulations, you no, just advocated for though. killing babies. <laughs> Yay! <laughs> well, no, they wouldn't revive the Doom. No, they so, how? Where are you getting this from? <laughs> they're re they're destined to revive the Listen, Doom Society. You made that shit up. I know what he's. I know the argument. It makes complete sense. Okay, so they'll grow up, and then they will recommend that the current Earth government harvest their own core for energy, and then explode the Earth, <clears throat> and and humans will do it because they've just built that way. Because they're just built to self-destruct for whatever reason. That That's definitely how it is, yeah. This is why you have to be more specific than they're just doomed. This it's is like, a pathetic no. argument. And and to be honest with you, like, this... I didn't even catch this until I think it was the second time I watched Man of Steel in terms of, like, oh my god, he fucking killed all those babies. Damn. What about He's all the that babies would be... that would have been just, like, janitors and trash collectors <laughs> well, and, think about like, this. just librarians and stuff? They didn't have anything to do with... Krypton like, blowing up. Like doctors. Yeah, like doctors. We still and need them. Like and besides, these are all. These people seem to be like perfectly able to, you know, operate. They're not like crazy. I say this knowing that people talk about Zod as though that's what happens when you let these babies grow up. But like, was Jor El one of these people? He was normal. Yeah. All yeah. of them were pretty normal. Zod was just the crazy one. I mean, they it they they had a civilization that was really really good until the home planet exploded. Like, just just carry yeah. on. Just don't do that last bit. Yeah, the planet exploding thing really set you back. <laughs> yeah, also like no, we have to destroy our planet. It's like, why would you genetically program to blow up their planet? <laughs> you fools. <laughs> that seems like a bit of an oversight. I would have patched that one out. Hmm. Also, why did Jor-El give him the codex that's designed to allow you to birth these things if he didn't want him to do anything with the codex? Was this all in secret? I, I don't think this answers the, the question. This is, part the of, this is part of the whole problem with, um... It doesn't make any sense. Like, Jor-El clearly wanted him to restart the civilization. That's, the, that's what he advocates for with the Council. He's like, we're not going to escape Krypton. But perhaps others can, and it's the Codex plus Clark plus the little baby pods. You can start anew on a new planet. Remember, he's like, there's so many habitable planets out there, we just gotta get it going on one of them. And they're like, no, even though we've done that like but a bajillion would... times, we can't do it. If that was the <laughs> case, guess. why would Jor-El want Clark to fucking laser all the babies? That's clearly not what he wanted. I don't know how he read this in the film. <sighs> Grown in the are programmed to revive that doomed society. No. We're both ghosts on. No, Can't they're doomed that? because the planet exploded. But they don't have a planet to, like, explode. They're like, well, what about Earth? I was like, obviously remember, they're not going to explode the planet if they know that what they do explodes the planet. Remember, Jor-El was anti-planet explode. <laughs> and he's one of the genetic <laughs> failures. So I don't what like you're it saying explode. doesn't make sense. Fucking hell. Like, I, I understand it's hard to defend Man of Steel. It's such a bad film. Krypton, you're clinging on to us. Gone. In fact, Superman knew this long before Jor-El even told him about it. Teenage Clark can be seen reading Plato's Republic, <laughs> which is a narrative on the oh, philosophy of justice. Yeah. Plato reasoned that a wow. just society... Oh, would... so we could just fucking skip this. He didn't pick this. anything up from that, I guess? Well, it, it's not even... It's not the same situation. Not even close. I'm sorry. ...have to be made up of a citizenry split into different classes. Produ also, justice doesn't mean you kill babies. This is so bad. <laughs> Producers, guardians, and philosopher kings, all working in their pre-assigned roles for the greater good of the society. This is a genesis chamber. 
all Kryptonians were conceived in chambers. You've made the argument already. I don't know why he's, he's like supporting the idea that they were all genetic failures. And the the only lead to planets exploding. It's like you can't prove that. You're just throwing in scenes in hopes that we'll think that it's proven. Just this: every child was designed to fulfill a predetermined role. Now, such as blowing up planets. That was one. But of the if core you designs. change. But if you totally change the environment the kids grow up in that they could have never possibly seen coming, then their outcome is going to be totally different. Yeah, because now we're going to get to some really interesting stuff with, like, is a soldier bred genetic Kryptonian? They just have a desire to fight? Is that the core? Because, of course, if they grew up in, like, an Earth-type place, they might have a desire to join the military or something. And what is that tied to exactly? Is it just they just want to fight a war? Is that what it is? Or do they just want to protect that which they have been encoded to believe is important being home you know like a sense of home mm -hmm. in which case if that place is in peace times what do they do these are all really interesting things by the way and the film's never going to cover anything like it as a worker a warrior a leader so the krypton depicted a man of steel okay yeah. of like, again it doesn't doesn't help you no it isn't you can't just say that oh if you actually do plato's republic your planet will explode <laughs> It's not, it's terrible, this is just Society so Plato created in Republic. It's the antithesis of the free choice, capitalist society Superman stands for. And Clark knows it. That doesn't mean that, that you execute the babies. That doesn't mean you can babies. massacre them. Yeah, th this doesn't follow. You think it does for some... Imagine, like, when he wrote this, he was like, I'm gonna have to argue that he blew up the babies for good reason. Oof, this is gonna be a tough one. People of Earth, different from us, it's true. But ultimately, I believe that's a good thing. They won't necessarily make the same mistakes we do. That is not him saying, kill the babies. <laughs> that is him saying, also, we like, made mistakes, the... which they did. Also, 100,000 years? They made it that long without blowing up their own planets? Not bad. That's fucking poggers, man. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> we hope to get that one day. Krypton did have its chance. But then oh Superman shows, God. like, no leadership or teaching. Oh, oh he said, said the thing. Krypton did have oh. oh, my God. I have to punish the babies for things they had no That's part in playing. Why would you defend? You actually said it. Wow. If you got it, yeah. Krypton did have its chance. It failed, and it would fail again. Then no, why? it wouldn't. How? Because the, the situation that? is entirely different on every level. They wouldn't have failed mm. if their planet hadn't exploded because they didn't harvest the stupid core. If they hadn't done that, they'd be okay. Also, mm. they'd be okay yeah. if they moved to one of the habitable planets, which for some reason Jeez. they don't. This is absurd. Also, I stop using it as a justification to fucking laser babies. Stop. Yeah, morality goes out the window really quickly when we defend yeah. a shitty fucking movie. <laughs> yep. You have to come up with a solution like, okay, we have all these Kryptonian infant embryos, right? So, like, they're going to grow up, but they were pre-programmed to, like, be things. But that's a huge, ambiguous kind of... We don't know what that even really means. Exactly. Do they want to be those things? Are they really good at being those things? What if, you t what if in this society we tell them, oh, you can actually be whatever you want to be? Can they then choose to do something else? Like, we don't know, like, anything really about what the stipulations are of this, you know, programming, this genetic program. We, there's so little we, we know. Clark doesn't know fucking shit about it. So a solution is kill them all. Krypton had its Like, fucking chance. hell. This, this and, and what terrible. if they do become, like, actual Kryptonians? What are they going to do? Again, I ask I mean, you, are they going to be affected? Are they going to get superpowers? Can I ask why did Jor-El attach the Kryptonian Codex to to to, to the Kal-el? Why? Why? Why do you do that? To the goal is to restart um, Kryptonian. To save Krypton. The, the to restart I, Krypton. Yeah. yeah. So like, so he's Jor-El does not to... want him to laser the babies. Is my point. He's saying that he did. Oh, yeah, that's a fuck up. It's just wrong. The whole point of... <laughs> totally wrong. So I guess, yeah, the plan was Superman has kids, and then that carries on the Kryptonian line, and then they survive as a people in that way. Gets a little watered down eventually, but, you know, it's a, yeah, it's still there. God, this movie. Krypton!
Yes! Uh, <laughs> I'm playing the line again. One of the worst fucking lines there. to come out of a superhero ever. Not to Krypton mention the fact that with the world engine destroyed and the terraforming incomplete, the revival of the Kryptonian race on Earth would mean the birth of an army of Kryptonians at Zod's command. That's never what? something he fucking no. argues. No, you made also, that that's, up. Yeah, that's not even true. Yeah, that, why would they listen to Zod? You could listen to like, this guy. Yeah. Also, Especially Zod's super... dead. Yeah, I was about to say. Did Jor El listen to Zod? Him. No. No. Jor El was Zod one of the went genetic against engineered his ones. ruling people. Exactly. So this was that's he just genetically absolute... designed to rebel? That's what I mean. People invent shit for this movie. That not only is that invalid, it never happened. Nobody ever fucking said anything about that. You're lying. <laughs> Stop hell. it. Like, all was Superman's powerfully engineered for the specific purpose of wiping out lesser beings in the interest of crypto. No, that's what? not what they're genetically- You just made that up. Why would you genetically have people- Why would those bloodlines exist in the first place if they were genetically modified to get rid of those bloodlines? Just fucking made that up. This is up. just a weird Zod thing that he says at the beginning. Yeah, because Jor-El- Not and... even the council and the other Kryptonians agree with. And, and Jor-El sends him to humans with, like, a sense of hope. He's like, the humans, yeah, it'll be alright there. It's like he fucking hates humans. He wants him to be a bridge between humans and Kryptonians. Like, I, these are all, like, a lottery. You're, you're birthing babies that could be fucking anything. We have no idea what happens if they grow up in a human society. For all we know, they'd be like, fuck Zod, he's insane. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's crazy. I want to live here. Like, there's people here, and I could talk with them, I and fly. I can go to baseball games, and I can strong. look at porn and stuff, and it's great. And yeah, this guy wants to destroy all of it for some reason. Let's kill him. <laughs> Let's tear his flesh off. It's like, oh god. Could happen. <sighs> Every action I take, no matter how violent, no, or stop how it. cruel. It's terrible. And this writing is well, pain in this is my the, face. This is the speech of, I am incredibly bad, you have to kill me. No matter me how off. evil I am, I have a reason. <laughs> mm. <laughs> Even if you can't understand it, just trust me, dude. Yeah. <laughs> Sources. <laughs> greater good of my people. I don't think they're interested in sharing this world. I think this would be considered justifiable homicide in some they, for whatever reason. They does not refer to the fucking babies, dude. This is Zod and his team. Like, we already know that there are Kryptonians that are chill with living on Earth that are genetically engineered, because Jor El would easily be one of them. Yeah. That's all we need. He'd be a okay with that. Zod, Zod is clearly an anomaly. Makes you wonder why he didn't go, but whatever. He is a failure, you see. Failure. Self defense. If the Genesis chamber contained actual fetuses instead of empty eggs, waiting for a codex to imprint DNA and be. Whatever. It's, it's the only hope Kryptonians have of ever being able to be born ever again. And he erased it. It's fucking. The choice from Superman is still there. It doesn't matter. Whether or not they're fetuses. Begin the gestation process. Mm -hmm. Which it doesn't. Superman has all the DNA in his cells, so those egg sacs are empty. Yep, he could he could birth. And what all do you think those. he could do? Imagine he could he could bring back a whole race that's extinct of <laughs> yeah. people. And think that's of what Zod was there to do. Think of what they could do for the human race, by the way. Like yeah, the, these absolutely. super strong people. And if they couldn't, you know, mingle with humans, then like uh, like breed with humans then there would be a limited number of them and once they die they die and that's it unless they can breed too unless they can which i assume they can yeah they never well, yeah, they're a little can, weird about that, that jor-el did uh, they implied it's some kind of like is there a difficulty or is it illegal i don't know i guess no one ever does it like good luck getting a galactic civilization to not have sex <laughs> well <laughs> <laughs> i don't know Zod oh, mastered his that. powers so easily while it's... Don't say because he's a soldier. It's because he's a soldier, he's because because soldier yeah. People, people have been yeah. saying that. It's because he's a soldier. Because if you train someone yourself. to be a soldier, if they get the power to fly, they're just fucking experts at it. Um, it also just goes in, all in the face of him saying, we can't have people live here as Kryptonians. They'll have years of suffering. It's like, no, no. No. A couple minutes for you, buddy. Yeah, a it little kid could handle it. Years to master his... Does it actually take Superman years to master his powers? He gets control of his x-ray vision in about 30 seconds with the help of his mom, and his super strength no, and invulnerability are kind of baked in, so he doesn't really need to try with those. His heat vision just like kind of happens to when things that. get intense, and he cool. learns to fly after jumping real high a few times and just believing in himself. I guess it eventually took years to master all the power
No, so wait, it, that wait. takes way longer than Zod. Zod is instantly like an expert. Like instantly. It he takes him moments. He crashes into a mountain. He learned to fly yeah. at like age 30. Yeah. You understand it's a long time? <laughs> So like how he just said, it's like, oh, the heat vision just kind of happens in intense things, but it's you can't assume that he runs super quickly when he wants to uh, get his dad out of a tornado. Well, it's whatever's convenient, right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, the, the flight one is the surprising one to me, but also we're ignoring his adjustment happens so fucking quickly. As we see in also, if he's actually arguing to us right now that Clark managed to go through this pretty easily, actually, that goes against what Zod says in the movie. So pick one because you're gonna yeah. lose either way. Either way, you've got a big issue in the movie, but it was really just individual two-minute sessions spread out over the course of his life. Zod has the advantage of being genetically modified and military oh, trained right? to master his. He's genetically modified. That doesn't in the mean military. anything about learning how to fly, you <laughs> dipshit. Jesus Christ! Right, it also explains why he loses to the scientist Jor-El in a fight. It's like, uh, wait, what? <laughs> supposedly, you're good at tactics and shooting guns. He's genetically so modified. To easy. fucking win this fight and he loses it. Senses. I'm a warrior cow. Trained my entire oh, please play the line. Do it. Fight yes. to master my senses. And also the advantage oh. of Darn. Seen so if no, you just gain a new series of senses, that doesn't mean you can just instantly it, be expert level at them. What do you mean, right? He's a soldier. <laughs> If you give us, yeah, if you give anyone Soldier. laser vision, if you give anyone flight, a super strength, they can just, yeah, yeah it's just Soldier, like they've had yeah. it their whole lives. Soldier. Easy what he's easy. Watching Superman do it all. It's not How really that would that teach you? <laughs> <laughs> what? Do you so watch if you watch Superman fly? fly, you're like, but what are you doing? Like, how do you fly faster? I don't get it. You, you yeah. go, is it a mental mm, thing? Yeah, you like like do you pooping. Have to, you know, like pooping. You do that. Yeah. Do you have to twist your toes a certain way or just <laughs> strain your, I don't know, you thighs? Think, like, think what about are you doing? flying real hard. Remember, he said in the video, you have to believe in yourself. A soldier believes in himself. <laughs> That's why, yeah, it all makes sense, really. Superman never saves anyone. He saves one. Oh, two I'm not. He look, saves look. a couple people. Yeah, I'm more than happy to concede. <laughs> and that uh, dude, I'm happy to concede he way. saves Earth. I don't even mind conceding that. My problem is that he he does it in an incredibly heartless yeah. and incompetent so, way. Yeah. No He's sense still... of remorse. I don't know what version of the film you saw, but in the one I saw, he saved a bunch one. of guys on an yeah. exploding oil platform, yeah, yeah, a bus yeah, full fine, of children, yep. a jet pilot, an army guy falling out of a helicopter. No, no he should be dead. Wait, wait, wait. That's wait, wait. Wait, wait. He also don't didn't... don't cite these people. They die straight away. He also didn't yeah, he save... saves a dozen people. Never mind the hundreds of thousands in Metropolis. Just don't fucking talk about them. He, he didn't. He saved the second jet guy. He didn't save the first jet. I pour that out of the fucking. And street. the second jet guy gets shot down five minutes. later later anyway this yeah what was superman doing this whole time and let's now screen. let's now list yeah. all the people who died thanks to man <laughs> superman's we incompetence we can't no we can't there's too many yeah we can't there's we'll never know many. their names an army guy in a one-sided knife fight lois getting attacked by a robot lois falling to the earth in a broken escape yeah, yeah, lois, lois, a lot. yeah lois gets saved yeah. constantly lois <laughs> gets saved a lot yeah <laughs> It's almost like they're in love. And a bunch of dumb people who don't get out of the way of Zod's heat vision, and also the entire planet. You're a fucking what thick idiot. Jesus Christ. <laughs> <laughs> like I said, man. Oh, to yes! Why doesn't Superman try to take his battles oh, away from the oh, 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 How is he gonna do this? <laughs> how is he gonna... Oh. Look, it's harder, right? <laughs> Like, oh, they go into hard. space. One, one thing they I'll go say, into yeah. space and they come back down to Metropolis. To Metropolis. One thing I'll say, I like the format of this video. It's very fun because of how bad it's done, but also the way that it's presented. It's like, we get our breather here to be like, let's talk about this criticism and let's, what is he going to do to say about it? It's like, oh God, here we go. Like, it's one more time. <laughs> <laughs> oh. God dang. To take his battles away from highly populated areas. He is putting people in danger for no reason. No. In a Smallville fight, you can actually see him trying several times to fly his enemies up and away from the- Fuck he off. He punches him in a train! No, fuck he off. Flies him through grave <laughs> that silos! Is not his, that's not what he was trying to do. Why fuck are off. they here in Smallville in the first place? What? Yeah. <laughs> oh, he led them here. did they get here? You left if he out wants them to leave, why doesn't perfect. he fuck off? And it run would have been better to fight him at Martha's house. <laughs> yeah. Yes, 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 100%. Mm -hmm.
I mean, hey, and don't even make the argument that he's a... trying to get Zod away from Martha. He leaves two of the other soldiers with it. <laughs> Mar- Martha's Martha's house already has a truck in it, so I think <laughs> it's too it's late like... for a house. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> <laughs> the house had its chance. <sighs> <sighs> Fuck me, I. This is insane. <laughs> I love the idea that he's like, he ma- he makes efforts to do such. Do you remember when um, Zod throws the tanker at him and he dodges it instead of stopping it and it blows up a building behind him? <laughs> yeah, I remember. remember sure hope no one was in that building. You can, remember, I can see him being like, no, he tried. He just, he, he couldn't, okay? He tried. Remember when, when Superman throws the big one into a fucking train yard? And it just <laughs> yeah. And it explodes. <laughs> doesn't, doesn't Superman throw uh, Doomsday at BVS at like he throws him at this like series of tankers and they all blow up and this it fills the screen with flames? Yeah, yeah. Yep. God, and it doesn't even do shit because Doomsday that just powers him up. Yeah, and Superman this, fucking knows that already. This is this is after they've already attempted to nuke Doomsday and it hasn't killed him. So why the fuck does Superman think more, that a smaller power. explosion is gonna yeah. do anything? <laughs> the town and they pull him right back down the one time he does succeed in flying one of them upward he has a oh no he has a split second of punch in the one place he should punch him just anywhere randomly just anywhere randomly and the chances are they'll land Oh my goodness. <laughs> this is Kansas. Just chuck them anywhere. They'll fly land in the middle of a field. <laughs> I just like that someone goes, Hey, Superman, up above. And he's like, What? It's like, Space. Try, try space. This is like try a lot space. of space. Yeah. yeah, just carry him up into space. Oh my Fucking God. Fucking idiot. I'm trying several times to fly his enemies up and away from the town. And then now, they pull him right back. I need to, I need to pause here. Wait, hold on. A couple more seconds. Okay. The time he does succeed in flying one uh, of them. Oh, upward. yeah, th- this scene. Like, I- I'm pretty sure I mentioned it in the recording, but how retarded are these soldiers to be standing on two sides of the same street firing at each other's position? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, they're firing at each other. Yeah. They're... I just want to highlight, by the way, if Superman. They weren't gets... bred to be soldiers, that's the problem. No. no. If Superman gets Shame. this guy into space, he's fucked. Because he can't yeah. fly. He's just like, dead. Yeah, he's... you just chuck him and he's gone. Gone he forever. Is... Like, like Doomsday. With... Yep. Like with this frame here, with this frame here, he's like, oh, he's finally going to be like sending him up into space, right? And then you play yeah, it. A split second where he's going to put the guy. The closest open no! area. No! <laughs> he chooses to hit him at the train. It's almost okay. like, a, like a calculated Look. maneuver to say, fuck Union Pacific. Twin perfect, right? I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to assume that you're a smart lad. You've got a good old. Don't assume that. You've got a cranium <laughs> that's fully functional. You decide where he's going to okay? put the guy. So, can you see all that green over you, there? Can you see, yeah. Well, first of all, above. Right? Lots of yep. stuff up there. Great. There's a little place called Space as well. Fantastic. We've been over that. Then, everywhere on the it's horizon like... that isn't something that explodes near civilians. How about you that? Look at all big that. Big-ass field right there. Beautiful. Look at all that green. Just open area is pretty far away, and there's still this other chick fighting the military behind him. Yeah, that does not... Pro- so, it doesn't take <sighs> any extra time to punch him in a different direction. Or super No, he only had a split second, all right? Supersonic fly him out, out into space. It's not going to be that long. Yeah. yeah. And then you only have to do that once per he's, Kryptonian. He's gone forever if when you do that. It's over. The fight is over Superman quick. Can go. Yeah, he could just fly up really high. How do the Kryptonians even survive his punches? I don't, I don't know how. Well, the, the excuse people give is they're soldiers, probably. which doesn't make any fucking sense. Oh. That doesn't... Because I know if you shoot doesn't... a soldier, they're fine. Why? They don't die. The bullet well, I, just sort dude, of. Dude, I don't get why they have super speed and super strength. I don't get why they feel, have yeah, those. Yeah, yeah that's what I'm saying. I don't feel, understand why they have I powers. I feel like if, if Superman's going to punch this guy into like a bunch of trains to cause an explosion, why not just, I don't know, rip his arm off? Why not try that? He's too strong. Yeah. He's a soldier. I'm, ac- I'm actually, I am now actually arguing why Use does your laser Superman eyes. <laughs> why does mutilate he just tear him? him apart piece by like, piece? You're throwing him into well, tell a you fucking what, train to try to kill, like, kill him with an explosion, right? Something like, Superman what, knows at this point is that if you fuck with their masks, and all he did to do that to Zod was punch it a couple times, then they are basically immobilized. 
and then but none of these him. guys get mask damage from well, all the does, shit that happens to them. She does briefly at the end of this fight, I think, nearly. Then, then yeah, ends. and then before Superman can just kill her, he gets that stupid thing thrown at him, and <laughs> then the other pilots he saved get blown up. So yeah. good job, Superman. Zod's goon everyone in this scene, not just Superman, and he has to stick around to make sure they don't hurt anybody. In the case of the Metropolis, Zod has two goals. Get revenge on Cal by beating him up, Get get revenge on beating him up, cow by beating him up. Oh, on clock, it's like that's like it. an actual ten year old genuinely speaking to me. I'm actually gonna make like what I think is the this is this is contingent on Zod being this character, like this stupid thing that people call him. That he, he you know like he like wants to die in this scene, and I think that that's actually possibly what Zack Snyder was going for because um. I was thinking about the whole, like... left to live for. Yeah. Like, you know, he, he could have lasered those people. He was just waiting for Clark to break his neck. He, he even says, like, stop, and then he goes, never. He's waiting for him to kill yeah. him. Yeah. Which is fine. Like, like we, we've talked extensively about how poorly characterized Zod is. The idea that he's doing this to get revenge on... on Cal, as far as I can tell, he's telling him... It's a him bonus. Him, yeah, like, he's like, I'm gonna kill everyone you love. He's saying that because he's like, just kill me at this point, I guess, because I got nothing. Yeah. Which is stupid, by the way. Soldiers, they can they can do other things. They have, like, families <laughs> and lives and hobbies and stuff. Well, like, 99.999% of a soldier's life is not is in combat. sitting around, yeah. Not, yeah. yeah, not having anything to do. But Zod is such a cartoon that he's just like, I'm going to kill everyone you love because you yeah. stole my soul. You, you took, I can't believe that the line was you've taken my soul from me. That's just Yeah. And and then Clark is like, I have to stop you, you monster. Yeah. And let's see what his justification is for why he didn't lead the fight out of this fucking place. And get revenge on Zod might be focused on Superman during the fight, but his ultimate goal is to but take Superman's from Cal. Superman's dead, Cal then it's not revenge. Because Superman's dead. He's not gonna know. He could have killed Superman and just, like, live there or so something. Is he like, arguing, that doesn't make any sense. Is he arguing that this they're in this area because Zod wants to get revenge on Clark and start killing humans? Because he doesn't really do much of that in the fight, honestly. Yeah, he's yeah, just, like, he's really, if, he just if punches... If Zod was really gonna do that, why wouldn't the fight be more that Zod is trying to kill as many people as possible and yeah. Superman has to get them out of yeah, the like way? Yeah, he'd be flying oh, around That's lasering. clearly not yeah. Zod's goal here. It's clearly not his he goal. He wants to punch Superman. Clark yeah. and then suicide by cop, essentially. Yeah. Him suffer. These humans you've adopted, I will take them all from you uh. one by one. <laughs> Except he doesn't really do that. No, he, no like he I said, I think he's just goading Superman here. And that means Superman should probably stay close by to protect the people of Metro No! 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 <laughs> no! <laughs> oh my god, you're a fucking like, dipshit. Dude, that Dave. is insane. Could you imagine, like, saying, we need to keep the, the enemy combatants in this city with the civilians. So that we can <laughs> protect the civilians. Safe. Like, what? <laughs> How about you move this the constantly like, crashing oh, through buildings? Are, are, yeah. are you telling me that Superman is basically Stalin? Yeah, keep the civilians in the city. That'll help. <laughs> like, Fucking in this idiot. battle. <laughs> God. If tries to take the battle away from the city, Zod is just going to bring it back. That's not a... Oh my God. Oh. There's no point in trying it because Zod will come back. <laughs> what? <laughs> so keep trying. The whole criticism is why trying. doesn't he Try. Try. There's yeah, the no... attempt isn't made. What is wrong with you? Why would you make these For... defenses? I think this, my favorite part logic. about this fight is that Superman <laughs> leads the fight to places in the city that were totally safe, this... where people could assume that they were okay, only to have these two dickheads crashing <laughs> into the buildings they're hiding in. Yeah, why don't you stay at ground zero there where there's nobody left alive? Yeah, yeah go for the graveyard. The graveyard is away. safe. <laughs> no, no, guys. Yeah. Lois, Lois is at ground zero, okay? He, they can't have the fight yeah. at ground zero. Lois is what there. Do you mean? She sure, she has Wade's tower, I, though. Dude, she has a plot armor. She'll be yeah. fine. I, I just love the fact that this logic leads us to superheroes shouldn't even bother to save people because the villains are going to try to kill them anyways. Amazing. <laughs> As he does, Superman takes the fight into the sky, only to have it brought right back down into the city by Zod. The final sequence... Also, I guess it's most... just give up, I guess. Yeah, no, the, he's literally said, Zod will want to kill the people, so trying to get him out there will only bring him back. That's the argument. Good job, buddy. Into the yeah. city. 
buys Zod. So then, the final fight him outside of the city as much as possible. Then, yeah, the goal should and be if Zod get comes Zod back, then away from the city. Away. It's like, but Zod wants to get into the city. You're like, precisely why I am trying to get him out of the city. Very simple. The of the film is the most criticized, with people blaming Superman for allowing Metropolis to be destroyed. Yes. Yes. Well, yeah, this is tying into the thing we were just it's talking a about. Huge, yeah, it's a huge part of it is absolutely 100% going to be on Superman mm -hmm. for yeah, not for just getting him out of the fucking city. And even for purposefully killing thousands of people. Kind of. Well, per Through his like, incredible negligence, absolutely. Yeah, like yeah. this yeah. level of negligence is, is intense. The place this negligence is when he destroys Zod's ship, that crashes through like a good six or seven skyscrapers. When he didn't even try to say Zod land it peacefully, we could talk. Yeah. I mean, I mean, you could just go through the list. So right at the beginning of the battle, he does that. So that's a good probably few thousand people dead just by Superman's hand alone. All of the shock waves from these crazy <laughs> fights. Like that's a lot of death that's probably on Superman's hands, not stopping that tanker that blows up. I'm sure there are a few people hiding in that uh, parking area that got incinerated. And then all the times that Superman punches Zod into these buildings. Yeah, you could have like, punched him into, like, the air or just anywhere else. Remember, like, not Superman buildings. is the one who, um, so Zod managed to, in all of space, I guess, just find... Space is quite empty. It's pretty lucky that he'd land <laughs> on, a, uh, on a satellite. But then he brings that satellite down on Superman. Yep. It's like, okay, so the debris is Superman's fault. But Superman, I'm pretty sure Superman, like, pins Zod down while he flies him back into Earth. You could have flown him elsewhere. Earth yeah, is fucking... they leave the planet Dude. and they miraculously, he lands on a, um, Having him a in satellite space is a godsend it's like oh my god we're in space okay now i can just move you away and away and away like this is we this just fight here in space that's that's a horror yeah. take him to, to the moon back. yeah just keep going yeah <sighs> like you just fly back whenever you want it's fine space doesn't mean anything to you they come right back down so close to lois that she can get there in about 30 seconds yeah <laughs> okay, toss toss Zod into the sun. <laughs> yeah. Like you, surely you must have been trying to land back in Metropolis after you were in space. Yeah. People. Stupid BuzzFeed infographic estimating. <laughs> that's that's not about right. That yeah, sounds that sounds about right. <laughs> yeah, that <laughs> sounds pretty knew. fucking accurate. Absolutely. I, you know why did he describe this as stupid? Yep. Why? I'm I'm sorry. I don't say this uh every day i i don't i actually have never said this before but <laughs> I know the opportunity coming. has arisen good job buzzfeed yeah, <laughs> yeah. Let, let me say something i've never said before let leave buzzfeed alone leave buzzfeed alone they did a good job yeah remember <laughs> three thousand people died in 9 11 and that was after a lot of opportunity or at least relatively a lot of opportunity to like evacuate and get yeah. out of there yeah, not 50 fucking buildings yeah, yeah it was, not yeah, it was two buildings, yeah. two towers. Well, I mean, there was also a a plane went into the Pentagon, I think, and then there was yeah, yeah, oh, yeah, yeah. and of course, like there was debris and stuff. That I, I guess mm -hmm. it's the whole idea that if nine eleven killed three thousand people and that was two skyscrapers, imagine how much worse it would be when it's like fifty and there's no time to get out. Yeah, it oh, happens yeah. instantly. Not to mention all the people on the ground. And all because the other the, stuff. The, the last what? effects with like the debris, the glass, the, the yeah, smoke going into people's lungs. Dust. Yep. And yep. remember, part of the reason why so many people died in North Tower was because they couldn't get out. They were trapped. So imagine how many people were just instantly killed when that ship made the buildings all fall over. They don't even have a chance to escape. By the way, Bruce They're... Wayne's t totally getting lung cancer in the DCEU. Yep. Yeah, he, he had a bat, he has bat lungs. Yeah is conservative maybe that might even be conservative considering how much damage is done mm -hmm. but I, i'm really curious why is he calling this stupid I, i'm i'm super I'm curious can't, i can't wait there's even a stupid buzzfeed infographic estimating making fun of my movie in damages as a result of the fight superman has with zod someone yeah. should inform the people making these criticisms that 99 percent of the destruction was caused by the black zero that he could have stopped but he took ages he discussing <laughs> starting a fucking black that he hole because he's punched. a moron so not 99 percent because about eight buildings were destroyed by superman's negligence i also directly. i also put this stupid fucking laser under the list of things superman could have stopped but didn't in time he could have stopped this way faster yep this is on him as well. I'm sorry. 
again, watch Civil War. <laughs> it's yeah. really good. <laughs> While well, he's on the literal other opposite side of the planet. No. Oh. By his choice. But remember oh. that when you destroy the thing, that the machine stops working. You know. So he could have destroyed the machine a lot quicker. By choosing to not stop the one in Metropolis, he is responsible for its yeah. damage. Picture... He went to the one to stop the one in the Indian Ocean. Picture... Fuck that one. Yeah. Well, yeah. Like, let, let's just yeah. go theoretically for the second. Like, pretend one hundred percent that it's exactly the because that's how it works, right? It's it's on the two points of it, it goes right through. So you yeah. got um the Metropolis people with with the 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 black hole setup. Let's just be generous to this guy and say they're twenty miles out or something. I don't know exactly how close they are, but it's probably something like that. Um, and Superman standing there with them. They are formulating the plan of. You guys set up the black hole thing and move all the way over to there and explode it while I blow up the other one. It's like, oh, Superman, how are you going to do that? And he's like, oh, I'm just going to like punch through it. It's like, oh, one thing before you go and punch the Indian Ocean one, can you go punch the Metropolis one first? <laughs> yeah, because that one's in Metropolis. It's like really close by. It's actually like super fucking close by. Like, yeah, we can fly it. there and be there in no time. Yeah, at all. so you can definitely get there quick. And I Ooh, love that this guy has opted to choose, like, well, S Superman chose to go to a different one, so it's not his fault. <laughs> it's like, yeah. wow. He chose, he chose to chose... not save those people, so those people dying isn't his fault. <laughs> you see, the Indian Ocean, you know, if he hadn't gone to that one to destroy it, a lot of fish, his lives may have been lost. You know, that's that's tragic, so... Hey, and... have you guys ever heard of the phrase, with great power comes great responsibility? Nope. So that applies to oh. Spider-Man. Superman has even greater power. Is the and greatest he is power misusing it. Often yeah. well, that we, that means powerful. we need to make great excuses for him. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> great power comes great excuses. With great this destruction is, comes great The great second with, with great misuse of great power comes great excuses. The second those, those wheel jet engines started to get into position, it should have been like, oh shit, like we're in trouble. And the second he escapes the um the prison cell, it should have been zoom, explode, zoom, explode, done. Um, remember, there was no giant tentacle that came out of the Metropolis one. Yeah. No, for some reason. Convenient. Hmm. That was the weird pulsy gravity one. If it had, it yeah. might have been able to stop their ship, by the way, because if, if the maximum length tentacle, it just pushes their ship down. You know? They can't connect the drives. They fucked. Hmm. This movie's really bad. It is very and bad. Superman shows up to fight Zod. What the fuck? The insane battle destruction that the final Man of Steel battle would do, but... Yeah, but... That's not even incorrect. It's all the battle. This the third act. Yeah. yeah, it is all the battle. Just because one side doesn't start to fight back yet, doesn't mean that the first shots aren't part of the battle. It's totally... All of it is the battle. And it battle. wasn't long before. And all of it is on fucking Superman, because he's been... Yeah, because he decides movie. to go to the Indian Ocean one, instead of the one in the insanely densely populated city. I've never felt so happy to see BuzzFeed annoy someone. <laughs> I'm just glad it's not me for once. Yeah, I know, right? Yeah, I know I'm some people are like, oh my god, they're so much destructive, but our point was like, but there would be. Yeah. With yeah. like, it's, we don't, we weren't trying to tell a story that it's not in a magical oh, world where like <laughs> all these buildings collapse and like somebody wouldn't be hurt. Mm -hmm. It's like we were trying to say, well, what if this really happened? But you made it his fault. You, you made it you Superman's also, fault, you dipshit. They also didn't account for this until BVS. They didn't know. BVS was a response. They were like, oh, fuck. Because mm -hmm. again, I think we gave the context when we were covering BVS, but I was like, Man of Steel came out, and everyone was like, what the fuck? This movie like barely even acknowledges all the people that have been horribly murdered and destroyed and everything. Like, we Hello? The greatest tragedy and then, in human history. Yeah, and the yeah, opening and of BVS is like, like, oh, guys, no, 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 no. We know. We know. <laughs> like, look at this yeah. scene. Look at how sad everyone is. Look, Batman's angry about it. See, we know. Well, they're kissing. Like, I mean, it was... Uh... Oh, I, I get. Hmm, okay. But like and I said, we're gonna talk about. If they really wanted to address it, they would actually have Batman like mention that. They would have anyone mention that. I don't think that anyone in BVS actually mentions the fact that like Clark Kent's kind of a piece of shit. Well, yeah. Superman's kind of a piece of shit for like well, not guiding Zod away. That's not ever they, addressed. They almost play with it when they have the lady say, "How do you choose which lives you save and which lives you don't?" Almost. Because the context of her saying that is that the evil terrorist people that he stops, they blew up some other village and they say that Superman didn't save them, right? Which was a lie. And then she says that she's going to tell the full truth later, no, if you remember. Well, I thought that they, they, they framed him for killing that village. That's what I just said. Oh, sorry. So um, the <laughs> I, problem I there is that she's almost 
almost there, but it turns out that that's being said falsely. And it's like, no, 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 but it's true. With Metropolis, no. Oh, movie. You almost had your point. And yeah, Batman doesn't have that conversation with him, which would have been great, by the way. It's, this is what I mean. Writing the sequel to Man of Steel with an angry Batman who wants to fucking stop the monster that is Man of uh, Superman, it's not even that hard with what they give you in Man of Steel. <laughs> You're like, well, I can think of plenty of reasons he'd be pissed. Batman would be like really like you he would have such an understandable motivation. He would like absolutely be the protagonist of it. Then they make Batman the villain. Yeah. Come on. Mm. Like cuz it's like you're trying to follow things through to its sort yeah. of logical like it doesn't happen. There is the n don't even <laughs> say that word. <laughs> so yeah, to clarify, the point Goyer is making there is that when it comes to like major battles with big figures like yeah, people are going to get hurt. It's like so our question wasn't why are people getting hurt in this cataclysmic battle? Is why is Superman making the battle happen in the most densely populated area within like possibility? Why? And it's it's like, really well, weird. People get, hurt. people get hurt. That's why people get hurt. As we just taking the fight away from Metropolis was not an option. It what? clearly was, though. <laughs> they it literally really do. They was. go to space. <laughs> what do you mean? They can go to space, but they can't go. Anywhere else, Look at I all guess. This destruction. It's horrifying, honestly. <laughs> Let's look at how Superman handled it from that point and figure out exactly how much he is responsible for destroying. Almost all of it. Basically, yeah. all of it, yeah. He could have stopped because so him much. choosing to go to the Indian Ocean instead of Metropolis is a is a huge fuck up. Yeah. That's that's what we call there an opportunity cost. Incidents of damage caused by Superman. When he destroys the scout ship, he accidentally at... takes out three buildings that- Oh my god, I... look at oh that! My this god. Is... Whoa, whoa, whoa. Holy are we, shit! Are, are we about to I'm... introduce the concept of manslaughter to this person? Because <laughs> they not know what he it is. didn't mean to kill him, so they are not dead anymore. <laughs> Superman's the one that caused the ship to crash. Oh Even Zod, I, you know what would have been really funny is if Zod said, please, Clark, stop, you're gonna kill the humans. <laughs> <laughs> if you kill them, then I can't kill them. Fucking hell. Clark, have mercy. <laughs> Zod realizes save that the only me. way to make Superman upset is to save the humans, so the roles <laughs> instantly reverse. <laughs> oh, yeah, that would be a really great, like, comedic drop. It's, it's, he lasers the ship, all the little Kryptonian babies are burned alive. They crash through all these buildings, all these people screaming. It lands, they both get out, and Zod just goes, The fuck is wrong with you? <laughs> Jesus Christ, like, fuck. Did you see what you just did? <laughs> like, looks behind, there's just this row of a million towers they've crashed through. <laughs> and like, I'm a fucking psychopath, but Jesus, you're something else. Directly next to Ground Zero and are already burned out husks. So Oh. Those, no, they're not. Well, no, they're not. Yeah. No, we know pests. this isn't true. We know Those this isn't true because Wayne Tower had people in it. Yeah. And that yeah. was near Ground Zero. That okay. is not true, buddy. He's actually saying that it's okay. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. empty. It's the people I who was... defend this movie are actually insane. Yeah, like, your morality is fucked, my dude. Um, let me, let me also point to all of the buildings that aren't burnt down, that aren't with yeah. nobody in it. It's like, this. what are you talking about? You, yeah. what is wrong with you? Just because a building has been destroyed, like half of it, by the way, that doesn't mean nobody's in it. It's yeah, still standing. Once you knock it down, it is now totally destroyed, for sure, with all of yeah, the Yeah, and everything around it. it is fucked up, too. And everything around it. What it's about all the take... buildings that were nearby? How about, like, the fact that it's just gonna take forever to clean all this shit up, too? Absolutely. Yeah. There's so much wrong with this. I can't even <laughs> begin. You know what, I'm actually kind of sad nuts. this wasn't live at this point. It would have been funny to see chat react. Well, you know what, we'll premiere it. <laughs> we will premiere this Bad event. movies reveal how little people understand about <laughs> basic ethics. <laughs> wait, wait. <laughs> Or is this going to be premiered or just uploaded? Oh, I, I want to premiere it now, just to because yeah, some of this now is premiere, <laughs> it, premiere it. This, this is the moment is... that Mahler decided to premiere this EFAP. <laughs> well, we I premiered yeah. the the Tasm two one. I can't remember how many EFAPs have been premiered, but yeah, we'll premiere oh, this one. Right. Why not? Okay. So it's safe to say those. Then we've That's got safe Dots to Ball. say that nobody. Dude, can I wait? Three wait, 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 wait. damage. He just has three. I want to I want to <laughs> really <laughs> highlight yeah. the, the rhetoric here. Calling an entire <laughs> building getting leveled an incident of damage. That <laughs> still only counts as one. <laughs> Well, you know, that's really just an incident of damage. Totally. This is this is honestly bad faith. <laughs> <laughs> this 
This is, wow. These people are psychos who, oh, to defend that. a super. I love movie. this movie so much that you think a building collapsing is an incident of Superman incident causing a little bit of damage. I'm so fucking ready to be done with Man of Steel. It's such a terrible, <laughs> exhausting waste this movie of life. Sucks. When you said we oh. have to watch the DCEU, did you imagine we no. have to face shit like this? <laughs> Do you remember, I, I, I had hope that Man of Steel was going to be the best one. Yeah. It's fucking chalk it up to be, it's, it's competition with Wonder Woman 84 at this point. It's just, oh. it doesn't work, so nothing much. works, it's all Wait, horrible. Do you, do you think that's going to be worse than Suicide Squad though? Yes. Yes. Yeah. The, it cannot be understated how bad Man of Steel is. Like, <laughs> we we keep stating it, but it. <laughs> Man of Steel is so shit. bad. It's so bad. Characters, Z plot, world building. Zod does this. Zod theme. does this. Definitely see. Yeah, all four yep. pillars are fucking destroyed. All <laughs> the pillars are instant damage. Zod uses his laser vision. You see, you see what Superman's doing to this building right now. That's what we've done to the four <laughs> pillars of Man of Steel's story. Gosh. <laughs> Why is Zod, Zod still in the city? Then Zod kicks the tanker and Superman could catch it, but he dodges, blowing up a parking garage. <laughs> and by the way, right after- I like how smug he is when he does it. A little yeah. jump, he's like, yeah, that didn't fucking hit me. He's like, there, there was a building behind you, my <laughs> dad. You can see him turning around Come and on. looking at it like, whoops, that was probably a mistake. But it's just a parking garage, it's gotta be- <laughs> Oh my god. It's just a parking, parking garage. garage. How do you think the cars <laughs> get into the parking garage? Hey, hey, <laughs> There's little humans so, inside. <laughs> you see, think you of see all that... the people who wanted to use their cars to flee the city. You see that that, that little yellow car that's plummeting to the ground? <laughs> we don't <laughs> know if there was a map person in there we there's that means that there were other cars in there there could be just a couple of people in there just one person being in there that's one person that superman just let die it's an insane level of damage that he's just like well i'm sure yeah, nobody was there it's fine. coming down oh pretty fire <laughs> that's, yeah. that's just yeah. he just turns around to look at it <laughs> all right what brings a person to this <laughs> Like, ooh, the, the ooh, who did this. Range. Then the front of this building is both of them, as well yeah, as the there construction are, site. Hey, that's hey, cool. stop skipping over that. There's people in that building. You know, like, oh yeah, and then this building. Bring, yeah, and then bring, this building. And oh, look, all the people on the ground. Bring, it's an incident of damage, okay? Yeah, he got but, a little- he like, got That little debris's things. gonna fall somewhere. That debris ain't just fucking floating into the sky. It's gonna fall <laughs> down where people were. <laughs> Yeah, they're not we going into the sky like away. Superman could have taken Put Zod, him. Yeah, yeah, like Superman could have taken him. Oh when Zod God. used his laser vision, you think that would have reminded Superman that he has laser vision and no. he could aim it at Zod and just, like, kill him? No. Zod does this. Then Zod punches him through this window. Superman revenge Superman. drags Zod along this oh. line of windows. Oh, oh that's <laughs> one incident. One incident of death. Zod <laughs> does this, 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 and all of this. But Superman did that. He Zod could Superman could have like flown away and Zod yeah. would have, because Zod is constantly pursuing Superman. So if Superman just flew really, really high up or just away from the city, I Zod would have least, followed him. I could at least go back to the things they already fucked up. Just fight there. Yeah, go back to the graveyard. Kill them. The funny thing is that in Avengers Age of Ultron, the the really bad one, when they're fighting in uh in the city against Hulk, like Iron Man makes a very concerted effort to both get Hulk out of the city that and scene... save people who are in imminent danger. That and even good. that was a massive incident. Like, that was a huge problem for they them. They had to go Remember, into hiding. The, 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 um, yeah. He's like, check the building. Are there people in it? How much can I, can I buy it right now? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> Just so like, can buy it so I can throw it. Yeah. It's, it's a fun scene. And of course, the um the part of the, with the elevator, Iron Man is actively yeah. saving civilians while battling Hulk. It's... Yep. It's, it's really good. Yeah, and and this just God Superman's damn. way more powerful than Iron Man. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and then Superman breaks a window and a balcony. If you think a couple what empty buildings are fucking garage, why, why would you assume those oh buildings are God. empty? Are you fucking yes. mad? Dude, dude, he's, <laughs> I, I can't. he's about to say if you <laughs> if you think these things are, I was like, don't finish that sentence, buddy. Just to, even if we just go by this, holy shit. Yeah. And this is being incredibly generous to Superman in terms this of this is being shockingly generous when all we're not of this counting, is his fault. Yeah, we're not counting everything else that is his fault. It's 
Yeah, because obviously we Nine think incidents. what he's done is not only conservative, like I blame Superman for a lot more than what he's shown. Um, <laughs> but like the incidents themselves are incredibly huge. And he's just like, yeah. mm, well... Mm. Nine incidents. Well, it wasn't as bad as... Yeah, things, empty, so. empty buildings. Mm. Amazing how far they'll go. Because obviously, by the way, like I don't know if you guys have checked out the comment section in this video. Uh, have you? No, I haven't. I don't want to. Yeah, it's it's what it's you expect. It's depressing, I bet. <laughs> yeah. If you think this movie's good, you you just you failed. I I thought this movie was brilliant. Start of something amazing. Oh no, not the line. construction site, a line of windows, <laughs> and a balcony is some unforgivable amount of destruction on Superman's part. That's because you just decided to arbitrarily not count I, all of the I skyscrapers just, that fell down. How about you <laughs> look at this wasteland? Okay, <laughs> you are no, no. seriously understating the amount of damage when you have the wasteland right here. This post-apocalyptic, literally post-apocalyptic wasteland so, on screen. I'm gonna, I'm gonna I'm gonna pretend for a second to be a diehard Snyder writer <laughs> and say, nah, this video is not even that good. He's over exaggerating the damage. Really, Superman kind of well, he just he destroyed a bit of concrete. Yeah, okay, a, a bit of glass. <laughs> a balcony, yeah. Okay, that's what that's what I'm gonna say. Like like he's over exaggerating. Well, that's what. We're, and then some other guys like, no, you're over exaggerating. He destroyed a bit of stuff. Oh no. Oh no, a bit of stuff. Why are you over exaggerating it so much? What the fuck? You're desperate, and it's showing. Mm, property damage. Ooh. Man does another me. He's destroyed stuff. Oh and my other things. god! <laughs> what about us? So it's bad when it happens in other things too. It yeah, doesn't matter. It's, it's not a plus. Oh, so that seemed. To, oh. <laughs> That's a uh, hospital. Oh, <laughs> also, what? why? Why is he fighting Shazam here? Yeah, the, 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 you have the same question. Oh my god! Like, is, it, so maybe there's oh context. Oh my god! Control, Jesus like, what's... Christ! Yeah, oh, the lights man. are even still on. <laughs> Fuck! <laughs> maybe, it, I will say, perhaps there is context that we don't know for this. Who knows? Dude, maybe. it is it is really impressive uh, electricity there in that building that's like it's staying powered on as it's being still on yeah, yeah. As <laughs> so basically superman gets his cape handed to him for 20 minutes while zod blows up half of what's left of the city and superman is dealing with it the best he can what yet yeah, why no. is does he, why do you say what's left of the city why why is it why would you have possibly said the words what's left of the city because to Superman went the to the Indian Ocean. Yeah. yeah. And. Uh. Hand. But in no way is he responsible for the destruction of. Yes, he is. He is. He's Metropolis absolutely responsible. Of... With great power comes great responsibility. He's fucking Dude, Superman. What a fucking enormous metropolis. Yes. Like, yeah, huge city. If he actually <laughs> destroyed. Oh, whatever. The people. At any rate, you're gonna have to chalk it up to inexperience because this is so. Oh, how, how experienced do you? I don't have any experience, and I'm saying this. I like how do you explain just that. Try to smash the pause button at the same time. Multiple I find times. it fascinating that he's arguing you need to have experience before you'll value human life. <sighs> Fuck you. <laughs> That's a terrible how do you, character. Like, how does he explain the like the five of us? I'm I don't have any experience in this field and yet I have somehow arrived at the conclusion that maybe we should try and get Zod away from the city. We should destroy the threats around populated areas instead of the empty ocean. Mm -hmm. Like how do you explain that? I would I would love to hear what his explanation is. So like if there's like an active shooter and you um you have your own gun and you just spray and pray and you end up hitting even more people than the active shooter was hitting. But you eventually tag the active shooter and you you kill him. Um, you're still going to be held accountable for all the people that you killed on accident. Just saying. This would be like if you just close your eyes and put a hand over your head and just blindly shoot. Yeah. And it's like, well, he's inexperienced. Like exactly. Look, yeah, it's, it's, it's really fault. hard. Well, I, I I I haven't shot a gun before. Again, to go back to the orphan example, Iron Man lasers the mall and just like I, I don't. He's he's angry. Inexperienced. It's like you're not accounting for the thing. You're saying other things. It's not. He's an adult. So annoying. In that instance, this was a Superman who had only been Superman for like a week. He wasn't Superman as we think of him. That's not addressing so he... the problem. 
But you don't have to have training for this. When Superman chooses to throw someone in one place out of several, and it's the place that's populated, that is a problem. That is not a lack of experience. Stop saying it is. It sounds like just a slithery yeah. excuse to get out of making Superman just, a fucking crazy person. Apparently, common sense only comes with experience. Okay. I mean, yeah, the DC yeah. Or the Neil Adam or the Chris right, Swan right. or something like that. Or even in a world that conceived of Superman existing, he'd only flown for the first time a few days before right. that. That's not an excuse for any of this. He never fought any- Also, don't even start with me. Zod flew five seconds before the battle happened. Yeah, look at how good he was. This is, don't even start. Anyone that had superpowers before. And so he's A, going up against a guy who not only is superpowered, but who has been training since birth to use those superpowers. No. No, no he's he not been training to use the superpowers. He's just, he yeah. got them five minutes ago. The, the Kryptonians mm. don't go to Earth. That is not a part of the things that they do. They don't remember Zod is like, oh my god, the fucking powers, what is happening to me? He also it's the whole fucking motivation to not um stop the terraforming. He wants to terraform because of the pain of experiencing Earth's schisms <laughs> to get the powers. Like do you remember your own movie? Apparently not. Powers exists as a superhuman killing machine who has stated i will never stop until i destroy all of humanity this is not a character he's a joke no and this leads us to the most controversial scene in comic book movie history if if he's about to throw up the criticism superman shouldn't kill this is gonna be funny for us because we'll just watch this. yeah because he's <laughs> clearly he's clearly all right with it he's killed he's not, he's, so many people yeah definitely not all that bothered in fact, he showed the most grief. It is, yeah. He showed oh, the most is. grief over oh. Zod. He didn't care about all the humans. <laughs> Superman shouldn't kill Zod. Superman does not kill people. It's been covered I over and over really elsewhere on this. the internet that Superman has killed people in the past. But for some reason, people act like it's no big deal for Superman to kill Zod in this film. I'm fine with him killing no Zod in that deal. scene. People yeah, I'm fine like with him is killing a big Zod. Deal. What are you talking about? Your sentence is fucked. Yeah, what you mean to I, say is that they think it is a big deal. Oh, right, yeah. I, sorry, I was already jumping ahead to, I don't yeah. think it's a big deal that he kills Zod in this scene. I feel like it was the smart thing to do. No. The, yeah. only th the only thing to do. He took his fucking time, though. Yeah, it's weird that it took this long. Like he won. Don't do this! Okay, do it. Well. <laughs> On the contrary, Superman has no choice but to kill Zod. If he doesn't, Zod's gonna kill him right there. He Afterward, he cries out with remorse eyes. for not only having to kill, but having to kill the only- He's killed so many people at this point, I don't even fucking care, whatever. I'm pretty numb to him killing people, it's fine. ...only other surviving member of his race. The welling up- He killed all the fucking babies! Shut up! <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and the scream of emotion was just haunting, and the entire crew was kind of in awe and frozen when we were shooting this. I don't really get it. <laughs> Clark, the one person out of the million you've killed in this film, that was the one that really needed here's, it. <laughs> here's the sad thing, is I actually think that's well performed, but the context for it is garbage. I have so no I problem with Henry at all. In, I can't in, in appreciate Henry Cavill's performance in this scene. Like, yeah, that's a, that's a really good scream. You place that scream in in a story that fucking earns it that's a powerful moment yeah but i can't that that's why writing's important this kind of thing it's it's the skeleton of the story is this or, or your movie rather ah! on superman he's not it is deeply difficult decision for him to make you know he's not a thing that he takes lightly and you can see it, it affects him General Zod had his chance. <laughs> Pretty profoundly. Like, right. sure, yeah, whatever, And buddy. maybe we'll see the repercussions of that in the next film, how that's affected him. Yeah, they'll turn Zod into a zombie. <laughs> a zombie. Zod Why doesn't Superman... Oh, I, I thought he'd spend longer on that point, but okay. No. Oh, yeah. Why doesn't Superman cover Zod? Because it'll burn his hand? I guess because it'll hurt him, yeah. Uh -huh. And cover Zod's eyes with his hand. Heat vision hurts even Kryptonians. So why does he not use it?
Yeah, thanks for just bringing up the other criticism, so, man. Yeah. <laughs> so just Here's the thing, if, if you try to fix it, it just tells us how fucking broken it is. <laughs> yeah, that means yeah. that your film has a lot of issues. It's that yeah, thing super... where you, you plug a hole and then three bursts from another area, and you're like, oh, fuck. Hmm? Yeah, Superman uh, yeah, has a tentacle yeah. blade in the entire climax. It's great. Mm. And besides, that's not the point of the scene, which is to have... That's not an argument. That's not... You're... <laughs> you are just... <laughs> it's not the point not of the scene. Make arguments. Superman kills Odd. Why doesn't Superman just fly up? <laughs> Here we go. Well, dude, uh, I thought we did this already. Like, why didn't he take him to space? And then his criticism was because he'll just come back. To what end? He's been doing that the whole time. To what end? Get him away from people. Like, that's why the, would you ask that question? That's the end. Yeah. Uh, I don't even know. I, <laughs> it's nothing uh, like... Like, I'm a little... Uh, thought we went over this. I'm, like, uh. Wait, so what was, the, what was the point? My, my, uh, was so the criticism the, was, why doesn't Superman take Zod up into space, essentially? And then his response to that was, to what end? It's, it's as far away as possible. Get him away Get from him people. Get him away from everything. What, 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 a, what a stupid fucking question. And if you want to argue, yeah. Superman doesn't have any way of dealing with him ultimately, though. And it's like, well, he does. He can kill him. And he can do that anyway. So, better he do yeah. it in space. <laughs> I think. To success. If Superman keeps Zod from killing these people, he'll have to keep him. You know what I just thought? Would Superman have let Zod's body be taken by the government? Um, I guess there's more than just Zod's body, right? I don't, I don't know right? what there's Superman would or wouldn't do. Yeah, that's true. That's kind of the problem. I have no idea what's kind of going on in his head. I'm from killing a group of people, and the next group, and the next, because as Zod said, I'm going to make them suffer, Cal. These humans, you... I, I don't even... Yeah. I, so, wait, I'm, I guess I'm a little confused as to what his point is. I'm going to roll him back, because I don't understand how this accounts for anything. And besides, that's not the point of the scene, which is to have Superman it's kill not the Zod. Point. <laughs> Why the point of the Superman... scene is to have him kill Zod. So fuck logic and fuck anything that happens and fuck mechanics and just fuck all of it because the point is he kills Zod. So there. Yeah. Correct. Just fly up with Zod. To what end? He's been doing that the whole Get time. The to city. zero success. If Superman. No, he, 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 Zod it's from... such a he fucking actually... bizarre question. He had some success. They got he into did. space yeah. at one point. And then they miraculously somehow landed back exactly on Metropolis. Yeah, so just mm -hmm. do that again. The whole Certainly keep trying instead of punching him through places of Why Metropolis. Why don't you even come back down? Time to Time zero space. success. If Superman keeps Zod from killing these people, he'll have to keep him from killing the next group of people. And the next group. So and the next. Zod. Because as Zod said. So take him to space. That was, that was the yeah, criticism. So take him, take to him to fucking yeah. space. There's no I'm people up there. Oh, well, there's very few. Oh no, Zod's saying he's gonna kill everyone? Take him to space. <laughs> yeah, take him to space where there's no people. I will take right them all from you, Laser one him. by one. And he'll never stop. Never. So kill him? Just, just kill him to space, kill him. <laughs> yeah, so just kill him but in space. He he's arguing against a group of people who think Superman shouldn't have killed him. That's a problem. We've moved on from that one, though. Oh, I think yeah, so. Yeah, I know, right? I know. If This is, yeah. And besides, that's not the point of the scene. There's no- Oh, stop, stop saying that. that. That's it's the not the point of the scene. Mean. No other way to stop the... Zod, and the film was written that way on purpose. Stop <gasps> appealing to Oh my to god, how... it was oh. written that way. That's okay. not how it, anything works. We did it on purpose. What was the point like, of that... you answering any of the criticisms in this video if you could have just said, well, it was written they that way? They did it on purpose, yeah. It was- Oh my god. The most useless defense ever. It was written to be that way. <laughs> like, okay. Thank you. It's like... It's like you're going, why does the holdo maneuver work? Well, it just does, okay? Yeah, it's written it. that way. <laughs> this is that's the point of the scene. Also, wow, we're moving on? <laughs> uh, in that instance, oh. like, if you... The way I work, the way Chris works, is you do what's right for the story. Mm -hmm. That exists entirely. Right. No, <laughs> that's not how you work. That's not how you work. That's how you think you work. That is not how you work. That's how you justify very, your work. <laughs> you and I have very different definitions of what's right for the story, buddy. Oh, yeah. From what fans should or shouldn't think of that character, you have to do what's right for the story. Okay. Mm -hmm. Oh God, I, we've where where else have we heard this before?
Gotta do what's right for the story? I feel like that applies to so many people. You decide about what the story like, is. You're the fucking writer. Literally, there was a uh, like a thing that I think um, I think it was in your your critique of TLJ Mahler, where um, Mark Hamill was pleading to Ryan Johnson, like we have to think about the fans, and Ryan Johnson says, "No, we have to think about the story first. Yeah, like th th that's what I mean. Whenever you come to really shitty content, the the authors will often say like it was right. <laughs> it was the right thing to do. You're like, okay. The story needed it. We do something because, well, that's the way mm -hmm. the fans would or wouldn't like it. We have to follow the truth of the story. Yeah. No, you're the writer. Why are you appealing to a story that you have total control over? Well... That's bass backwards. The, the interesting <laughs> thing I find is that, um... A lot of what I would appeal to in some stories are that, like, this is what should... So, you know, like, Hux blowing up the base, that's what should have happened. Uh, sorry, the ship. That's what should have happened. If you want to run everything up to that point the way it was, then you're going to have to have everybody in the fucking... Uh, I forget what the ship's name is. But it's, it, that's going to explode. Radis. Yeah, the Radis is gone. I'm sorry. That is what has to happen up to the point where they're deciding a target, right? Like, if, if, so, if, if so, for example, right, if you were like, well, I'm the writer, I can make anything happen. I was like, oh, well, unless you introduce some new variable that changes anything here, like, Hux Yeah, you'd have to, you'd have to go radis. back, yeah, because yeah. you're the one who put the radis in that situation. And that's what I'm saying in terms of, like, to a degree, sometimes stories do essentially just, like, I mean, go, you're this beholden, is what's happening now. You're beholden to something that you created. Yeah, no. Uh, yeah, ultimately in that scenario, you, it's still you that made all these things, especially because Man of Steel is the first one in the DCU. You have complete control. Yeah. You had so little to have to adhere to. Basically just yourself. And even then, you fuck it up. Yeah. And also from a thematic standpoint, we were it was a oh, story no. about a guy who's the last... I feel sorry for themes. They get used to make horrible things happen all the time. <laughs> <laughs> themes is like, uh, I didn't ask for any of this. Themes has to apologize. Themes had their chance. He has to keep coming out to us like, I'm so sorry about this. <laughs> they, they did it. I, it wasn't me. Last of his kind. Opportunity to have his kind back, but it means right. he's going to... So if he was upset about having to kill the last of his kind, then he shouldn't have lasered all those babies to death. Yeah, mm. yeah. And the argument is like, well, they weren't babies yet. It's like, don't even go there. They're the only chance of babies ever even happening for Kryptonians. It, you erase everything Kryptonian once you destroy them. The, decide the... So from a, if you take Superman out of it, what's the right way to tell that story? Mm -hmm. I, I think the right way to tell that story is if you take this powered alien who says you can have your race back, but you have to kill your adopted race, the moral... Why would the situation... alien say that? <laughs> Why would you write it to where the alien says this, you fucking numpty? <laughs> Why? He says that because you even... are the writer and you wrote him to say that. They never even get to have that conversation, though. It's just a thing that happened. You know, like, I'm going to terraform Earth. It's going to kill all of the humans. And then Clark goes, Why? And he's like, Because they're pathetic. It's like, That doesn't mean you have to kill them. Well... It is bizarre. <laughs> so it's just like, I don't know what to say to you anymore. I don't have any arguments because I don't have a character. I don't know what else he would say. He's, he's like, like, he's tying up his hands and saying, my hands are tied. Yeah. Actually, be forced to kill, not wanting to, but mm -hmm. be forced to kill the only other person from your race. And to sort of give that up. Again, we've said this before, but I wouldn't give a fuck if my race were horrible, murderous psychopaths. I'd be like, yeah, I mean, good thing I didn't turn out like them. <laughs> yeah, I'm glad I avoided being a murderous psychopath like the rest of my people. Take Superman aside, I think that's the right way to tell that story. But it's a Superman movie! You can't take Superman out of it! Writing it this way violates Superman's character because he has a code that doesn't allow him to kill! What is with that, uh, this, the interesting this drawing? Yeah, I don't, know, I don't know what this is. This is a little stumpy arms. <laughs> this is the writing of this movie personified that is into a, a Superman a, image. That is a chonkler. Like he's, <laughs> he's a thick like stumpy boy. arms. His wrists are as thick as his biceps. Oh, no. Because <laughs> no. what you were about to say, wasn't it? It's well, grotesque. we responded no. to a quote from director Zack Snyder. David and I had long talks about it, and Chris and I talked long about it, and I was like, I really feel like we should kill Zod. And the what? This doesn't surprise me, Zach. You kill everything. <laughs> yeah, everything <laughs> dies. You kill Supergirl. You kill just everything dies. It's I like all miserable. Um, 
he's there at the scene. They're filming the scene with with Zod. They're deciding that, and it's like Zach's like, oh, would, would he kill him? Would he? Would he? It's like, oh well, Zach, he's already killed loads of people. And Zach's like, what, what do you mean? He's like, well, you know, the Kryptonian babies, all the people he's like driven into buildings. Um, when he when he failed to stop the world engine by going with the other one, like he killed a lot of people indirectly with that. So like, yeah, he's killed tons. I don't see why this would be an issue. And Zach's like, oh. <laughs> no. Okay then. <laughs> I guess the answer is yes. I go, if it's truly an origin story, his aversion to killing is unexplained. It's just in his DNA. And he's right. Superman no, no, no. So, the, so, so that's just people. Yeah, you don't actually have to explain why you don't want people to die. That could be something you just don't want. Yeah, most people don't want to kill other people. Yeah. Um. Also, doesn't in BVS, he does more property tism damage. He does, yeah. That could easily kill people. Like, I guess, does Superman know these places are uh, unpopulated? Because <laughs> uh, it seems to me that they're suggesting that this is the this is the thing that makes him averse to killing. Which is funny uh, to me that Zod would be the one, not everything else. Right! <laughs> Superman's aversion to killing has never really been explained. Don't you don't do it. Because he's a person with just like empathy, empathy. for other humans? He's, like, treat, he's treating him. He's you don't have Clark to. Like, it's the default. He's treating Clark like a T eight hundred, where it's like <clears throat> John Connor has to teach him that killing is wrong. <laughs> like, what? He's a person. <laughs> like, what? Why do we treat Clark like he's this weird blank slate that has to be like, you know, humans aren't too great, are they? It's like, oh, uh, what? What do you suggest? It's like maybe, maybe they should drown. My dad kind of told me. <laughs> Just, I don't know. <laughs> So strange, because that's what they're arguing the arc is, like, he learns that, you know, humans are worth saving. It's like, when were we not? What do you mean? Why, why was this something you had to learn? <laughs> what the fuck? Man of Steel heavily in the philosophy of a superhero, and even in the comics, there's no uh. philosophical reasoning behind the no-killing code. It does not really deal in the philosophy at all. Why do we need him to explain, like, base fundamental, like... Uh, ethics in terms the, of why you yeah, would not want someone to die. The default is that you don't want to kill other people. Why would you If you that? do, that's the thing that makes us go, what the fuck's wrong with this person? That's why we look at murderers and go like, what the fuck's wrong with him? Why are they that's killing why, people? That's why someone like Punisher is an anomaly. It's like, whoa, he kills them? It's like, yeah, he does. And he does it for this reason. And it's always explained because that is outside of the norm. Um, I mean, I guess not so much now, right? Because, like, in the MCU, very few of those characters have a problem with kill. But it's not that they want um, to, I think that's the important obviously part, right? the like, context for someone like Punisher, though, is that he would rather them die than be put in chains. Yeah, sort of thing, right, right, that's kind of the point I'm getting. Like, Iron Man will kill people to suppress the threat, not yeah. because he's like, yeah, you, I enjoy killing you, you deserve to die, not anything like that. Same yeah, this is what I mean, because we can still generate tough situations for, like, uh... You know, all the people in the MCU. Um, right. But but most of them <clears throat> operate in a sense that if they're in the middle of a big fight, then, yeah, they'll do stuff that'll kill people and they won't really have much of an Not issue with Spider -Man, it. Not Spider-Man, though. Yeah. Spider-Man's a little bit different, yeah. Yeah. Reasoning, there's the idea. But the best explanation we could find without having to read a million Superman comics is that since he's stronger than everyone else, he has the choice not to kill. Are we really doing this? He doesn't want to kill no, people. No, like, you don't... You... I don't know how like, <laughs> we're trying to figure out why he doesn't like by default kill people when that's just people. people in most like situations that. where lesser beings would be forced to, and for that reason he holds himself to a quote higher standard. But this reasoning doesn't include a value judgment. That reasoning is based on the presupposition that killing is wrong no matter what the situation. Why is taking a life a lower that's standard than not murder. taking one? Why does Superman value the lives of heroes and mass murderers equally? We're not trying Oh, okay. Well, now we're going wait, to a different place. Here? Yeah. I'm okay with the idea that he wants people to live more than he wants them to die. Mm -hmm. However, if we were in a situation where he had to choose between, like, Zod and that family, I'd be like, Superman, I know you don't like to kill, but there's an obvious <laughs> fucking choice here. Yeah. Um, you ain't gotta like it, but... Yeah, and then if he were kind to... Kind of a easy one. If he just let Zod go because he doesn't want to get involved, and then... Zod blasts the family to death, I'd be like, you're a cunt. <laughs> I hate you. <laughs> We're 
we're just asking, what is the philosophical basis for Superman's no killing code? We've heard it said that killing supposedly lowers one. a hero to the criminal's level. But that's not sufficient reasoning, because that's equating the act- What does this have to do with Man of Steel's- Because like, this is- I guess he's really going hard on this. Some people don't like the idea that Superman could kill. Which is- I don't know. It's not something I hear often. Maybe a lot of people say it. Well, like, I guess what I'm- Because he's trying to attack the core fundamental, like, of, of, of Superman not killing in general now. Like, this is a specific this, this, Superman in the movie. What I mean is, like, he went from defending the movie to attacking Superman in the comics. I was like, all right, I guess if you want to. Like, this is what I mean. Yeah, I'm not too care. invested in that. I'm just like, okay. Act yeah. with the motive. Context is everything in this situation. And a criminal killing someone for personal gain is a considerably less justifiable act than a hero killing that same criminal to save their victims. Again, I'm yeah. cool with him killing Zod. I don't, yeah. Yeah, mm -hmm. I, yeah, I shocked he didn't do it earlier. Many people, including Batman, stop. reason that it wouldn't stop with just one villain. If you're going to kill one criminal, why not just kill every criminal? Really? What? <laughs> <laughs> what? Because criminals huh? do different degrees of different things in different situations. The idea that we kill what we kill them all, that's a bit of a, I mean... Yeah, holy shit. Calm down. So, looks like this comic seems to be depicting Superman in a villainous light. Yeah, or this is injustice, yes, I think. Yeah, yeah I think this, this is injustice. Argument? Context doesn't exist in the superhero world and everything is absolute? Who the answer is talking to. I don't, I don't know. People threatening innocent lives that are as strong or stronger okay. than he is if there's no alternative. Sure. Doomsday or Mr. Rumpelstiltskin or whoever else. And no, All he right. shouldn't have to expose himself in shame to gold kryptonite afterwards because killing means he doesn't deserve his powers. I don't, I don't, uh, whatever. Right. Killing destroys Superman's character. I don't care. If he no. uses his what? powers to kill, he doesn't deserve to have them. What about all the people he might have saved in the future? Sure. What happens when the next unkillable by human supervillain shows up? With? He's arguing with someone else. Does anyone this, say this? Well, we don't make these arguments. Whoever is, whatever. Do people do that? I'm sure that there this are people happens who all do the make these yeah, arguments. There so. might be, yeah. Because right, if there sure. are people who talk about Spider-Man, it's this or that, there's definitely yeah. going to be the case with Superman. Does Superman mm -hmm. expect humanity to protect itself? I thought he valued human life and swore to protect it's it whenever he could. Well, he still can, even after he's forced to kill someone. That's the equivalent of saying either Superman saves all lives or Superman saves no lives. And that's that's not re that's ridiculous. Oh, but he like this it seems like video. it fit really well into the writing of this movie. Man. <laughs> he's held to a different think... standard, you see. This is the kind of problem you get when you don't have a philosophical basis for your morality. Yeah, by the way, he is held to a higher standard. Yeah, he's Superman. Gone is absolutely held to a higher standard because of his capabilities. You crack the earth in two, if you want to. Um, mm -hmm. Like, the, he's gone back to the philosophical base. I don't need a philosophical base for him to not want to kill people. I would want to talk to him if, for example, he let Zod kill the family. Be like, bro, yeah. I want an explanation. Personal sort of Stop. aversion to Don't killing say. cost him the lives <laughs> of the entire planet, or even that little kid that, or I'm those little kids, yeah, yeah. That, that little family. Yeah, yeah. So like, if he had said like, "Well, I just I'm morally opposed to killing, so I guess I have to let him kill those people." Yeah, yeah that's those are, those are the dilemmas. However much you're not going to create really dilemmas, a... Zach. Yeah, that's, yeah, that's <laughs> like you need to you need to learn what a tough choice is. Well, here's one: protect your identity. <laughs> Or a bunch of children drowned. Like, oof. oh, definitely protect your oh, identity. I don't know. Ooh, it's a tough <laughs> one. Mm. Was definitely. Since you think there's no kill code on. makes this movie is challenging that idea when it forces him to kill. <laughs> to say that this movie is challenging this... my fucking patience. Yeah. <laughs> this movie definitely challenges superheroes. No cool kill rule. I agree. It is <laughs> quite the challenge. Thought. in Man of Steel, Steel Superman's code everything. hasn't yet been established. <laughs> The movie is testing Superman's morality by removing choice, thereby giving him a starting point to develop a reasoning for his code. Not arbitrarily. <laughs> that doesn't get developed in BVS. Like, no. <laughs> not I, I kind of just stop developing Superman in that film. The next time they shine the light, don't go to it. The bat is dead. Superman is barely a character in that film. It's all about Batman. <laughs> yeah, yeah it's yeah. weird. Like the comics, but based experience and real values. That's probably the biggest failure of that the central conflict of that movie, that movie's namesake, which they don't actually do a lot with at all. No. Is that they don't show us Superman being like a bad person. 
At least the at least the film doesn't make an effort to. They had the like tools. he is because of this, but in this universe he isn't. In this universe, you can definitely be super critical of him, but he's clearly a good guy for what that's worth. Like he's yeah. The the movies clearly portray him as a very very clear force for good and a, a very pro. Batman's you know, the wonky lie, one. You know, <laughs> Lots pro of... goodness. Batman, yeah. Batman's got weird stuff going on when he's angry and says weird things. <laughs> Does weird things. <laughs> Filmmakers <laughs> Superman character from a real world perspective within the no, context of this movie's choice theme and outside of choice the theme based on him by his own canon and fandom. Yeah, I mean, for me, it's like you could turn the question back around and say, why is it really people seem to have take issue with? Because it's like, is it comforting the idea that Superman wouldn't? I mean, it's not like something that doesn't exist in the real world. No, and it's know? a real world problem. But you know, my point what, is like, he's people? not. I guess they're just talking about the good old fashioned just dilemmas that require you to kill somebody. Like, okay. Yeah. Superman until like Superman. the penultimate scene of that right. film. And then he doesn't understand that he has this sort of, you know, people think of him in a certain way. There's no like Superman kills or doesn't yeah. kill kind of thing that doesn't exist in this story yet. And we were trying to do Clearly. it within the framework of what <laughs> we is a that up. relatively realistic sure. story about what if this guy existed. But this isn't the real world, okay? This is the world of deus ex machinas and unchallengeable ideals. Product placement isn't allowed what? here. What it no, really but you made it that way. The, the film made it that way, though. What it comes down to is like that the people who disappear to have a deus ex machina, and if you don't write one in. I was, I'm not, not even clear what he was saying there. Was he, was he saying no? Was he saying that our movie like that's what they do in the comics? There's a day of second. He's saying the movie is the out? real world, but they appeal to the real world. So I'm confused. So what I think he's saying is that um, the comics will bail Superman out from making the decision, and that the movie doesn't because it's grounded. It doesn't get to have Deus Ex Machinas. Exist. But this isn't the real world, okay? This is the world of deus ex machinas and unchallengeable ideals. Product placement isn't allowed here. What it really comes down yeah, the, the, to... Yeah, like insulting oh, the concept okay. of... Yeah. Two ...is that the oh, people who okay. disapprove of Zod's killing only do so on the basis that they don't want to see a story where Superman has to make the decision to kill. They want it written so that he always has a way out and a reason not to face ethical... Yeah, we've come across the same shit with Batman and mm -hmm. Batman. They'll say we don't want to have that story. It's like, all right dilemmas because they think that's what the character's about superman should never be written into a situation a where he has no choice but to kill superman oh, should there's always. a lot of focus oh. on this no kill thing it's not even it's not even an issue i have with the movie yeah, <laughs> yeah. flashing sure. back to all of these terrible arguments <laughs> yeah. we had to deal with about batman find him, another he way. always finds a way in other words, I don't ever want Superman to be tested morally. And ironically, the yeah. only way to explore a character's morality well, is to have like it tested. Well, this is like the first good point you made. Yeah. <laughs> well, video. It's only, a shame yeah, that yeah, it's yeah, not yeah. a point that we've ever had, so it's not even yeah. something we can engage with. It's guys, not an issue guys, with the film either. Nope. You guys got. You guys got to hear this again. Find another way. In other words, I don't ever want Superman to be tested morally. And ironically, the only way to explore a character's morality is to have it tested. Yeah, so it gets tested here, and guess what? He fucking fails. Yeah, he fails miserably again, 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 again. with like all of his decisions. If choices are the fucking theme of this movie, then he fails across the board. It is nothing except a just a long series of comedically horrific bad decisions that Superman makes. Hey, look at the sun came up at this point, huh? <laughs> Hope is like the sun because this video is almost over. <laughs> <laughs> the situation the character gets into are not the character. The way the character deals with those situations is the character. Mm -hmm. If you write Superman a way out, of course he'll take the way out because that's his character. If no, you that's don't write him a way right. out, it's mm -hmm. much deeper and you get to explore what his character will do and how he deals with a no way out situation. And anyway, Why what's the Zod alternative? Fly? Send Zod back to the Phantom Zone? Zod wants to die in that scene, I think. That's, I guess. By Superman's own admission, that's a fate worse than death. The Phantom Zone is a timeless, when? endless prison. So, wait, wait, no, wait, 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 what are you movie, saying? Though. That's in a so comic. So then he's that's cool with that anyway. anyway. Yeah, well, that is the comic for Star Wars. Also, he's cool, he's cool with that being the military's plan anyway. So what the f So clearly he has no problem with killing people. He's already doomed the people to an eternity in the Phantom Zone. <laughs> 
toxically infinite tor- You won't kill us yourself! You wouldn't fill in your hands, but you'll damn us to a black hole for eternity! It's by no means a peaceful alternative I don't even know what that means. How can you be damned to a black hole for eternity instead of just being torn just to be pieces? Dead. Yeah, that's it. You're dead. Yeah, I don't even get it. Even life sentences only go for like a hundred years. It's merciful for Superman to kill Zod compared to- Well, no, they go until you die. Like that's weird. People right. often say that Superman killing his enemies would be him acting unjustly as judge, jury, and executioner. But if he's banishing bros to the P-Zone, he's still judge and jury. He's still the one making the decision, above and outside the law. Was the execution part really the only objection? The dude is sentencing people to infinite torture by himself. The people who think that Superman should be immune to morally difficult situations are unwittingly yeah, proving the movie's message. I, yeah, I'm, I'm totally Yeah, it's not an with... issue with the film. It's, mm. I guess, a particular set of people who think that Superman I'm happy for Superman killed. to be challenged on his morals there. Yeah. Uh, yes. This film didn't do that. This film was embarrassing. Yeah. Right. <laughs> they find out there's a Superman or someone making a Superman movie, and they impose all of these rules and expectations onto the character and his story. The filmmakers have no choice. They must unquestioningly recreate my preconceived notion of Superman and the kinds of things he's allowed to deal with, or I will reject hey, him. Hey, man, and it's like you're flashing back to just talk about <laughs> Spider-Man and Batman. Holy shit. It's amazing. And that's exactly what Jonathan Kent was afraid of. Don't bring him no, into no, this. No, no, <laughs> don't. Fine. You ruined it. Don't you bring him into this. the Kents. You you have tarnished the reputation of the Kents as Absolutely. characters. Absolutely. I hope that if I so have parents, they are nothing like these two. God, these awful people. Wait, wait. Did I say if I have parents? I do have parents. <laughs> Why did I say that? It's very it's very strange that he says that. Oh my God, the mask. Uh, the mask. I, I have no idea why I said that. I do have parents. They're way better than the Kents. <laughs> I was stuck in the Phantom Zone. <laughs> we've answered these questions. Hopefully, we've given you a reason to watch the film again and no, give it another no. chance. Ah, Don't no. make this never, show ever time again. You... Never. Not again. for the rest no. of my life. Come across film something in a movie shit. that doesn't immediately make sense. Instead of dismissing it as bad, you can. How about you watch it again, bud? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I mean, well, yeah. Instead of saying something's bad, there were there were only ten incidents of damage, oh, so there was okay. one more than nine. You know? yeah, instead of coming to terms with the fact that your movie fucking sucks, maybe you could just invent a secondary film that didn't actually happen to try and explain the events of the one you didn't like. That'll do it. Mm. Yeah, just lie Watch. about what happens. Do some research and try to make it make sense. Research. Then be try, try to make, make it, it make sense. Try to make it make sense. Oh, that's an interesting question. <laughs> that's uh, fucking hell. Uh, that's win, bend right? reality <laughs> to make it make <laughs> sense. <laughs> or just pretend that's that is what you wanted. <laughs> Uh. Instead of dismissing it as bad, you can watch more closely, do some research, and try to make it make sense, then be pleasantly surprised. And after that, <laughs> if you honestly can't justify the thing, then you can run to the YouTube comment section and yell at people about it, you close-minded comic book nerds! Nerd. Hey, you're lucky. You're, you're, you're in luck. We don't typically you're read them all. I don't give a... Yeah. 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 I don't I don't read read comics. Again, yeah, I don't give a shit about comics. We're the perfect counter for this video because we don't give a fuck about the comics. Yeah, <laughs> I've not read a single Superman comic. I haven't this read movie Superman was shit. comics either. Like, I can't I read. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Most can't. Nerds. You nerds. You nerds. Comic book You nerds. comic book nerds. You nerds. Nerds. You, you close my comic, comic book nerds. nerds. If you like, comment, and subscribe within the next 15 minutes, we'll double the salt absolutely free. Here's how to order. This uh, this video didn't come across as salty. It came across as desperate and pathetic. Yeah, yeah. Real desperate. Oh, that yeah. was desperate awful. And pathetic. That was, that was actually really bad. bad. Yeah, right was, until the yeah. end, they started making points, but they weren't points we'd ever make. So it's kind okay. of like yeah, they you know, they but... focused a lot on the whole Superman no kill thing. But I'm like, but was I don't it fucking care? I guess but that's a common criticism than... for the film. But was it worse than Filmento? Is the question. I yes. think that one was. Um, yeah, this yeah. this, yeah. this yeah. said yeah. things. Filmento but... didn't say a lot. Yeah, Filmento yeah, made up some really like, random it has, weird rules. It has goals 
Um, <laughs> urgency. And urgency. Yeah. Yeah. The plot happens basically, and that's good. That the yeah, plot happens. Whereas this one actually mm -hmm. made arguments. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It it made pathetic arguments. This one revealed some. It really... made me think that these people don't have any moral fiber. But yeah, that's all good. Yeah. Let's not, let's not worry. <laughs> Once but, again, I mean, that's not as important as like trying to defend a movie. So. <clears throat> Again, find ourselves judging someone's morality in their video about how a film is good. It happens so often. <laughs> we have to defend our movie. Fuck morality. You can't have moralities without the code. Just get it. But if morality is a thing, then that means that my movie's bad. Aww. And the movie's far more important. Than my morality is. Fuck those fetuses, babies. <laughs> fuck those fetuses. Fuck those fetuses. Fuck Superman 2021. Fuck them in their fuck pod. <laughs> Ew. Um. But yeah. There was. Get uh, wet. There are get more. Wet in the fuck pod. There are more Man of Steel videos that defend it. There is one called Man of Steel is the best Superman movie. There is Man oh of Steel God. is a great Superman movie, and Man of Steel is not an awful movie. I think we've gone over it. Yeah, yeah I, I, I would be very happy to never talk about this film again because I can't Me take too. it. Me <laughs> too. All I'll say is, fuck this movie. I never want to see it again. There's even more wrong with it that we haven't covered in the two big pieces of coverage and and the EFAP movies. It's just that we can't cover everything. I feel like we've checked out the major arguments saying why this film is good, Absolutely. and we've presented the major arguments for why it's fucking terrible. Um, mm -hmm. But, again, you've, you've said it several times, but we can't understate just how bad this film is. Like, it's... it's oh, it's yeah, it's really bad. BBS is better, it's, okay? BBS that, is better. Yeah, Batman yeah, vs. Superman is better, yeah. And mm -hmm. Wonder Woman 1, so, I'm... Yeah, I'm in the camp so that Wonder Woman 1 is better. Yes! I think so, yes! too. Yep! Yeah. I've, I, yeah, I've, I, think I said so. it I said it from when we, we when we watched it. It was uh, Rags me, Rags, said it and you. he gets the trophy. What was? <laughs> hang on, hang on. So, uh, who was the third guy that said that Wonder Woman was better? Was that Metal? I think. Well, me. No, I, I think I, I think I no, think Capital no, it was, was was it was Capital Metal. Yeah. I think was uh, on the Man of Steel camp with us. Yeah, my listings okay. are uh, Batman vs Superman, then Wonder Woman, then Man of Steel, then Wonder Woman eighty four. Yeah, I, I, I forgot. I do want I forgot, just a note. <laughs> I just do want a note thrown in. Like Man of Steel <clears throat> is trying its best to get down to Wonder Woman eighty four. Okay. Like <laughs> oh yeah, Wonder Woman nineteen eighty four just makes so little sense that it's, I'm not sure that it can be challenged. Its world building is like a zero out of one hundred. While yeah, but the thing is like mm -hmm. Wonder Max, Woman was Max, Max Lord. Yeah, Max Lord does make this a competition to some degree because Man of Steel nothing works. Okay, nothing. But there's Max Lord. That's, that's what I'm saying. But I think I think it's the idea of nothing works. But the th like Wonder Woman 1984. Fuck me, the things that don't work. Jesus. <laughs> like, yeah. You know, yeah. We're, we are in the bottom of a really chasm. Um. Hmm. The Wonder Woman 84 is also definitely a lot think, more entertaining. A lot more fun. I, that's true, but I feel like 84 just none of it works. I feel. Except Some of Max, Max Lord works. Right. Like, there's Max Lord. Yeah, like, <laughs> you can't say can't none of it works the, if there's Max Lord. The yeah, but the way that it fits into... The, uh, like, a, Man of Steel, like, at least fits into this retarded universe's timeline. Wonder Woman 1984 can't exist. Um, true. Still, but at work. the same time, like, that that's a point against it, I guess, uh wheel building or well, plot or I whatever. feel like it's a point against it as being part of a series which I think counts for sure no I wouldn't that's what I was saying I was trying to categorize it yeah. I'm not sure if I'd put it in wheel building I'm not sure what it would categorize as yeah I would say world well. building yeah if I Wonder Woman is supposed the to have been category continuity not, with yeah, other yeah. you know it, de it definitely takes points down for that I just I just I, I just think that Man of Steel is worthless <laughs> it's just it's, it's, <laughs> it's just, so bad Every single thing it is trying to do, it it just stumbles all over the place. It, it cannot help itself. Ooh, I I am I'm closely approaching the point of saying that it's worse than One Room Eighty Four. I'm I I'm there. I just I wanted I'm I just there. wanted to present it as a possibility. I'm not sure. I am I'm getting I don't close. Think so I think the whole no, I, I think everyone in the planet being able to make wishes is yeah. kind of unbeatable. Well, I, yeah, it's, and just like the, that's the very that's universe breaking. Yeah, that tampers with the nature like, of reality. 
the very nature of how things exist in this world, like physically, so, is just fucked in that film. Yeah, Man so, of Steel, like it all works. It's just shit. Some nukes but, disappear. But, some nukes know. explode in the air. Hold, hold on, I'm sorry. The gas does that really backwards? Does that really like offset um, the the fact that there's more redeemable factors in '84 than there are in Man of and Steel? What are the, what are the black holes? holes don't work the way I they're don't don't supposed, even, supposed to in this movie. I don't. Need, I'm that? sorry. What black holes don't work the way they're fucking supposed to in Man of Steel? Oh yeah, no. I guess what I'm saying is, like, they don't work the way that they're supposed to, and that's fucking insane. But, like, I can't even, I can't even, like, imagine having cameras in different places around Wonder Woman no, 1984's I, world and have the things follow just, I, like, I, I, I get that. So, effect, if you know what I mean. Yeah, so the worst thing in, in, in 1984 is going to be worse than the worst thing in Man of Steel, probably. However, there's still way better things in 84 than there are. There's way Man better Steel. thing in Wonder Woman 1984. That's Max thing. Yeah, One it's the thing. only thing. Everything else yeah, is thing, shit. Thing. Yeah. yeah, everything else sucks. And even that thing is halfway Still, ruined. Yeah, like, it's mainly the potential mm -hmm. that I think is what yeah. we like, more so than how it's executed. Hey, there was, what do we say? There was, there was, was it two there or three two good, good scenes? scenes? Well, there were the two yeah. when he's in his office, and then at the end. And then yeah, at the end okay. with his son. But so how then... did he even get, how did he find his son? You know what I mean? Even the yes. good scene doesn't Yeah, but that's sense. plot, not character. I, I, oh, I agree. Sure, yeah. I'm just saying, what is there in Man of Steel? Well, I guess what I'm saying is like I'm not sure if I would say that Man of Man of Steel has some incredible lows. I just don't know if they're quite as low as 1984's wish. Yeah, I would, I, I would you know say 84 is worse. Yeah, it's, I definitely because okay, I it's think the it's intensity worse. of its badness is worse. So, same here. Yeah, I, I get that. Now, the intensity of its badness makes it kind of fun to watch, whereas Man yeah, of Steel is not fun to I mean, watch at all. I, I mean, oh, I, yeah, agree, I agree. I agree. I'd much rather watch, watch Man of Steel. Oh yeah, uh, that's easy. what we're talking about. No, we can't. We have to we're discount that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, um, I get you. I follow. I do. I just, also. Uh... I mean, how much do we? How much do we put on? You know, like, is there any act? Well, there is some bad acting in in Man of Steel, but like the main character in 1984 is poorly acted. <laughs> like, how do you get around that? You know, in terms of with factoring um, that into. Yeah, like I think I think nobody I think in this film is horrendously than... bad. Whereas, um, I mean, Michael Shannon's pretty bad, but I wouldn't say that he's. Uh, but I feel like it's almost not even his acting. It's like the material is shit. Like there's nothing he can do to make it work. I know, but like the way he delivers, like I don't I know, fry I, him. I, I totally I'm get you. Fry. Yeah, yeah. No, I, yeah, I don't think it's just a couple lines. It's not like it's As not his performance in general. Yeah, like, like a lot yeah, of stuff he fine. says is perfectly normal. Yeah, um, it's totally yeah. good. Yeah, I think he's a really he's a good Zod, I've... with the exception of a couple lines. Hmm. Yeah, I will find him in a, on a farm in the main house. Because that was the script that he didn't write. So yeah, what's he it's just weird. Weird. Like, just it's. I guess um, the, the all my brain's racking around is the idea of, like if 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 they really were four columns and for every <laughs> break or bend being contrivance or whole, like you know, Man of Steel is rubble entirely, while uh, One One Eighty Four is rubble too. But there's a couple of bits of structure left. Um, because I can see them both both broken, but I'm assuming you guys like think that one of one eighty four is so broken, like the floor is caved in, all the rubble has gone into hell. Basically, kind of, that's I, what I'd yeah, say. I just think, yeah, I think it's catastrophic. Like, because that's how we categorize film... like Crisis on Infinite Earth as being like worse than everything else, because it's just it's adherence to logic and it it's it's world it 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 just breaks reality. I try the to problem give... is well, we are we are talking about two horrendously bad film and I want to, so it's kind yeah. of like infinitisms broke time and space like um <laughs> yeah I, which is in the same realm as i, well, I guess wonder woman 1984 was... wonder woman 1984 absolutely fucks with space that's for sure well no like, we, we, we don't know how it works space. that it just can't make like we, we're so beyond confused at how exactly I'm this I'm wish stone's doing film anything shows us contradictory things about the way that like time moves forward and the way that objects and permanence even exist you know what i mean yeah, but like, meanwhile, infinitisms does time and space have been deleted. Here you go. This is except, an area. Yeah. No, that... I, I, I know. I, I think infinite earths is worse than eighty four. Like holy shit, yeah, <laughs> that's I'm worse. Just, yeah, that's I'm like trying... a st that's a story that's functional, but it will. It's not even. It's like holding on by a thread. Yeah. Like if it was any of... worse, it couldn't be a story. I mean, I'm, just, I'm not I'm sure that to... I don't put them both in the Batwoman category. Like the. 
Two. Oh yeah, Batwoman is. That's why. Yeah, Batwoman's the three. I, I think I'd be happy with Man of Steel. No, 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 no. Batwoman's two. One. Batwoman's three is Steel. Two. Oh, it's the one. One and the two. Okay. And I okay, think I, I'm, gotcha. I think I'm totally comfortable with putting Man of Steel in the two camp. I just feel like it's, it's a, a higher hair team. ahead. And, yeah, yeah, I, like, yeah that's not, fine. not by much. Yeah, I just I, 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 I want to give yeah, some. I want to give some weight to the like whatever redeemable factor is in 1984 as like just a just sort of a point of reference of Man of Steel has nothing and Wonder Woman has at least something. But and Wonder Woman's give... problems, I think, are a little bit more significant. A little I, bit more significant, yeah. I, I agree, but I also want to appreciate that there's more in 1984 that's likable than there is yeah, in Yeah, but I, guess, I guess what I'm saying is that I think it balances out in Man of Steel's favor by just a little bit. Because the things mm -hmm. I like still have tons of issues yeah, with them. Like, yeah, like there's more. Like. There's more that's good in Winter Soldier, but Batwoman is like more entertaining. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> like I, I don't want us to circle too hard. Like I get it. I, I completely follow. I they're just all bad, um, yeah. it'll be because yeah, I think with this and the fucking. By the way, I just got a message that the Man of Steel Ethan movie has got another copyright hit, so he's have, he's got to re-render again. Ha! Oh, oh boy, it's gonna be some mm -hmm. time before that comes out potentially, which sucks because. It's a fun one, but um, that'll be it for Man of Steel with this and the EFAT movies finally coming yes, back please, out. please, thank you. Well, <clears throat> no more, that, no more. We're moving on to BVS EFAPs. Oh, <laughs> oh, no. Eternal Torture oh. isn't the Phantom Zone. God, then we got Suicide Squad, the Justice League. Because I'm excited, I've never seen it. And them. it cannot be unrung. Ding, 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 ding. Uh, <laughs> yeah. 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 Uh, this guy, the twin perfect guy, he's got one for BVS. Luckily, it is 25 minutes instead of 37, so... So it only take us five hours instead of six. Yeah. <laughs> he doesn't think they're good, does he? It's called Why You're Wrong About Batman vs. Superman. No! Oh, movie shit! Oh, shit. <laughs> I was so wrong. He's He's got more than one video on BVS. No! <laughs> Why does he desperately? Oh my god, there's three shit films. There's three! Because <laughs> no! one wasn't enough! They they're all they're incredible. all subtitled. The first is Batman's Motive Explained. The second one is The Martha Controversy. And the third no! is Lex Luthor's <laughs> Plaid Explained. Not Martha. Stop it. Well, well. I just want to the fact that when, <laughs> when we were originally doing this, I'm like, hey, I want to help cover the <laughs> Wonder Woman 1984. I wasn't necessarily signing on to do the whole DCEU, but now but that I'm you're... already in here, I'm, Dude, I'm committed. You're in it for the long haul. <laughs> yeah. The top comment is uh, on the first of the BVS ones. It's so refreshing to see people who actually understand what Zack Snyder's vision for this movie was. Mm -hmm. And I'm you. sure we're gonna get tons of that when Justice League comes out. Oh, see, it all makes sense. It was all leading up to this, and it's gonna be fucking shit because it's all awful. And with that, <laughs> I guess it's the end of this Eva. <laughs> no. uh, yes, Yay! Oh. God, who That's knows what awful. we're in for? Yeah. Well, um, yeah. Thanks for watching, folks. Merry Christmas, guys. It's gonna be out before. Yeah, then. everyone. <laughs> Happy Halloween! <laughs> Happy February! Schlanky flumes. Happy. Guten Dabei! Yeah, goodbye, everyone! Goodbye! Yeah.